everybody, welcome to the deepest dive on Final Fantasy VII Rebirth from MinMax. MinMax is a place about games, friends, and getting better. My name is Ben Hansen. Thank you for being here. I'm joined once again by old best friend Ronnie. Oh, jo- <laughs> chipper as ever. <laughs> joined by Ross, the Star Wars guy fund. Hey, I can't believe we did it. We did it, everybody. This is the final discussion for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. We lost Grant along the way so he could have a little rebirth of his own with a beautiful baby girl. And we said we have a great surprise coming in. The, yeah. fourth, the final episode, filling in that fourth chair, and today we're revealing Anna Diaz, everybody! Hey! <laughs> Welcome, Anna! Um, uh, you are stepping into just a world of, of in-depth hurt? rebirth conversations. Uh, Get is, really close to that mic there, Anna. Closer than uh, you should. This is really good because I've just been screaming about this nonstop to anyone who will listen to me. Like, like even my one-on-ones at work like have all devolved into me like this morning shouting about rebirth and like shouting. I'll, well, like no, literally like screaming. <laughs> I'm like, why did they make Vincent Valentine's waist so tiny? And, <laughs> and Maddie Myers will be like, Anna, I don't know. Let's talk about your next career steps. <laughs> I would give Cloudy not achieved for his skill of teamwork. Mm, I think so. Yeah. Uh, hey, thank you all for being here. This is the deepest dive. This is the best, most thorough discussion about Rebirth on the internet. This is the final installment. In this discussion, we are covering everything in the game from chapter 12 through the ending. And so tune out right now if you don't want any spoilers for chapter 12 through the ending of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. We're not going to be spoiling anything from the original game. It's a safe spot for that, but we're going to be diving in deep on all this stuff. And at this point, you've been warned. If, if people are particular about this, but I get it. Uh, we're covering three chapters. Chapter 12, chapter 13, chapter 14. Uh, I, I like I like the people that said, like, I don't want to know how many chapters there are. Yeah. The deepest I was playing along the Discord. It's like, I respect that. It's kind of fun to go in and not knowing exactly when the climax of this whole game is coming around. I will say, after we finished last time, I thought there was only 13 chapters. Oh. And so I was surprised. And not really... A new open world region, though, like we were speculating last yes. time, like, oh, is there, are they going to throw something else in? Turns out they just added new quests for everything in the open world and yeah. gave you a new vehicle to explore with, but everything other than that. Um, here is the deal, everybody. This is the deepest dive. This is going to be a long discussion. We're covering those chapters. If you've enjoyed this journey so far, if you feel like, yes, this is the best, most thorough discussion about Rebirth on the internet. Uh, You can support this content directly by going to patreon.com slash minmax with two N's. You jump in at that $2 tier. It's literally, people call me out on this, I'll show you the math. Jumping into that $2 tier just for one month, it is literally 40,000 times more helpful than watching on YouTube and being like, oh, that ad money's going to the same place. It's 40,000 times the ad money we get from YouTube. So jump in for one month if you've enjoyed this ride. And if you jump in at that $5 tier, uh, you're really helping support us and you unlock the podcast version of this discussion, all of the other deepest dives we've ever done for stuff like Chrono Trigger, Chrono Cross, uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake, commentary track with Ronnie and Grant and I talking about Advent Children. There's a ton of stuff in that bonus podcast feed. So if you've enjoyed this journey, you can support it directly, patreon.com slash minmax with two ends. Um, now, here's the thing. I, this is Disclaimer Town USA, right, Ronnie? That's oh, yeah. what we like to call it. Yep. This is a discussion about the ending of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Yeah. I would dare say we're all still processing a bit. Maybe Anna's completed it so long ago that she's raring to go, ready to go in every sense of the word. I just want to convey, if you're looking for one of those Final Fantasy VII Rebirth ending explained videos, yeah. go to Ronnie's personal YouTube channel for that. No, I, I don't think... <laughs> we're still processing, so don't expect exact flawless theory crafting on our end, but we're trying to convey the experience of like really loving this game up until this point. Let's chew on this. Yeah. So, w- look, there's time in the future for us to really dive in and try and get specific about this beat and this beat and this timeline, this timeline. So uh, if you're welcome to sound off in the comments for stuff, obvious stuff that we missed. But I specifically didn't try to consume too much stuff outside of the game uh, for this discussion. I was like, if I listen to Maximilian do it in Easy Allies, I love it so much. But he's, yeah. he's Sephiroth. We're not, and then we're not having our own discussion. That's I, it. Like, I would just yeah. pair it and be like, yeah, you know what? Maximilian, dude, I should get you the black material. That's a good yeah, point. Yeah, like yeah. it would just, it would not be clean and sincere. So that's where we're going for this thing. Um, should we jump into a little question we like to have for folks before we get to the next great adventure? Wait. <laughs> I just want to finish say- the game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that? I did. Uh, I- I'm glad that you said that like right off the bat because um, I will. I-, I have a confession to make. Yeah. Uh, I saw the credits roll at 12.30 last night. 
So I have not processed this at all. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> In a way, I don't know. Like, I'm kind of excited to have this moment to actually start really processing what I did see. But right. it, you, you have to kind of admit, at some point, you're like, I'm just going to have to sit and digest what I am seeing because it's... <laughs> It's a lot. You actually, yeah. you called in sick to work just so you could sit there on the couch and just digest <laughs> I for 12 hours. I came in late to work today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I have a feeling I also finished it last night at 11 p.m. Really? Yeah. Yes. Wow. Okay. And I have a feeling that we're going to be uh, leaning on Anna for the reasoned and thoughtful... That's uh, your role, Anna. I... I mean, I don't know if I can bring reason to this. <laughs> okay, okay. But but actually I think I think something that will be fun to reflect on is like how my like opinion on the ending has changed in the past yes. few weeks. I'm oh, very yeah. curious like, about that. Because like not just like reading like I haven't like re- read a ton of explainers on what happened because I think there just could be a lot of interpretations for what happens. Right. Yeah. But like I personally like I don't know. It was like kind of cool to honestly, I don't know. Well, I'll talk about it later. But yeah, it's just, I think that'll be like a fun thing to reflect on and kind of get yes. where y'all are at right yeah. now. You, yeah. you are us uh, weeks in the future, yeah. I think. Yeah. yeah. And I forget the timeline. It's hazy, just like Biggs and Zach. Um, yeah. Ross. Worlds unite, you know? <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're going to unite some worlds here because Ross made some custom cocktails. The Cosmo Canyon, as he insists on calling it. The Cosmo Canyon. When. When it came back up later in the game again, I was like, we're going to have to drink these for the yeah. final one. No and uh, I have no idea if it's going to be any good. It's definitely going to be worse when we put salt in it. As and they that's do Cosmo Canyon salt, the- just to be clear? Yep. Yes, it is. Okay. Yeah, I, I assume I found it in your kitchen. So. Oh, yeah, it's the only one I buy <laughs> yes. from Trader Joe's. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, Ross, thank you so much. Hey, yeah, cheers. To Eric. Cheers. Salud. Mmm. I can taste the Cosmos. Mmm. Mmm. Hey, Ross. Yeah. This is damn tasty. Yeah, hey, great. What are the ingredients to a Cosmo Canyon for you? Uh, I put some um, cranberry, some mm. lime, some Ooh. Cointreau, the fancy French uh, orange liqueur. Oh, my God. Oh, of course. And then of some uh, vodka citron. Vodka citron? Yes. You know Bernie's allergic to vodka citron. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Get him. Why do you think I picked it? I've been sober for years. <laughs> <laughs> And I am going to put a little salt in just for accuracy's okay. sake, okay. but yeah. I think I it's a bad g- idea. Yeah. I just want to say. Give us no. the review. Give us the review. Oh, that was really that good. Was, that was not a tifa <laughs> amount of salt, dude. Come on. All right. Uh, while, you, while you salt that up, uh, most common comment. We had hundreds of I people. I don't know why. It feels like you should. Yeah. Uh, we had hundreds of people submit comments over there on Patreon. That's what keeps this whole thing operational. Oh, <laughs> thanks, jokester. Um, hundreds <laughs> of comments. Anna, the question is, what do you think was the most common comment? What were people submitting comments um, about on Patreon um, the most? Um, wait, oh. is this like things that they noticed when they played or questions yes. that they had? Yeah, um, things they noticed. Not things they having wanted to their materia on Kate Sith in the final boss battle. Oh! Interesting. Ooh. That's, that's <laughs> a good. really yeah. good one. Uh, yeah. Ross? I'm going to say, um, wait, what does the staticky thing mean? Ooh. Oh, yeah. No, no one asked that, actually. Uh, Ronnie? Okay. The ending. <laughs> Could you be more specific? Oh, he nails it again. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Galaxy <I> would, <laughs> brain Ronnie over here. Uh, I would say uh, clouds. Don't blow it, dude. Don't blow this. It's like you're my inner monologue. Uh, it's like it's, don't blow it, cloud. <laughs> <laughs> it's a clouds interpretation of what happened. <laughs> Cloud and Aerith communicating. I don't even know how to say this. Cloud and Aerith, <laughs> like communicating at the end. Okay, like, like, like where in, in the grassy fields level. Yeah. Okay. Uh, where Cloud is in relation to like how he's processed, I guess Aerith's death. It's a little I, I wordy. Do you have to include the? Uh, I don't know. Does it have to be part of it? To be? I don't know. <laughs> uh, most common comment was people just being like, "What the hell? This uh, is yeah, dumb." Yeah. Yeah. Oh, really? Multiverse. Really? Uh, it's a, uh, okay. that was number one. Uh, okay. yeah. Number right. two was just yeah. talking specifically about Era's death, like how they handled that. Yeah. Um, the yeah. date at Gold Saucer was huge. A lot of people yes. were about that. Yes. Uh, was, and okay. then the trials were probably right below that, yeah. which I'm very excited. That a lot of people oh, were yeah. yeah. passionate trials. about that. Yeah. Um, Look, we can go a thousand different directions for this bad boy. I'm curious, so Ronnie, as somebody who finished it last night, yeah, your your takeaway, sir. Not you don't have to sum up all the rebirth at this sure. point, but just yeah. the, the last three chapters. How you feeling? How you feeling leaving that game when it's fresh off your fingertips? Yeah, I I feel 
I love the game. Mm-hmm. I mean, overall, solidly, really, really enjoyed it. Um, it's going to be interesting to it, it, see how I feel about it in the next couple of weeks. Like, yeah. there's a part of me that's just like that I could, you know, see myself being like, oh, I just like I'm so glad to be wrapping this game up. Mm-hmm. And there's also a part of me that's like, I was like, should I go back for hard mode? Because, yes, <laughs> because there is a part of me that's like, I, I, I am apparently not sick of the systems. It's, no. it's still a, a wonderful story that I've been um, just kind of chewing on. And uh, yeah, no, I think in terms of the no, shut up. Okay. I think in terms of the uh, uh, the ending, I just like, I just have not been able to really wrap my head around it yet. Yeah, but I, my general impression is just like, ooh, there's there was. They fumbled the landing a little bit. They still landed. Yeah. How much they fumbled, I don't know. Yeah, That's it's, what I, you know, you can think about it too much. I'd argue maybe some people over there at Square oh. are thinking about the plot of Final Fantasy VII too <laughs> maybe much. Maybe a little too much. If this is where they end up. Yeah. At the same time, it's like, yeah, no, I think it exact same trajectory for me for remake of loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it, liked it, a little more numb than I wanted to be yeah. credits. Yeah. You yeah. know? Yeah. And, I will say the smartest move they made was putting all the scenes in that play during the credits. Yeah, is that nice? I was that like was watching helpful. the ending. I was like, what? 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 Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, okay. And then the credits play, and I'm like, oh, yeah, that that happened. Yes. I love that part. That yeah, part. Right, yeah. And so it really left me uh, with a positive feeling. Yeah. It, it's funny. Yeah, we had um, uh, Swarke wrote in. Sorry for pronunciation, pronouncing, pronunciating your name wrong. They say, after seeing Broden as a robed man in Chapter 11, I immediately went back to Calm when given the chance to check in on his inn. I was not prepared for the sheer amount of nostalgia coming back. Yeah, not just the now Brodenless inn, but the entire region had me tearing up. Maybe it's just a side effect of following a deepest dive, but this last month so far has been an incredible adventure. The game has its flaws, for sure, but in the end, it's a game about friends, mini games, and getting better. (laughs) (laughs) That's not too bad. And I feel like this is where this uh, conversation oftentimes with Rebirth has to go. It's like, God, this is a really good game. It's got its flaws. You mm-hmm. know, it's like, it's you always going to have mm-hmm. that disclaimer. Same with Remake, yeah. you know? And yeah. like, I feel like people have gotten their knives out a little bit more towards Remake. Of being like, really? Oh, I, I, I feel that. Maybe it's just wait, like the wait, crew. Wait, wait, saying what? Mm. I'm here to defend Remake. Yeah, well, if you tune into the Min Max show, it's just mm. everybody just, I think it's just kind of like, oh, it's so dour. We're doing the same boring quests over and over again. There's so many stupid mm. forced gameplay moments. And a lot of that, I think, holds sure. true for Rebirth. But like, yeah. I, I was thinking about that. And this question, or the you know comment about Calm had me thinking about it too where like i i love my time with this game so much it's gonna be such a great cozy game to go back into and play i think throughout the entire year and i think yeah you know going back to old towns i get that feeling and you know i um i was watching square released like you know some kind of uh documentary like mm-hmm. a four part i think it's up to right now i'm just kind of chronicling different parts of it and just like they had so many beauty shots of like removing all the ui and just having the camera like fly through the gold saucer or fly through calm and just like seeing those environments again mm-hmm. even after I just finished this Rebirth game, I was still like, God, yeah. I I need to be reminded how much affection I have for every environment in this game and how many incredible yeah. little moments there are, even if big picture-wise, it does feel like them, you know, laying out a rope, telling the story, and then at the end, just like in Rebirth, being like, and now it's Tangled in or not. Have fun. We'll see you in four years. It's like, <laughs> yeah, okay, yes. you guys, do you need to do that? Do you need to have this puzzle? blast at the end that just doesn't hit emotionally in the ways you think it does or yeah. maybe they don't care about the emotions there's a lot here uh but Anna, i'm curious just yeah your trajectory you know yeah. thoughts of the game as a whole and then how you've changed since you finished it i mean i so i mean as a whole i don't like rebirth as much as remake Ooh, interesting I, okay i really appreciated being in like one setting for remake and i know that was never going to be rebirth so i'm not like upset that this is rebirth um yeah. I just, like, really appreciated, like, the sense of place that we got from having an entire game set in Midgar. Yeah. Um, And just, like, felt, like, really kind of, I don't know, enmeshed in that, like, light in life there. It's more Mm. focused. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. And, like, and the story felt more focused and it felt, like, more linear. Whereas this is, like, this is, like, definitely, like, the we're hanging out as friends game. And so, like, I think for me, like, 
there are certain, yeah, like the story is semi non-existent, maybe until the end. But it is about like hanging out with friends and right. like it delivers like so many strong character moments, character like so much attention to detail. Like even thinking about like how Sid picks up Kate Sith from like the ledge and like puts him down. That, like, honestly, yeah. that exact moment yeah. slayed me. It's yeah. those little things yeah. of like how do you quantify the value yeah. of that? But it's everything. Yeah. 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 When you're talking about this game being hanging out with friends. I had the same feeling moving into the final mission of this and going past the point of no return that I did in Final Fantasy 15, which is a game mm. that is just about a road trip with friends and that the the end of fun times, right? Right. And with you know, all of us have played the, played the original before, probably, so we all know that Aerith died at the end. So you know, it's such a that, weird thing to finally be able to yeah, talk right. about in non spoilers. I was like, yeah. is Ben gonna be mad if I say this, <laughs> uh, dude? Come on, <laughs> I'm gonna have to cut this out. Uh, yeah, so you know that it's the end of the fun times when you go up to that northern continent, right? And so I was yeah. like, is there nothing else I can do to just squeeze out a little more time with my pals before mm. everything goes wrong? Which honestly, like, I really like like that because I feel like that's where Aerith's at. Like the yes. weird yes. dream date, it's just her being like, I just want this one more fun yeah. thing for myself before I have to like be an adult and die. No, I, yep. I mean, there's that little moment too, um, right after the trials, you know, where <laughs> It's the dicky thing we'll get into where Cloud's like, all right, enough, let's go. And Cloud's like, <laughs> so cruel. And Cloud's like we're running out of time. And Aerith is like, I know. Like, I love your discomfort. Yeah. Like, no one is more aware of how much time we're going out of than me in this situation. I'm trying to savor these things in life. Um, and I think, you know, it's so smart, I think, just to have, and we'll get into this in a bigger way, but, like, in that Loveless play, like, to have that scene, even if it's Aerith and Cloud playing other characters, but to give them, like, one more scene of just kind of, like, romantic interaction I thought that was so smart. Like, yeah, this is this is the stage of the game where you just need to savor everything you got with her because we know she's heading out the door. Or is she? I did don't you know. romance Aerith then? Oh, well, look. Okay. We, so we're going <laughs> to yeah, try and There's some like basic her, ground. There's some basic ground. You don't need to cover it all. You don't need to recover no, it all. No, 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 no. Um, we'll get into it, yeah. the whole date stuff. So we're going to try and move somewhat chronologically, even though I'm yeah. guilty of jumping around myself just then, uh, to move through uh, this whole sucker. Ronnie, chapter 12. We got the tiny Bronco, and Sid's like, hey, I'm changing the name. It's now Bronco Boats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, really? Um, I, yeah. I, it was fun to be able to drive that thing around. It was. Um, and, like, yes. especially, this is more chapter 13, so I'm already breaking my rule, but <laughs> just being able to explore in the Bronco, it felt like just a whole new wave of exploration of, like, oh, it really does feel like a journey to be able to go up to the northern continent now to be able yeah. to go there and like just coming around a continent and yeah. seeing like the sister ray cannon right there it's like, yep. oh my god i thought they were going to limit you so much more because when they set up the tiny bronco he's like look she can't go in the open waters the ocean will tear her apart and i was like okay so stay by the shore like the original got it and it's like no i mean you can still go to Junon. you can go everywhere yes yeah. you just yep. can't go out to the equivalent of the pacific ocean I right guess. yeah like, right and did you guys do the uh the compass quest, the, yes. the boat side quest. No, I did not. I did part of it. Yeah. yeah, that's where you fight like all the different dragons around. Yeah, yep. I fought one of them, and it was just because it was on the way. In <laughs> okay. I know yeah. the one you're talking about. But just such a great new quest to open up, and like you know, in, encourages you to use that boat to get around in different places and yeah. explore yeah. little nooks and crannies, which I found very very fun. And uh, there's a there's a great line in that quest too where. Red 13 is like, ooh, I wonder what kind of treasure we'll find when we get that compass. He's like super excited about it, and Cloud goes, you do you. And then yeah. Red goes, oh, but I mean, nothing compares to the greatest treasure of all, the planet. <laughs> <laughs> cool. He's like, I, gotta, I guess I got to be cool about this guy. Uh, cool, wise, not okay. Yeah, I, I love uh, the framing of that quest is like, oh, this is this is what Pirate's Booty was based on. This is the real world event hundreds of years ago of these pirates and the magical booty and all this stuff. And it, it was a nice opportunity to explore the world a little bit, to get closer to the giant bird at Fort Condor in the original. Yeah. Like, oh, can I actually go there now? It's like, no, no, you right. can kind of just get closer to the rocks and look yep. closer at the bird, but still not quite get to whatever that environment's going to be that I imagine they're going to blow out in part three there. Um, but yeah, it was nice. It, like so much of this end stuff, it's fun just to be like, oh, we're in the end game now, as Marvel likes to proclaim. Um, but I just don't know how challenging these fights are going to be. And so it's like, is everything going to be final boss level difficult? And so it's fun to be like, 
oh, these dragons for the pirate booty quest, uh, piece of cake. Not a problem at all. Yeah. Gilgamesh stuff will grind you into dust. It's like, okay, I thought this was all uh, okay. equal, but yeah. maybe not. Here. Yeah. That was my biggest disappointment with the game is that the final Gilgamesh missions are level suggested of 65 and 70 like what? i yeah. you know for a for a quest line that i had so much fun doing the whole time i wanted to be able to finish it mm. in this playthrough and it's clearly something that like you can only finish after you are either grinding for levels or playing hard mode and leveling up naturally that way or whatever right. yeah. so yeah the, the the battles you have to fight two summons at a time and they're super high level <laughs> it's ridiculous brutal. yeah they just stomped me yeah, nobody I, actually ever beat odin if you knew that, no one <laughs> actually. Never None did of us. It. Did you beat Odin? I did beat Odin. Nice. Yep. Yeah. I, I yeah. haven't gone back to him. To Anna, did you mm -mm, do the Odin mm -mm. fight? It's no. brutal. It's pretty fun, but it's very tricky. What's yeah. the secret there? You gotta have Yuffie and uh, load her up with all your like ATB materia that gives her extra stuff. Yeah. Uh, you just build up the meter and cast Windstorm over and over again. You have to do that because he's super good at dodging. So if you try to do it with like Cloud, he will dodge clouds attacks a lot of times mm, right and if you because if you don't hit him with repeated atb attacks uh he will eventually just cast zantetsuken yeah he gets you. bored yeah mm. like, exactly okay. yeah. so Doesn't you just gotta hit him over and over and over again till he's done mm. oh my god mm. uh on, on just a little story beat when you're driving around the tiny bronco in the water I love the idea that, like, at some point, I think Barrett asks, like, you know, I'm a sucker for Barrett and Sid interactions. And there's yes. not that many in this game, right? Um, but just Barrett being like, hey, Sid, what? You still working for Shinra? I can't respect anybody that works for Shinra. <laughs> and it's my favorite thing. There's a lot of interesting Shinra ups and downs in this game in general. Like, how much do we hate them? Should we have sympathy for the soldiers? Yada, yada, yada. Yeah. But I love that Barrett was trying to call Sid out on that. And Sid just shut him down immediately. Like, he's like, I don't think kindly to people telling me what to do. And he's like, if I want to take a job from Shinra, I'm going to take a job from Shinra. You <laughs> yeah, need to yeah, sit yeah. down and shut up. Yep. Drink your goddamn tea, as a wise man yeah, once said. Absolutely. It's <laughs> super fun just to have that little glimpse of where this is going. It, the Sid and Vincent thing is wild. I was amazed <laughs> that they were there yes. throughout so much of it. And it's so weird, Anna, like in a game about friends and bonds, mm -hmm. it's like, here are two friends. Yeah. You won't really get to bond with yeah. them too much throughout all of these chapters. It's bizarre. I love the... Well, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. No. At the end, so it's just like, so what did this Aerith girl do? Yeah, he's basically like, like, who's wow. Aerith? Yeah. Yeah. Everyone is yeah. in their morning. Which is such an interesting thing because one of the reasons why mm -hmm. he wanted to join up with them in the first place was to help Aerith, wasn't it? Yeah, I, th I mean, I think so. Because, like, I know we're going, like, back in chapter, no. but that's yeah. something I loved about Sid and Aerith is, like, in Nibelheim, uh, Aerith is all like sad because she doesn't have a childhood friend. But then she meets Sid, who yeah. kind of like knew her for a longer period of time. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, that's cute. Like, you know, she was feeling was alone, it, right. and then she gets that at the end. And so, but then at the end, he's like, what did Aerith do? And I'm like, do you mean yeah. literally just now? Like, why did she die? I, I think yeah. it's literally like, yeah. you know, was she praying? Like, yeah. I understand what that means. Yeah. Yeah. Rather yeah. than yeah. just like, yeah. what was the point of her yeah. life? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what did she even do? What, what did was she her whole even provide for us? Yeah. You weren't interested in dating her, were you, Cloud? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, bro. I like that Aerith's mom is much more of a factor in this than I remember mm. her being in the original game mm -hmm. because yeah. they're the thing where, where Sid knows her. Well, I thought for sure that... When we went to, and I'm not jumping ahead, I swear, but for Aerith's trial, I was like, oh, are we going to see a flash of Sid interaction with Afalma? Yeah, and yeah. it's like, oh, no, no, that, I guess, was before they got on the train in the escape. And mm -hmm. so, okay. But it was like, because it would have been confusing, I guess, like, it's Aerith's trial. Here's a cameo from Sid real right. quick. Like, <laughs> I'm here, too. And I'm going to bum a cigarette real quick. <laughs> Vincent's in the back corner, like, brooding. I, yes. I honestly wish, and this is maybe controversial, I feel like they were kind of forced to, like, well... We got to have those party members in there. I yeah. wish, honestly, it was just like, you saw Vincent in the coffin. He said, good day. Close the mm -hmm. coffin. And we didn't see him again until part three. Like him Except being for there, playing okay, Queen's Blood okay. against him, right? Well, sure. <laughs> but who else would tell Cloud, she's in there waiting for you. Go. And, and like when he holds open like, the doorway, yeah. the portal yeah. thing at the end. Or like, you know, it is worth it for those little moments of like, two after you beat the Turks and then Vincent mm -hmm. just shows up and talks to him. He's like, Turks never die. Or whatever he says. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, that's so cool. Death doesn't... Soup to Turk. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, great yeah, line. Yeah, yeah. His yeah. footstep just coming in while they're all down like that was one of the coolest visuals of the game. It is awesome. At the same time, don't you feel like emotionally constrained? It's like, I want to, the beauty of this game, I want to have that with you, Vincent. I want to sit down <laughs> and just have a nice little chit chat with you. And you kind of get it on his side quest where you go back to Shinra Mansion, right? And it's yep. like, there's some ghost 
that's wailing if you could take care of that and it's like singing the original music from the shinra mansion and it's like we can give you a little tease but we can't fully rip the band-aid off in this side quest for your interactions with vincent but i thought that was sure. interesting to be able to like in the elevator ride when vincent's like I could have taken Sephiroth out kind of years ago. Along hey. those lines, I yeah. was like worried when, you know, going back to the Bronco, I was worried that there's going to be like a really nice hidden cutscene side quest information type thing somewhere along the coast. Because mm. in the original, like they're like a, one of Vincent's like most important like cutscenes is hidden through the water. Right. And I was like, Lucretia. Right? Yeah, they're going to save all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I have not. Th- I, no, I just haven't thought yeah, about I was, that. I, for, don't spoil, for but quite I was thinking, while. like, I was, I was really weird because I was by that time I was kind of like done. I was like, okay, I'm just like gonna go to end. We're gonna finish this game. Yeah. Little did I know how much was left. Um, but I was, but part of me was like, okay, well, I'm just gonna take a little bit of time, explore the coastline, make sure that there's nothing like there's nothing. There's no Vincent content. In I mean, the there's coast. not that wow, much yeah. on the coast. There's yeah. a couple docks. It's just yeah. cool that like in some of the valleys and stuff in between the continents and the ravines like I don't know if you noticed it I think it's the first time in chapter 12 here where you get to drive the Bronco you can see just like a bunch of gears and stuff like lodged into the mountain and that mm-hmm. I thought too much about that because like the gear imagery comes up again and again and again through all these chapters and it's like is that supposed to be old Cetra tech you or something you can see that mm. in the uh, the mines by Cor- North Corel okay uh, so when you're doing the Yuffie or the excuse me the Yuffie mission around there gotta pronounce it right who's Yuffie yeah exactly uh you you can see those on the on the walls when you're doing kind of the minecart ride, I think, yeah. and then when you end up. So it's like literally you're going mm. under those minecart uh, tracks that you rode in that uh, at the end of that chapter. Yeah. Um, do you all want to jump into main story stuff for twelve? You want to do some side quests because they kind of free you up here to do whatever you yeah. want. Yeah. One more thing about Vincent yeah, and oh, not please. having him in in your party. I did like how anytime you park the boat at a dock, he will be skulking around somewhere. <laughs> yeah. He's just like hanging out. It is weird. Yeah, it's like a, going to Costa del Sol. All right, he'll just wander around for a little bit. It's just I was kind of frustrated by that kind of mm. half a foot in yep. the storyline, but not fully ready to go. Yeah, um, but and I, I did like when when I think it's when you go to the northern continent and you talk to him at the dock. There, he's like, oh being in the outdoors is very difficult. And I was like, he's just like us, a true gamer. <laughs> Fully covering up his face. Yeah. In, every much way. No, in that, um, in his main side quest, then when you go to the mansion, um, you know, it's like the, the light story beat they have there at the end is you take out the monster and it turns out that was the one, the creature that was singing the songs and all that stuff. And it's just, the lesson is, hey, monsters can have a heart, can't they? And Vincent is leaning into that message a little bit with his transformations mm. and all that stuff, which is, a nice touch but i loved going in on that mission um when barrett he's like <laughs> talking about like not being scared and what is it he had some like i was part of the not scaredy parade what was it again oh here it is <laughs> um yeah barrett he said um he's like i was voted bravest buddy as a kid and he's like i'm not scared of the paranormal because we already fought the gi and he goes and they were ghosts i i think <laughs> I love that too. Like, no one really knows what that was <laughs> yeah the vincent quote you're i think you're referring to mm. is despite their appearance some fiends are capable of complex thinking and even having emotions i was like who Vincent's are we talking about here softy. Man? Yeah. <laughs> no he's not he's such a zero Aww. no but i do love his characterization so far like we talked about it before anna but like he's always been too cool for school Mm -hmm, and like mm -hmm. they're already undercutting that and Mm -hmm. giving him some jokey moments and Mm -hmm. like the joke is on Vincent compared Mm -hmm. to 1997 yeah Vincent was just peak of the mountain cool guy and now it's like no times have changed we don't think vampires are that cool anymore dude are y'all playing with a Japanese version or the English dub Ooh, are you playing Japanese no 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 no, I was gonna say Mammers did a great job the voicing Vincent yeah Yeah. really really great yeah for sure really fun um, oh, before I forget on the Vincent train of thought, too. Um, when Vincent was talking about in that mission about, like, you know, I kind of blame myself. I could have taken out Sephiroth a long time ago. I had my chances. Mm. Um, and Cloud just has a line, which is pretty telling, I think, for people who are into the future Sephiroth theory, where Cloud goes, I don't, I actually don't know if you can kill him. And he goes, and even if you could, I think you'd stick with you somehow, is what uh, Cloud <laughs> tells Vincent. It's like, that seems pretty on the nose for yeah, yeah. where we think the larger picture is going. At least we did in Rebirth, and now maybe it's shaking up that stuff which we can obviously get into it's also about the most honest cloud has ever been in mm. this entire game mm. of him mm. just being like ah, i think yeah. i think this might be going on yeah that sephiroth will stick with you yeah. yeah yeah um so side quest stuff like it's just continuing to hit home in chapter 12 that no one died in midgar everyone's coming out to play like 
I always forget how to pronounce the name, but Zihe, Zihe from Intermission, like Yuffie's buddy, he's out fixing the Jeep in the middle of uh, the desert out there. You have that whole mission with him, all that fun stuff. Uh, and then, you know, we got the whole mission um, with the, what is it? The Angel of the Slums. She yeah. comes back. Kyrie, yeah. Kyrie's grandma, all yep. that stuff comes back. And remember that weird sequence where Cloud like was trying to kill Kyrie, <laughs> like he's like yes. taking a sword to her yeah. as, a, as a mop thing. But. Yeah, I love when Kyrie's grandma's like, I'm taking her back to Midgar, and Cloud goes, Try to make sure she stays there. <laughs> yes. Just keep her we, in the slums, we please. We cannot yes. say enough how much we hate her. Um, what has it been like reading stuff online, uh, Anna? I know you say I haven't read too much about mm. this game and stuff, but you know, I mm. was so worried about spoilers, and mm. now having finished the game, it's so liberating. Mm to get out there. Cause I saw like, you know, Aerith was trending on Twitter weeks ago and I was like, Oh my God, if that just said Aerith lives, Aerith dies, mm -hmm. yeah. that would have been disasters for me. Yeah. Now I don't know if they could say that, but I mean, it, it's been satisfying to be able to not be scared of the internet at this point. But do you feel like people are tiptoeing around the final events of the game or are they too complicated to even spoil or like, what is the, um, that's a good point. Well, I've been mainly reading opinions on the ending. Yeah. And so less like of a, you know, um, completely assured idea of like, this is what happens or like, here's what the theory is, but more so like, here are our responses to like this general approach and this turn in the story. Yeah. Um, which is also weird to think about because it's like, it, we actually saw the beginnings of that in remake. And so it's not even necessarily new is like the thing that I've been thinking about. Um, but actually like, I would say reading stuff has made me, um, I've like softened. I was really kind of grumpy about the ending. Ooh, okay. okay. And then since then, like, I feel like exposing myself to like a bunch of different perspectives has kind of like allowed me to kind of like play with different ideas and settle at this point of like, okay, well, I can kind of see how this is in line with like the theme of the game. And like, I don't think that this is necessarily like a Marvel sellout or anything. And like actually thinking about like Aerith as like a, a character i think it's like a you know a very tragic and kind of like suitable like weirdly gray way for her to go you know like yeah. she doesn't even she gives everything and she doesn't even get a conclusive ending and that's because she is like the best <laughs> you know <laughs> it's true, right like she doesn't she doesn't get closure do you, you think that yeah. do, you, do you feel like a part of you the like one of the reasons why you may may have been kind of like grumpy about the ending, particularly in the beginning. Like, had you been able to formulate coherent thoughts mm. on like what mm. happened? <laughs> or is I don't know. No, I mean, I really, think that's like, a valid question. That, yeah. That's a valid question because like I had to like I kind of had to like go back and just really summarize to myself in really plain terms what happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like. Should I say what I think happens? Sure. Are we yeah. jumping ahead of ourselves? Well, it's, maybe a little bit. We're jumping ahead of ourselves. That's fine. We don't need to get into it. But I think, <laughs> yeah, to answer your question, yes. Yeah. Like, I had to, like, go back and be like, okay, so this is what happens. And, like, or this is what I think happens yeah. because of this and this. Yeah. I, I think it's easy yeah. to kind of, very easy, because this is what Square is doing, is they want to uh drag you along for four years to think about this it's very easy to yeah. overthink this stuff yeah and then every once in a while i just had to snap back to just big picture wise <sighs> mm -hmm. like okay Aerith is dead there's multiple universes mm -hmm. the See, even the way that up. you just said that no yeah. exactly Aerith is dead. <laughs> no, every, every time i write about i've written about the ending yeah. i'm like Aerith is dead we think for these reasons yes. right yeah. i think Aerith's mega dead Mega yeah. dead. Yeah. She had a mega death. Could be deader. I, she's dead. dead. Hangar the, eighteen. The yeah. further out we get, the more convinced I am that she's dead, and also the more convinced I am that she's not dead. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why your brain is growing. Yeah. It's too confusing. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Square Enix, for <laughs> the opportunity to grow my brain. <laughs> But I, you, I think the way what they, you just said is exactly what they were hoping people yes. would have, the reaction people would have. Yep, I think you're exactly right. You kind of have to vibe with it. Yeah, and I just like, <laughs> something that you just said, Ben, is just like, well, it's, I think it's easy to overthink it. It's just like, is it really that easy to overthink it? Because yes. I'm in the space of like, <laughs> first you have to conceptualize that, what happened to, yeah, in a exactly. way that kind of makes sense yeah. in yeah. order for you to overthink yeah. it in the first place. Because yeah. at first you're just kind of like yeah. trying to make sense of it. And I think that can even feel like overthinking it, yeah. particularly in the beginning. Okay. And I will say after reviewing cutscenes, because I reviewed a lot yep. of important cutscenes for this and I was taking notes, I felt myself becoming more delusional 
delusional because I was yes, like sure, noticing yeah. even more details and just not fully knowing. Yep, what I'm totally with it. you. We're like, I captured my entire playthrough and I went back through it and watched it again and again and again. I Ooh, replayed the ending okay. multiple times. And then really? even I was when I was picking up food because we had a beautiful meal of Lian Chin. Uh, Incredible. Mm-hmm, thank you to mm-hmm. Lian Chin for uh, yeah, providing thank food you, for the deepest yes. dive. Yeah. Um, but as I was sitting in that restaurant, thinking about how good those cream cheese wontons were going to be. Mm-hmm. Oh, don't get me started. After Aerith died. Right. No, and then I was thinking about <laughs> she like, loved dead these. wontons. All right, Aerith. She would have loved these. Cream cheese Frying. wontons. But I just remembered like, oh, wait. I thought I had everything kind of lined up. And then there was that scene where Cloud looks at Aerith and goes, Aerith, wake up. And then she does. I know. <laughs> I know. Okay. Wait I, a minute. I know. Yeah. Okay, it's we can we go back to to Pleasure Town, yeah. USA, Ronnie? Oh yeah, I'm talking about Lee Anch- Have no. you actually? <laughs> been to, did you know there's like a, in Saint Cloud? There's like a trailer. I'm sorry. There's like a place called Pleasure Town. It's probably why it's in my head because she grew up in Saint Cloud, Ronnie. I don't know if you know this. Yeah, you know yeah, 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 yeah. He yeah. went to school in Saint Cloud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Where in Saint Cloud? This is now become the audio <laughs> Ronnie <laughs> deepest dive. Yeah, where if in Saint Cloud did you grow up? <laughs> right on Highway yeah, 10, America. just north yeah. outside of town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is real uh, Tifa and Cloud moment, right? Here. <laughs> uh, uh, no, can we just talk about uh, going back to the gold saucer? The, yes. in chapter I know we haven't even talked about the gondola. I know there's so oh yes, <laughs> most romantic gondola known to man. So um, Sean S writes in on Patreon. Thank you, Sean S, for supporting us. They say when you run around the gold saucer and run into Red Thirteen in the Chocobo Square. He will say that he wishes he could enter as a jockey or a chocobo. <laughs> oh, that is the love. same character who has GERD and yeah. anyone who dare treat him like an animal. Now he's cool with whatever. Pull it together, Red, says Sean. <laughs> That's a good point. It's I, a difference between somebody putting it on him and him choosing it for himself. Right? I think so, too. Mm. And also, it's not you're a cute little doggy boy. Because he always, he liked Kitty boy. It. Yeah. Well, fiery, would, <laughs> fiery rat boy. Yeah. Um, but he's always <laughs> into the idea of like. a fiery rat? <laughs> not. <laughs> Slander Nanaki is my fiery rat boy. <laughs> but like he's always been into showing off his animal skills. Like, I can smell. I, I can hunt. Yeah, I yeah. can do it. I yep. can do it, you know? But he just doesn't like when people are like, sleep on the bear. <laughs> 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 Whatever the hell else is going I, on. Okay, this brings up a question though. I am curious, like, do you all like feel like some of these moments are a bit out of character? I mean, you're talking about like Vincent earlier and him yeah, already sure. being like yeah. not cool. And this was something that I was asking myself, could not come to like a firm conclusion of like oh like is cloud a bit out of character at some points are they all mm, kind of you know mm-hmm. i don't know in the service of entertaining us i i didn't feel that that was the sure. case strongly but i feel like that brings it up i think i think they they play with that a little bit like they they know where to like stretch and kind of push mm-hmm. but they don't I, I don't feel like they ever get to a point maybe a little bit with nanaki but i think part of the reason why i feel that way is because they they kind of just like so he's got a new personality now, yeah. you know, and, yeah. and so it, it, yeah. it kind of it, it just fits. sticks out yeah. a little bit more. Yeah. yeah. It, it's a little drawing, yeah. like, with the date with Nanaki. Like, mm. he is full, like, like <laughs> full, like, dog in a car mode <laughs> in that gondola. Ba- he's Bow Wow Wow. He is Bow Wow Wow. Wait, is Nanaki with the others? Like, no. the group boys date? No, no, no. He's on his oh, own. You I didn't see that one. I didn't oh, see that one. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, whoa, 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 okay, hang on. Okay, okay, okay. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. Let's pop up some stuff before that. Speaking of... We're all clearly wanting to talk about the date. Yeah, it's... Yeah, but... This is the only reason we've come here tonight. Hey, when I got to that hotel and and the game was like, hey, a date is about to happen, I was like, finally! It's happening to me, too. Celibate Ross over here is finally coming out of the woodwork. I did not get a date in the whatever chapter that is. In the earlier chapter because it's kind of like we were, we were mistaken by being like oh we called it the date they call it a date oh, but it's a weird it's, thing for like in this version there's yeah. kind of multiple dates there's okay. yeah I mean, but there's still multiple versions there too i mean oh, you could well, get rid of tifa yeah yes and there's also like different levels of intensity yeah. for the date and we'll get to that in a second okay, i swear sure. to god yeah uh, james g writes in and says i don't know if anyone else saw this but you can talk to your party members throughout the gold saucer before finding dio um, I like that because it's like Sid. Of course, he's going to be in like the spaceship area. He's like, that looks fun. Oh, Hail the fly or fun. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, uh, but you, uh, <laughs> he said, you'll never guess where we find our boy Vincent. That's right. You find him at the Ghost Hotel. To which he comments, "Excellent design. Very cozy. If we're to stay the night, I call the coffin." Uh, between this, the Queen's Blood shenanigans, uh, and this aloof loner refusing to give me a pep talk, I can't wait for him to become fully playable in part three. Yeah. Uh, totally. Cr- crispy. Yep. This is why. I like the deepest dive because you read in with this stuff that I missed. But he says, the first time I went to Ghost House at the Gold Saucer, the girl at the points counter says something like, you better buy stuff now. I just got bitten and it's going to turn soon. 
And I assumed it was oh, just some fun. playful theme dialogue, like a Disneyland employee would say. But returning to her in Chapter 12, and she's just a complete monster now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she's a yin cool. and yang, I believe, right? Oh, really? Yep. Oh, oh, my God. What did Shinra do to her? I have a question about Gold Saucer. Wait, before you... Come, I just wanted to compliment, compliment you on your uh, Sid impression. It's oh, really? really good. Yeah, yeah, it's I was thinking good, man. the exact uh, same thing. So yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yep. And I'm not wowed by his voice in the game, and I'm still not wowed I by just, my voice I on Earth. I love Sid. it. I, I love Sid. I love Sid. I love yeah. Sid. I love Sid, too. No, I just, I'm not sold. No, you don't. No, you don't. Sid's my number one. Sid's my number one. No, he's not. I like the voice. You pointed out his mannerisms last time, and that really stuck with me. The whole Japanese mannerisms thing? Yeah. it's. I can't unsee it. He should be saying, ah, shucks, and kicking rocks. Yeah. Like one of us Americans. Good old, yeah. Yeah. So did you guys do a lot of chocobo racing? Because they really drop a ton of races on you at a time do they ever and that's yes. like a whole night's worth of racing it really was i didn't i eventually skipped some in like the second block but it was yeah. like i'm having a night where i'm just chocobo racing and listening to podcasts and it's like it's funny that this is now the payoff for the most coherent long-running storyline throughout all of rebirth which is chocobo sam the oh murderer my God, yes <laughs> the but fact that they're finally the cold-blooded killer i just had my birds rip your parents <laughs> apart <laughs> <laughs> oh my birds <laughs> Uh, you yeah. ready to hear the story? It's, 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 that's the story. <laughs> Bart, no mercy from the birds. <laughs> this is a true crime, <laughs> chocobo crime podcast now. <laughs> yeah, but then, okay, little Billy wanted the true story about his parents, and turns out they were trying to fund the... F- a habitat. To, like, yes, yeah. Yeah. and it is a fun payoff then to be like, hey... Every chocobo you've seen in the wild are because of your parents, their yeah. belly. It was like, oh, that's that's a nice way to kind of tie chocobo hunting through all the different regions together. There, yes. Um, even if then it was, they were so low on cash, they eventually got roped into Don Corneo stuff, and then yep. so did so Don Corneo kill classic, them? Yes, basically. Or he turned them into monsters. Is was that, that it? it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. What if we fought? Oh, what if you oh, fought the parents? Yeah. This I, it is not above the Wait detail of this three, game yeah. to somehow indicate yeah. that there's some monster out there that are their parents. And you yeah. need to turn them back in yeah. part three. The fact that I don't think there's a single character in a remake that they didn't bring back for Rebirth. I feel like every character and every mention of everything yeah. in this game, it's going to be in part three. You yes. Know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's a really good uh, prediction for part three, actually, that that quest will continue on in some way. Yeah. yeah. I guess it, yeah. Speaking of turning into monsters. It was such a quick thing. I was like, wait, what? In the Temple of the Ancients, and Anna, to be very clear, I'm not jumping in. I would never dare do that. Yeah, you, no, 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 no. no, no. no. This but, is chapter 12, right? No, chapter 13 is Temple of the Ancients. This is chapter 9. No, this is chapter 12. We should go back to 9. Anna's right. No, <laughs> but in Temple of the Ancients, I thought it was so weird. They just have one cutscene of, like, the Shinra soldiers being turned into, like, the monsters you've been fighting. They, like, they never, just, like, once into, like, again, they're just like, that's wait, weird. I literally don't remember that. Yeah, it's the a The light bizarre. stream comes happens. over and yeah. it's like, guess what? These are monsters now, not yeah. dead bodies. And so that's the idea. That's why you can't leave the temple, because it collapses on you, but then also... It'll just turn but then, you but into then the Vincent creatures. comes and like, I've secured a path, and then you and then and you the can, path yeah. is just the way you came. Back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Thank you, you can, Vincent. Yeah, you can thank me later. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, the, uh, one last thing I want to say about chocobo racing. Other than that, I uh, have nightmares about bouncing off of cat oh, gates yeah. over oh, and over. Oh, again. Those those gates gates. Just hit him! Hit him! You hit him once. It's like, well, I think that's basically the entire mm-hmm. race. I yep, got to restart. Yeah, I'm done it. for. Like, if you miss time. Can I squeeze through that frickin' thing? Yeah, exactly. The other the the thing I love is the victory fanfare theme song. When you win a chocobo race, it is so such a catchy tune, and it sounds almost exactly like the theme to MacGyver, the eighties TV show. <laughs> of course. Wow. Okay. Yes. Ross, you're telling me you're a MacGyver fan? Watch MacGyver all the time as <laughs> a kid. It's very hard to believe. <laughs> uh, uh, it's so fun to be able to be like, I can consume all seven rebirth material uh, material now. Um, like I went back and watched Donkey's video about Rebirth now not being scared of spoilers because normally he's sure. pretty fast and leaves a spoiler yeah, 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 did you yeah, watch yeah. that no yeah. I haven't seen it yet it's, it's funny believe it or not yeah. but he was pointing out just like you know a lot of the ridiculous production things and he pointed out something that we didn't cover in the deepest dive just like I can't believe they have a specific song in Rebirth dedicated to just when your chocobos are sniffing 
Like the Chocobo yeah. sniffing right. thing yeah. starts its own track. Like, yeah. wow. It's yeah. just these well, stupid level of production here. I love how, because did y'all talk about the salmon theme, the Bow Wow Wow theme? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 And that has its special battle theme, yes. too. Yes. And the battle well, theme version is so good. It slaps. Yeah. I am joining Shinra for that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, you are certainly not alone. We have Ryan uh, Rylan D says, now that we've heard all of the roughly 400 songs in Rebirth, can we all agree that Bow Wow Wow, Bow Wow Wow <laughs> is truly the best song? Yep. Uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what is number one song you think for you guys throughout all of this game? Bow Wow Wow. Bow Wow Wow. Yeah, Bow the Fight Theme one. The Fight Theme one, the the Chocobo victory music. Okay. And then the sit up, uh, like super dance party version mm. of the main battle theme. That's good. I the the Genova fight on the boat. It's yeah. yeah. The Genova theme with yeah. that like. Hey, 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 like I straight out of Dune. Like I just I still go back and listen to it all the time. Gangaga mm. theme is honestly high up there. Yep. The the Temple of the Ancients escape music also really got that me. Where it's kind of really to that one. Soul. <laughs> In a good way? Uh, well, just like that, it's the the song, I, I don't know what it's actually called, but it's it's the song that plays right after Aerith's death in the original game, but it's not that like, wah, 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 wah. Oh, yes. That's, they, they do variations of that, and when they dun, start, dun, like, yes, and when they dun, start playing dun. that, like, even before her death, like, you just, my, my soul just like, <laughs> <laughs> it goes into the like, live stream. Uh, <laughs> like it, it just twists up they everything in inside like, of me. So many moments too, though, because like when the Cetras like start talking to us, like oh, and yeah. we're like, okay, they're in the yeah. PA system now. Like, <laughs> excuse me, Cloud, Cloud in hallway H, Cloud in hallway H. Like, they're like the dusk this? of the Cetra is about to, like the dusk is whatever about to come, whatever word verb you use with when dusk happens is going to come to the Cetra, and like. First yeah. time I'm like, I don't, I don't know, there are just some things talking about you. And then this time I'm like, oh yeah, like Aerith, they're saying Aerith is going to die. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And they've been touching on that throughout the entire game, yeah. I think, in yeah. so many ways of like, the Cetra are a doomed people. Yep. Winky winky. Yeah. Um, I mean, even Kate Sith with his prediction, Cloud, Aerith will die. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. What could that mean? Uh, uh, okay. So, Serial for Every Meal writes in and says, after listening to Stamp's catchy theme song several dozen times, I noticed at the end of the song, there's a bit of the time warpy backwards playing treatment. Mm. It, it's true. Like the last 20 seconds or so of, of Stamps theme, mm-hmm. it's, it is like this weird backwards stuff. Have the devs been cluing us in on the multiversal nature of the story as early as chapter five of the remake, the first time we heard that? I, I mean, hmm. I would say that's maybe a stretch, but the fact that like Stamp and the dogs are the way that you differentiate between universes, like yeah. that's not impossible that they would have <laughs> baked that in. Yeah. Which I, is also a very fun idea that we're telling different universes apart by the breed of a dog. That's that's just mm-hmm. fun storytelling. Mm-hmm. So that's as most as much as I'll defend the multiverse stuff. Is <laughs> I like the concept sure. of dogs as a signifier. I just I think one of the most like deranged messages I've ever sent on Discord was to Geller, and it was like <laughs> real time reaction, which was just like I can't believe the stamp tru- truthers were right, which is just something <laughs> I never expected. <laughs> uh, last thing about, about music, real quick. Zozi writes in and says, there's one track that has consumed me for a while. It plays in one of the Coliseum missions where you fight two Cactar variants. The lyrics are something like, one, two, seven. And what has me infatuated with it is that they say the line in multiple different languages. I heard uno, dos, seven. Ek, do, seven. The major tracks this game are amazing, but having something that silly with attention to detail that's given to other bigger tracks is such a treat. Treat. I might be maybe mishearing it, if anyone has a link to this song, please, I need to figure out what this is that yeah. says one, two, seven. Can you play it for the class, Ben? Yeah, it goes uh, uno, dos, tres, catorce. Da, da, da. No. Um, big U2 fan there, Ron? <laughs> I am. I am too. Dude, I am too. Um, okay, Sabine writes in oh, yeah. and says, among. <laughs> Do you know Sabine? <laughs> oh, yeah, you go way back. Uh, amongst all the amazing detail in this game, which finally blew my mind. <laughs> Hey, I'm trying to actually read this comment if you want to relax. <laughs> what blew my mind was finding Barrett and Tifa. Uh, you can find either at separate times looking at Jesse's portrait in the mm, event yeah. Yeah. later on. Yeah. Yeah. When you position Cloud next to them, he'll look up at Jesse while Barrett and Tifa will glance at him. Cloud will not do this at any of the other paintings. What's insane to me is that they did not need to do these to add these animations. Most people probably wouldn't even return to this area to see him looking at Jesse's painting like that. Yeah, yeah, really nice touch. By the way, do you guys know Jesse's last name? 
Raspberry Baby. Yeah. It was in the credits. <laughs> and wow. I was like, her last name is Raspberry. Oh, yeah. Biggs and Wedge don't have last names. Jesse does. Uh, hey, Anna, can we finally talk about these freaking dates? Uh, you know what? I... I don't think we should skip ahead. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's go back. Uh, there's more side quest content uh, we should probably talk about. Oh, Beck's business? Yeah. Let's talk Beck's we business. We haven't talked about Beck's business at all. Are there options? <laughs> Sorry, Anna, you threw us into the Beck's business pool. No! <laughs> but because like I helped them out in the beginning and I helped them set up that business and then yeah. you get this later on. Do you think that no matter what you choose, I think Beck should go out of business. <laughs> I think Beck's right. out of business sale. But it was fun to do that fake interview. Yeah. With Beck's business and just every answer. I didn't do that one. Oh my god, it's very fun. So oh, they okay. give you a job interview and you have the option <laughs> awesome. for every dialogue of having Cloud just go. I don't know. <laughs> like, what's your education? And he's like, I'm not interested. I don't know. <laughs> why? And that is why Cloud oh, is the good. most relatable video yes. game yeah. character. Yeah. The well, true reward of that quest, are you still oh, talking about that? Yeah, okay. Real quick, when you're doing the interview then, Barrett says, you aren't serious about this, are you? And then Cloud, <laughs> classic Cloud, dead stare, he just goes, ain't I always serious? <laughs> <laughs> That's like, I was saying ain't. It's such yeah. a weird note. Yeah. 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 So at the end, after you fight them again, and then they head back off to Midgar, if yeah. I remember correctly, um, Cloud goes, gotta admit, I'm kind of jealous. Psych. <laughs> <laughs> The 90s I there. love the development as Cloud gets closer and closer to Sephiroth. He also develops like an actual sense of humor. Yeah, Sephiroth is teaching him how to be funny <laughs> because it has to be a comedy routine. How many times Come Sephiroth Cloud, is popping in? I'm going yeah. to teach you how to understand sarcasm. <laughs> <laughs> He's whispering psych. <laughs> say it now. Yeah, say high five. <laughs> Too slow, Cloud. He's whispering in his ear. Um, but at the end of that quest, I, it's a fun arc for the stupid Beck boys to have the conclusion of them running a business and like they say at the end that's what you get for going face to face with big business and they're just like <laughs> representing like a company now in a very sincere way I thought that was a great little payoff for clearly our favorite characters in the entire game um, Anna Steve Bellagarde writes in and says how do we feel about the affinity system when it comes to the official date at the gold saucer I think the game oddly punishes completionist players here because your infinity will be nearly max for all party members if yeah. you've been doing all the side content so it really comes down to who you had the most luck with using the dialogue choices I'm just bitter that I got Aerith over Tifa so mm. Steve ah. uh, how was your date experience Anna? Um, so I will say like this was the main thing that I was grinding for as I played this game I took advice from my colleagues and from Geller to max out I wanted Tifa so I was going for Tifa yeah, for max really infinity excellent. and it's like um, but I agree. The affinity system, I wish it would, because, yeah, once you max it out, like, you can't see visually, too, even who you're at. Yeah. And, like, that was a little frustrating. Like, just give me a number, give me something, because it's, like, that actually is such an important part of the game that, like, I think it's fair to allow players to kind of pick that, even if yeah, they want to do that. I don't know. No, it, it is interesting. Like, you know, and they let you, at the end of the game, go back and do that chapter again, so you can technically, I guess, gamify it in different ways, but... I, I'm totally with you. Gunning for Tifa the entire time I had her for the first date. I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm golden. I'm doing all these quests. Mm -hmm. Great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Open the door. It's Barrett standing there for the date. <laughs> it's Barrett. I got Barrett. Yeah. I got Barrett. Yeah. Yeah. You got Barrett. Yeah. 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 What do you think about the sex scene? <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. I yeah. played it again and again. Wait, does, but does Barrett come with Sid and no? No, 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 okay, no, no, no. Okay, no. Okay, so okay. Kate, I Kate Sid, for this. Sid, and yeah. Vincent how are a trio. How Kate, Sid, and Vincent? That's what I'm wondering. Is how does anyone get that one? Yeah, I mean, how many Great dialogue question. choices do you like even you don't have do with anything? Kate? Sid? Like you don't even well, do anything. Kate Sid doesn't Maybe. even doesn't have, have a, one. yeah a relationship. They really yeah, said yeah, that's true. They said oh. Kate Sid's going to. So maybe so it's just just nag everyone all the time, right? And then if their all their stuff is low enough. And then, then just stare me the hell out of Kate's like, yeah. right in combat, and would yeah. that impact it then? Yeah. Uh, that one, I, I watched all of them on YouTube, yeah. and that was definitely the weakest. It's just like yeah. everyone being grumpy and silent. And Kate Seth is so happy. And yes. I'm like, Kate Seth, you deserve to ride the Ferris wheel with <laughs> Tifa and Aerith who appreciate. Yeah, and at I some point it. where like uh, Cloud just looks at Kate Seth and he's like, you gotta zip it. And then Kate is like, hey man, I'm the only one trying to make this I fun. I know. Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Kate oh, okay. was well, that's right. Kind of yeah. Everyone else was just full on grump right. mode. So, so just mic. so I understand, you're saying that like if So like dates. if most So if <laughs> so if you have like a lot of people like maxed out, then you get like a combo date? Okay. 
I'm trying to remember. No. My colleague wrote a very good guide on this, and I'm trying okay. to remember it perfectly. But basically, it's like, yeah, if you're all at a certain level and you've done all the quests, then it defaults to, yeah, the battling and the responses and the conversation, which it's like... Cause, and so, for me to ensure Tifa, I didn't do Aerith quests, which kind of sucks because it's yeah. not like I don't oh, sure. want to do the Aerith quests, but I'm like, yep. I'm going to go back and do the Aerith quests after like later this. On. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah uh, let's see. Jonathan G says, last episode I wrote in about how I need to course correct in my pursuit of Tifa. So I told Aerith she should feel guilty for talking to her dead ex's parents. Well, I'm happy to say it worked, and I smooched Tifa real good. It was romantic, and I don't feel like I'm wasting my life at all. Hell yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I got the Tifa date as well. Okay, yeah. Wow. I was say, yeah. So We're Tifa, Tifa and Baron. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, it's it's a really nice scene. I guess you've yeah. seen it, right? I and, did, And then yeah. you yeah. did get yeah. it on it? Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. What stood out yeah. to you about it, Russ? So it, it kind of starts out there a little awkward, the right? the intimate version? I, yeah. Because there's two have. variants. Yeah. There's a yeah. Bit, yeah, so it's like a normal version and yeah. an intimate version for yeah. the characters I will well. say the first time, I didn't get the intimate version and I set my house on fire and then I went back. <laughs> <laughs> I made sure I did everything I needed to do. Tifa's used to her house burning down. <laughs> she likes oh, it. Dang. Yeah, you should have collapsed your house. That's kind of... Uh, anyway, sorry, continue. It, oh, yeah. It starts out like awkward, right? They're they're kind of, yep. you know, on separate sides of the Ferris wheel compartment mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then like Tifa does like a smooth move to like end up yep. closer to him, which is yep. nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Cloud brings up Aerith, which is a real bad move. <laughs> Not a good one. Classic yeah. Cloud, though. We love yeah. that for him. Yes. And then it does end with them kissing, which I was like, I was shocked. Wow. That, yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, yeah. I'm totally, a very you, chaste Disney Channel kiss. Yes. Well, here's the thing. Uh, Chadley Rule 69, which I guess I probably should have guessed from this name. Uh, but they wrote in saying, I ben, was actually, you can't comment with your alternate accounts. I don't think that's allowed. <laughs> but this is, I was actually surprised that we got a scene of Cloud and Tifa making out. I didn't expect to see that displayed as canon so prominently. Uh, with that said, I still think Cloud is more into Madame M. And I hadn't seen all the dates right now, so I'm like, is there actually a makeout scene with Diva? Now I'm even more heartbroken about getting, getting Barrett. I think Barrett is a charming choice, but at the same time, I do feel like a, a failure for not fulfilling my wildest gondola fantasies I, with Tifa. I loved getting Barrett. It was it was it was fun. What I is got, it like? T- tell me all about it. What's Barrett like on a date? Yeah. He's really charming. It's it's kind of no fun. No tell. Were the sunglasses <laughs> on or off? <laughs> Ooh, I think off. Off. Oh, it yeah. is fun, like when he opens up the door, he's like Look, this isn't weird. <laughs> he's like, he's like, but he's weirdly just kind of bashful about it. He's like, got an extra ticket. You Which is, it by? seems so like, Barrett to yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. You know? I, just, I thought it was But, sweet. but he's, he has a line where he's like, just think of it like one of your Merc jobs. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go on this date. Let's go to cost, the play. Yeah. Um, no, but it, it is interesting. And like, so he spends most of it kind of like Cloud bringing up Aerith. Barrett makes the classic date faux pas of bringing up his dead wife. <laughs> uh, so he talks about like Myrna uh, and talks a little about like, you know, loving her. And then it, it's a sweet note where he's like, hey, Cloud, like, I don't want to tell you what to do, but if you have feelings towards somebody, you need to tell them right now because they could slip away at any second. Yeah. And that's that's kind of the gist of it. Yeah. And, and, and Cloud is in the space where he finally is just like, he says something that he's receptive to that information. He's just like, yeah, I hear you. Like, right, right. It's not so standoffish, which I felt like through this whole thing, like it, it feels like Barrett is trying to connect with him on like a friendship level. And Cloud is still just in this list. Like, what are we doing here? You know, kind of a thing. Right. And I, I was that was a little bit disappointing because it's like you spent a lot of time with this guy. Like you have an opportunity for just you two to just like learn more about each other. I just... Loosen up. Yeah. I, I think yeah. we're maybe at that point. But is yeah. Bear was also pretty uptight, too, because when the holograms came by in the beginning of like, the summons Yeah, but whatever, he was just messing with him, though. Bear, like, Don't grabs his gun. He, like, tries to, like, shoot yeah. him and <laughs> to talk him off a cliff yeah. and do all that stuff. Uh, so EJC wrote in and said, My gold saucer date was with Tifa. It had some awkward <laughs> moments. At what point Cloud held his hand out to Tifa, and I seriously thought that... I seriously thought when Tifa gave him her hand, Cloud was going to pat it like a grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> it is kind of the vibe. Which feels kind of on brand for him, yeah. Yeah. I'm glad they kissed, though. That is as sweet as the camera is kind of tilting away. And it is telling, I think, that Aerith don't get no kiss. So, okay. Oh, I'm just okay, say, so, okay, so, okay. So, We're not no, no, that's all get about Aerith. I'm here. just bringing it up. No, but seriously, like, what was the Aerith date then? Uh, I'll tell you what the Aerith date was. Cloud is a scoundrel. <laughs> Scoundrel. Yeah, Wait, really. He just well, he went on the like, wheel a bunch of times. and went on all these dates since <laughs> one night. I think. But I I think what's interesting is like, okay, if you get the Aerith intimate date, Cloud also has like intimate moments with Tifa, like I.e. after like in Gongaga after the reactor, yeah. you know they almost kiss, blah blah yeah. blah. So let's say that that's what happens. Like the mainline game, he almost kisses Tifa, and then he goes, and then and then they almost kiss, like almost kiss. 
on the Christmas, oh. but they don't. Yeah. Which is very Aerith. I, I think Aerith. it is interesting. I feel like even, and Anna, again, we're not jumping ahead, but I feel like this section of the game really cements home that idea yeah. of like, Aerith likes you. She don't love you. She loves Zach. And I feel like the well, fact that on the date yeah, in particular. They, well, they, I feel like that's. Uh, I, I don't think you can say that. And I think, yeah. that, I I think it's just like a deeper. I think Zach's <laughs> in the past, man. Yeah. 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 Like Marlene said, like, he was, because you weren't here, dude. I, yeah. I, I'm not. I would never jump ahead. But <laughs> like, that's the whole thing is like, well, actually, this is before. And the thing we didn't talk about is the Zach, the Zach scene before yes. the gondola yep. with Marlene, where Marlene's like. So I think Marlene says something like Cloud likes or Aerith likes Cloud. Yep. And so it's yeah. like I think I think she really does like Cloud because I think she's the only person who can see that this is like Zach and not him. And so she's searching for him. And that's what they talk about on their date. But what I also like about that is it's coming from Marlene. I know. Marlene is six years old and it's just like, do they like each other? And she's like, yeah. And the <laughs> right. way that you could, you know, consider that is just like yeah, they like each other, or well, it's just like a romantic interest. You, you would not know. Well, that's exactly, no, I yeah. mean, the end of the game, Aerith literally tells Cloud in the church, like, you know, I think there's multiple meanings of yes, the word exactly. like. Yeah, like, yeah. I kind of like, like, yeah. But the wild thing about the date um, is for both Aerith and Tifa's date, um, you get to see the flashback of Tifa telling yeah. Aerith, like, Cloud remembers Zach, Cloud remembers yeah. Zach. Yeah. <laughs> Which is yeah. a very funny That's idea. Why. Yeah. yeah. So I think Aerith does like Cloud, but I think she's also like, there's a bigger picture here. And yeah. in yeah. the end, yeah. while I would love to have time to pursue this, I don't. Yeah. So yeah. It's, yeah. And that's a heart. That's true heartbreak. Yes. To oh, me. yeah. Okay. Yep. Now, yeah. yeah. Just, yeah. What you just said. Yeah. Broke my freaking heart there. Yeah. That, I suppose that does make sense. Yeah. yeah. Uh, she actually does have like really strong feelings, but also cannot. Yeah. She's like the last Citra. She has things that are bigger than her. She doesn't get to have happy, fun time dating. Well, it's kind of like in, you know, in the date equivalent in Remake, right? Where you walk around the flower garden when she has that line that slayed you around. You're like, no matter what, you 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 can't can't fall fall in love with with me. me. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of her fulfillment. Which I always, I I think about that. And I think the last time that I brought that up, Ben, one of the last few times that I brought that up, uh, you had said like, well, yeah, but that was also before uh, like fate had been destroyed destroyed yeah, yeah exactly and so like does that still hold up it, does she still feel that way mm. and it does kind of brings you bring you into this place of like oh it, it is possible that now she might feel differently uh like during rebirth but it does seem like the answer is no not really she still understands that she has like other obligations as etc and so yeah. can't pursue her own um, yeah, carnal just, needs <laughs> exactly she says that <laughs> line I think at the end <laughs> her carnal starting needs. from the Cosmo Canyon uh, bonfire is kind of where she has that big speech and she kind of um, you know talks about where she's at in her life right yeah. there and she's just trying to m- make the most of everything and I fe- kind of feel like even though she does not have the knowledge uh the cosmic knowledge at that point yet because she definitely gets it back by the time she's going through that mist um i think she still has at that point kind of resolved herself to like there's the bigger picture that she has to focus on yeah and since this date takes place after that i think she is like i'm here for the fun of it i'm gonna sing this song like a pop star <laughs> like um and what a song and what a song yeah 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 uh on the Barrett date, last thing I want to touch on on that front is did you, did you reach for his hand on the date? Can you do that? Yeah, like it's just like who are you gonna pick? And it's like Aerith and Renthrow team oh. and Barrett. Oh, oh, oh during the play, the, the yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I think I did go I, Barrett. Yeah. I wanted to hear what the Barrett option was, but anyways, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. Yes. Oh, we're getting way too far ahead of ourselves. I, I think we jumped ahead actually, confusingly. But um, no, I, the Barrett theme version of the Gold Saucer theme is mm. awesome. It's just mm. like. It feels very retro. It feels mm-hmm. like more of the original Barrett theme mm-hmm. worked yeah. into the remix as you're yeah. running around that environment. Um, but real quick, the other dates. Uh, Red, his date is very sweet. I don't know if you guys watch this. Um, no. So he says, he's like, yeah, by the way, in Midgar, I totally could see the future. Like, Aerith, Aerith and I could see the future. Uh, but oh, but he says that, like, ever since leaving Midgar, I can't do it anymore. So, hmm. and then. Which is what they're discussing in Under Juno, oh. right? Yes. Yep. yep. Um, mm. And then uh, Red's like, hey, all I really know for sure, even though I don't know what's happening in the future anymore, is I know for sure you need to keep Aerith safe. And he's mm. like, promise me you'll keep Aerith safe. Mm. And Cloud goes like, yeah, I can promise. And then uh. Red goes like, promise me. And he stands, sticks out his paw. Oh. And then Cloud's like, uh. And then he does shake the paw. And then Cloud mm. goes, it is soft. <laughs> <laughs> really? Oh. 
good. It is really good. Yeah, it's very good. Good boy. <laughs> it is soft. Uh, I love but, it. But yeah, the best date is, is Yuffie yeah. by far. I don't yeah. know if you guys saw this. Yeah, you, should, yeah. you should absolutely yeah. watch the Yuffie one. It's really sweet because she's also awkward and clumsy but it's fun because like everybody gets in and comments about like the wheel that turns the gondola yeah and it's just so funny that yuffie gets in there and she's like what is this and just, like, starts spinning around. And, like the gondola is like spinning like 360s it's, like, i love my around. erratic okay, so. daughter yeah um and then she's like you know tifa has a big old crush on you and uh do you have a crush on her and god's like i don't remember <laughs> god, <laughs> that's the worst and answer then, it's so good it's so high school yeah. it's cute yeah and then yuffie's talking about like She's like, yeah, I had a crush on somebody, but I'm really bad at, like, expressing my emotions as well. <laughs> uh, and also, the guy had a crush on could shoot energy out of his hand. And then Cloud goes, I can help you with that. And she's like, the emotions part or the energy in the hand part? He's like, oh, energy in the hand part. I can't express my emotions either. And then That's it's very good. really sweet where, like, they both get, like, a little frustrated. And there's a moment where Yuffie, like, kisses Cloud on the cheek. Okay. And then Cloud's like, what the hell? And she's like, don't you tell anybody that that happened. And then That's uh, cute. And it just gets better. Like this is generally one of my favorite moments in the game is this little moment where, you know, she's talking about how she can't really express herself. She has a tough time relating and dealing with crushes and all this stuff. And then she's like, I just don't know how to interact with people and what they should be doing, what I should be doing. Mm. And then Aww. she just starts going like her classic, like <laughs> yeah. little jab. And then Cloud on the other side of the gondola. Just, just doing the squats. <laughs> no, plus, he starts acting like, like he's being punched. So he just goes like, like, oh, 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 that's oh. That's a Crisis oh. Core reference. Is it? Yeah. Uh, Where so, he's pretending to be punched? No, 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 no. So this is like a running bit in Crisis Core that Zack and Yuffie have. Where I'm like, you're treat. I watched that. I'm like, you're treating Cloud like oh, Zack. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I didn't so, get that. Wow. Yeah, so like... They're, like in Crisis Core, they have like a. I, I, this isn't really spoilers. It's very early in Crisis Core, but I, like, I don't think we're talking about Crisis Core. Yeah. But, you know, I don't know. Yeah, that's like. That's a re- oh, that, yeah. uh, oh wow, that actually deflates cool. it a little bit for me because that yeah, was just I'm an sorry. original no, idea. No, no, I like, know. I'm it's sorry. It's such a sweet idea that Cloud's yeah. like, all right, the only way yeah. us two awkward beings can interact is like, we both love fighting. Yeah. Let me pretend that you're beating me up. And just like yeah. the animation work was so fun. And yeah. I'm just like, oh, oh, no, no there's more. like this whole thing where she like pretends to beat up, like Zach is like doing a mission in Wu Tai. She pretends to beat up Zach. And he's like, I'm not going to beat up this kid. So then he like pretends to. Oh, yeah. perfect. Thank you, Anna, yeah. for being an expert on this stuff when we aren't. Um, Ariel in Seattle. Says, during my date with Tifa, I kept thinking about how Jesus. earlier Chadley said the gold saucer Mako reactors were causing the desertif- desertification of Corel. Mm. Uh, these VR shows, Skywheels, Holographic Summons, are sucking the life out of the planet. I'm mm. such a buzzkill on a date, says Ariel. Mm. Yeah. I, yeah. Uh, I was uh, thinking Ariel, about go on a date with Barrett. He would love to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I was thinking about, like, it's funny that we've talked about this game for, like, 20 hours now or something, right? But, like, we haven't talked about arguably what you're doing the most in this game, which is running over to icons no and hitting triangle in the open world and just like picking up all that stuff and it was the idea of like it's all about preserving the planet making sure the planet is sustainable and meanwhile it's like gimme 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 resources that's all you're doing the entire planet can live without sage (laughs) sage is mine dude classic video game logic yeah i also do think that like there is like a difference between like picking up sage which like is just a plant growing and like shinra building plants no that suck nope. up like the central life core of the planet. But if we made a sage vacuum, you think that's over the line? I yeah, think? it okay. would definitely be over the line. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> uh, let's see. We have Orion writes in uh, and says, did I miss some plot somewhere where Aerith wanted to become a songwriter? That seemed I know. to come out of nowhere. Mm. I, I had that moment of when you're walking up the stairs at the ghost hotel and the cutscene starts and it's Aerith like writing her song and then Kate Sith looking over and she's she has some line about like I will kill a cat or something. she has some like yeah no she says exactly that <laughs> I will kill a cat no, sc- I'm not so <laughs> freaking kill a cat <laughs> it's curiosity killed the cat <laughs> thank you yeah. thank you that makes more sense I'm not great with language but <laughs> when that that's the started, realest she's ever been by the way if you, <laughs> yes, um, I hate yes. people looking at something that I'm not done writing I'm oh like, sure yeah. you should see it. Ronnie's effed up notes right now yeah we've been looking I'm gonna, at them yeah, this whole I'm time gonna, I'm gonna read them out loud, loud right now <laughs> <laughs> it says <laughs> a gondola date yeah. yeah it's just a picture of Tifa's thighs this seems weird <laughs> I assume that's what those lines are very well drawn <laughs> um, no but uh, I thought that that was the cutscene telling me that Aerith was gonna be my date and I had a moment of like no I actually <laughs> I, was, I was not sh- yeah uh, but she wanted to be a songwriter apparently for the whole time. She never stopped talking about it, Ryan. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, Bob Buell says, 
After two games of building up anticipation, seeing posters and billboards everywhere, Loveless was maybe my favorite scene of the entire game. Mm. It was the Final Fantasy VII cast essentially cosplaying into the world of Final Fantasy IV. It was so oh, over cool. the top yeah. from the initial dance and operatic music to the three-act drama. Aerith's song promises to keep. It had my mind blown, truly amazed by the freshness of it, the grandeur of it, and the excellence of delivery. 11 out of 10. Uh, this this sequence killed me. Um, Anna, did you just play Crisis Core Reunion? Um, yeah. Okay. Can you refresh yeah. my memory? Because I remember there's a character yeah. that's quoting yeah. Loveless okay, throughout okay. it. I literally took all my notes. Okay, so there's Genesis. And yes. so he's obsessed like, with Loveless, right? Yeah. Yep, he's obsessed with Loveless. So But then this wasn't didn't seem like quotes that were in the play here. So there's just different versions of Loveless, because they say like Loveless type G or whatever, like in um, this. Yeah, on the posters. Yeah. yeah. I think it is more is or less same? the same. Oh, though. Okay. I would need to double check that. I would need to double check that. Sure. But like, it would be very strange for them to, like, reference something that happened in Crisis Core and the developers, like, assert on multiple instances that Crisis yeah. Core is a prequel actually to, like, remake and... Uh, they said it... Uh, they said the, it's a different timeline, which is confusing, well, I think. but they said in one interview they said that it was for remake and then in one interview they said it was for the original. So it's a little bit confusing. Okay. Um, but... Um, or like the copy on one website says it's for the original. So it's like, uh, there is like definitely mixed messaging. Um, should I go into what Loveless is? Sure. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it, it, we don't need to get deep into it. But I think what's interesting is that like Loveless in Crisis Core is like the kind of parallel story. It kind of alludes to Sephiroth's origin story. Okay. So like pre, you know, remake or original even too. It's like, okay, Sephiroth has his origin story. It's Sephiroth and Jill. And, um, and well, I always forget Genesis name. and Genesis who is obsessed with Loveless. And so like, there's the parallel of Loveless, the story and the parallel of like Sephiroth and his two friends. And so like, um, this is also like weirdly like a repetition, like a cycle too of like, Oh, this oh, story is like coming back. Yeah. Wait, what? I was quoting George Lucas in a ham fisted way. So, okay. So, but uh, so Loveless is just a play that has like you know, a more strict Shakespeare interpretation that maybe Genesis was quoting. And then this, there's like the different version that yeah. Jesse yeah, was in for that intro popular, sequence. And I don't then know. this. Yeah. We don't know for sure. I think that this is like the popular culture, like, like, okay, here we go. So we have like the lead. Well, no, the Leonardo DiCaprio. I was going to like, make Juliet. An, yeah, but that one, they're trying to be yeah. old languagey in that one. Yeah. Right? I think they are kind of. So it's maybe like 10 the, things the I hate about you. The, Yes, exactly. This is the 10 things I hate about you version of <laughs> <laughs> Yes, got it. Of Loveless at the Golden Saucer. Did anybody understand? I know we're confused about the ending, but can we just try and unpack? What you, happens you, in you, that? No, no, no. You put the VR goggles yeah. on and then the you're goggles. still going yeah. on the stage? It's I was the confused. Chadley goggles. So is everyone in the crowd who puts the goggles on, they're the protagonist for their own play? But then Barrett no, was like dressed no, up. They're all no. seen odd because they all come out for the applause afterwards, right. right? Yeah. It is insane that they created a beautiful theater that you go sit down <laughs> yes. in and put the goggles on. Yes. It is confusing. That's just to see the weird Jesse. It really makes you think scene. about their cultural priorities, right? Yes. It does truly yeah. make you think. It's ex it's excessive. Um I gotta <laughs> say, am I the only one who was slayed by this section? I'm not talking about the quick time events, but what got me is when Aerith is singing at the end of this whole sequence mm -hmm. and then it cuts and it's like Barrett on the Crying. sidelines and he's like moving with Cloud and they're like doing yep. that dance and then the camera just cuts around and when Biggs and Wedge and Jesse were there, yeah, I, I lost it. I was crying. Like, and mm. I, yeah. it, was, it was just so shocking that like, you know, you're showing Chadley in the mm. crowd, mm. but when the entire premise is just Aerith is going to sing a song and Barrett and Cloud are best friends yep. and here's all of your favorite characters and Chadley from this game like it really okay, got me here's my question is what if you didn't do the wedge side quest and you got that quest and you're like why is wedge there oh because you didn't see the blood running out from uh, him landing on the ground or whatever <laughs> well I mean we we all and we remake? still know you know like we from know remake. effectively that he died yeah. yeah I didn't know that that I wasn't guess, clear I guess yeah well, you're probably right but I then, but they, yeah, I but guess then I guess that was, no, that's, no, I, no, to be fair, or, I, I'm sorry, this is going back now, no jumping ahead, when I did, when I did the, we, the wedge side quest in Gong, I'm sorry, when I did the wedge, <laughs> when I did the wedge side quest in Gong, I was like actually shocked. Oh, that he was dead? That he was yeah, dead. Yeah. Oh. That they stuck with it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, anyway, sorry. No, you're all good. Anthony R. wrote in. Wait. 
No, I think we should stay on this. That didn't make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that didn't make, didn't you make cry. me cry. Oh, what I what made it. me sad was I had a moment where, like, after we see um, we see Barrett crying. And at first I'm like, oh, that's so sweet. And it took me a moment to register. It wasn't until after I saw him standing in front of Jesse's poster that I realized, oh, my gosh, like, this was really emotional for him because he saw Jesse up close yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. Right. Like in I, VR. It didn't immediately register. Yeah. It was just, was this just a part of, like, the Barrett date? But when... They were clapping at the end. Do you remember that? Where, where Barrett, he's crying and he goes, he's like, you're going to have to clap for the both of no, us. No, I think that's, I think that's. Is that everybody? Yeah. yeah, oh, so, yeah. oh, God, yeah. that's so good. Yeah. And it was good that Sid just fell asleep in the crowd. Too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. does not care. Yeah, yes. It's weird that Sid was even there. He's like, oh, I'll tag along with you. It's like, well, what? Really? Yeah. How so, was that Sid? Was it okay? That was not, <laughs> not as good. Not as good. <laughs> not as good. You got to no, bump not. up like the twang a little yeah, bit. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Have some more of the salt. Oh, smart. That'll help yeah. you with your Sid. Uh, who did we all pick in the Loveless thing? Tifa. T- Barrett. <laughs> I picked... <laughs> what yeah, happened? What happened? You were all in on Barrett after like, that. What happened? Yeah. <laughs> he goes, he just like, you go up to Barrett and he says something like, he's like, are you? He's like, you gotta be kidding me right now. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, that's it. But it's, I keep leaning away from the mic because I can't stop screaming about this thing. <laughs> hey, you do you. It's all good. It's all good. Uh, yeah, so Anthony R says, I'm so glad I forgot about seeing Aerith sing from the trailers uh, before the game came out mm. because holy cow, what an emotional and amazing moment. Nothing I've ever played has made me cry more times than Rebirth. That's say, I'm fair. so obsessed. I started reading the Traces of Two Paths book about Tifa and Aerith. I mm. want to read the books. I want to read the books. Yes, read the, read the light books? novel. Read the light novel. Ooh. Sorry. Yeah, let's do, do next deepest time. We talked about it. It's, it. There's been discussion. I, but on the note about forgetting that you saw Aerith sing in the trailers, after I beat the game, I went back, I watched the final trailer and the launch trailer, mm. and the two that I skipped, and it is stupid how much they show mm. it's sucks. just all that black sucks. materia temple of the ancients mm. ending really? of the game it is crazy town mm. how much they show mm. huh. watch them i dare you it's that's still surprising because like i feel like they understand like final fantasy fans are really spoiler sensitive like yeah i know it's so a that's weird pretty move surprising. yeah yeah you're not bringing in you're not selling one more copy of the game by showing these things yeah. at the end it's really frustrating to see can i add something on that yeah when i saw the trailer live uh in LA as part of I forgot Summer Game Fest as Summer Game Fest yeah because they actually it, had somebody come out and sing on yeah, stage right but it was out of sync and so everyone was I, w- I was sitting next to um, Giovanni who's at Digital Trends and we were really confused we were like wait was that a trailer like what was going on <laughs> oh, wow. and so I didn't even like it didn't even spoil anything for me because I was like I don't we don't really know what was going on live <laughs> Uh, John S. writes in and says, When I first saw Aerith's musical number, I thought, wow, the framing and shots of the scene remind me so much of Never Enough from the movie The Greatest Showman. Mm. We all know it. We're all huge, oh, huge yeah. Jackman fans. Uh, I then huge realized, Jackman. Huge Jackman fans, we like to say. <laughs> you have that shirt that says huge, huge Jackman, Jackman fans. Huge Jackman, yeah. <laughs> I then realized later that both songs are sung by the same woman. Oh, so wow. So it had to That's be intentional cool. on Square's part. And this begs the question, did Square try to get Huge Jackman to play Dio? That would be a good fit, good fit that would I be feel fun. like. Yeah. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. Um, the only person more ripped than Dio in real life. It is true. It's true. Yeah. Dio, Dio sounds like Jay Peterman from Seinfeld. Like, That's right, Elaine. <laughs> like, oh, every sure. time yeah, he does that, yeah, line, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Tommy Ostrenga says, if anyone else is playing uh, is playing up made-up characters in the Loveless play where they try to act cool, why is Nanaki still using his natural voice? The grizzled voice is exactly what he thinks sounds cool. Isn't that the whole point? Yeah, also, good point. also, so Nanaki is a pun on seven in Japanese made into a name. Apparently, maybe not an Anakin thing after all. All of the names in this world are English except for Wutai, which are Japanese. So is mm. Naki a Wutaian name? Or is it just because it's a pun made in a game that is made in Japan for Japanese speakers? Tommy, you've lost it. You've lost the plot. I'm sorry. Uh, you've spun no, out of control. No, that's a genuinely good question. You are a tornado of madness, and that, but that is a good question. It's possible he found the plot. <laughs> He's the only person who found <laughs> what they were trying to communicate at the end of Reaver. Um, okay, so that entire play, anything we missed from Yeah, that? just want to say what happens when you pick Aerith or Rosa at that one yeah, part. Yeah, please. Um, because I wanted to know what my, my future would be with her. And what it says is, what is the future if not the product of choices past? Which, again, made me think that uh, you'd be able to affect the future. Yeah. Um, And then it says, and yet, 
all things that begin with a chance encounter end with a tearful farewell. Oh, oh, that's beautiful. Um, yeah, that the production of that play segment alone, it's like this is a higher budget than 95% of games on the market. Like, just the quick time of it, everything was like, Jesus Christ, this is a lot of money this going is, into this This game. was one of the things where, um, so, uh, a, a friend of ours uh, has oh. just, has decided that he is no longer going to play the game. I did, this was, this was the one thing that's just like, I hear you, and just please go on YouTube and watch this. Like, watch Loveless, watch, watch the dates. Sure. Because this is the best of the best in terms of what ff like the essence of ff7 and what they're going for it's it's that fun of just like very heartfelt but also absurd and just goofy and funny it's amazing yeah 10 out of 10 i love when they come out afterwards for applause and they're like you know as if to say that's right everybody you're Beloved performers tonight have been us, Shinra's most wanted eco terrorists. <laughs> <laughs> but you've seen the wanted posters; they look like weirdos. Yeah. They're not us at all. Yeah. Uh, and then we go to the whole Dio fight, but we get an old encounter from an old friend, Don Corneo. I gotta say, everybody's coming back from remake. Um, Underrated character. <laughs> I felt like, hey, Corneo. I, I can hold off till chapter three or like, you know, till the third game for him to come back in yeah. some ways where it's like every time in this yeah. sequence, I'm like, he just, he's a little too tainted. Even his dear boys, Scotch and Crotch or whatever. I was like, I, these guys are all just a little too evil to have fun with now. At no, this point. I, I, I think Scotch and Crotch were, <laughs> were I, I, they were fun. Corneo, Corneo just sucks. Like, yeah. he, like as a yeah. character, uh, not great. I was kind of hoping that this would be like their way of being like, I'm back. And immediately, like, just you murder him. <laughs> He's dead. Yeah. Like, and that's that's it. But isn't it wild that Aerith dies and Don Corneo doesn't? It is wild. Yeah. Oh, Should I have. hate this game. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Hottie Fish says we've now had two games in a row threatening to rip Don Corneo's balls off. Yeah. yeah. Clearly, Square is setting us up for it to actually happen in part three, right? It's a classic Chekhov's balls setup. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That, and that was fun to have him back, and everyone. Everyone takes a turn saying how they destroy this man. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, Red's just like, I will gargle them like they're <laughs> baby chicks on a roller coaster. He said that. <laughs> and Red doesn't even know this guy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he just gets the but he can smell yeah, it. No, yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah. I did like the Corneo themed monsters that you're That fighting. was a fun idea. It's just like stupid. The Don yeah, was, yeah. Yep, yep. The, yep. And then the, what are they called? The Corneo Tars or the Cactars yeah. that had mm-hmm. a little. Wig on the top of it. <laughs> yeah, uh, <stupid>. Scotch, <laughs> this classic username, Scotch69 Koch <laughs> wrote in. <laughs> Where are you getting money from, Ben? <laughs> Mainly the 69 community. <laughs> the subreddit's <laughs> huge. Yeah. Yeah. Again, Ronnie, you're not supposed to leave comments with your own community. You're going to do an ad, review, an ad read for the 69 community. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so they say, in a game full of absurd yet delightful mm. moments, uh, the Scotch and Koch intro song somehow became my favorite. When the mall, mall market <laughs> theme bad. got mixed into the music, I felt as if I should stand and applaud. That said, Corneo's jiggle physics weirded me out. Look, if everyone else can have jiggle physics, then Don Corneo can deserves jiggle jiggle physics. Physics. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's yeah, the, not what I want. But. When they came out and started <laughs> just... <laughs> what we deserve. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, knowing just how much fun the music team had got to be like, okay, right a new Beastie Boys song and then yeah, Scotch exactly. and Codge are going to perform it. Like, <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Where they had that line where like, <laughs> they're arguing about the name, right? It's for the battle for the naming rights where they yeah. want to call it Corneo Land. And he's like, Gold Saucer, take that and throw it in the trash. <laughs> 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 this, is, okay. this is a great game. <laughs> uh, Ross, that whole sequence, the fights against the Turks, how'd you do it against all that fun stuff? Uh, no problem, really. I think no because problem. I did all those side quests and all that before yeah. the saucer that i was sufficiently leveled up the the rufus one Shh, shut up ross uh, when um at the end of the game what level were you 50 50 okay yeah, see here. i was 48 okay. and like i felt like i missed a lot of like i i think like the end quest and i was kind of wondering like what is the disparity between like mm, like play, where yeah. you are versus 50 yeah. okay yeah and it's again so the levels? weird that then like 65 70 is like, i know i, I don't think that's the levels, so many levels you could do it 
pretty low level, I think. Sure. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I don't know. I knew people who didn't do side quests. And yeah. 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 I can't I think Jacob Geller beat it in like 60 hours or whatever. Like, oh, wow. Yeah. One of the big things is, uh, you know, your materia are probably a couple extra levels up if yeah. you've been yeah. leveling yeah. your right. characters yeah. too. Right. So that makes a big difference. And yeah. then if you're using those wards correctly with mm -hmm. uh, Aerith, that's going to help a lot. There's that was too many huge. Of them. That was <laughs> they, such I feel like a big they thing. Should, that is one thing I wish they tutorialized better was yes. how to use Aerith as a unit. Well, yep. because, they have the VR stuff. Yeah, but like, I, I, don't, I don't think, <sighs> like, I didn't understand the progression of like setting up each ward. The ward, yeah. yeah. And just, yeah, yeah. Like how to use that a little bit more effectively. Yeah. I, I was just getting into that at the very end there. Yeah, yeah, I gotta say, I mean, I was using Aerith in my main party, and okay. still it was like Radiant Ward, and then every once in a while the double casting one, and that yeah. was really it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, and there's like even better ways that you can kind of like make her even stronger, and that is what's really cool about this game is actually like these characters' kits are like so much deeper than even like I feel like I got to experience. Like, I saw this clip that people are getting really into doing like challenges with like the individual characters mm. where Tifa literally looked like in a like a Tekken demo or something. Yeah. And it's yeah. just like it, it's so beyond anything I ever did. And I, it, I don't know. Yeah. And that's part of the reason why I kind of want to like dip yeah. my toes into like hard mode a little yeah. bit. Yeah. yeah. Because I see, see like there. the potential. Yeah. yeah. For it to, yeah. I'm totally yeah. with you. Like this entire game, I felt like I'm I'm skating by. I'm doing all right. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not too yeah. hard for me. I haven't yeah. hit my head against the wall in any big moments here. But at the same time, I always feel like I was just, I should sit down and really refocus on all the systems. I should yeah. rebuild everybody's material. But it's like, ah, yeah, kind of is close enough. Moving on. I did get the closest to it though with um, the folios, where at a certain point later in the game, I was like, I'm stripping all these out. I'm starting from square one mm. and I rebuild yeah. everybody's folios because I was like, that's probably smart. Despite being a big fan of the elemental attacks that you don't need to have materia for mm. you guys being like, check out the numbers. Like they're not doing that much damage. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Plus like, you want to get those mm. synergy you ever attacks. You try that yeah. Thanks Grant. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that was it is I, as I didn't prioritize those. I just gunned it for the limit break and like, those abilities you get yeah. right before the limit breaks are so freaking good. Yep. Um, oh, like the really aerial smart. onslaught and like the the level like the third limit break are you talking about? No, well, I mean, obviously those are great, but just the upper abilities on that tier, like you know, Yuffie's is like it takes three ATB charges, but she just does a ridiculous amount of damage. The one sure. that ended up changing everything for me was Barrett's lifeblood cannon. I don't know if oh, you guys yeah, got into yeah, that. Oh, yeah. mm. But it takes away half his health. But it's doing like eight thousand a pop. It is yeah, ridiculous, yeah. and so it's like if I ha so I swapped my party around eventually, and I got to the point of it was Barrett, Yuffie, Cloud, and Barrett and Yuffie. Yeah, they charge ATB so fast. They yeah. both have yeah. prayer. Yeah, and yeah. so I'm just constantly praying, yeah. and then have Barrett just shoot life yeah. cannon, life cannon. Yeah. Oh, it was beautiful. Yeah, yeah. And then Cloud is just there for fun. Yeah, yeah. 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 He's, he has He's to good. be there. He's there. I would put Tifa in Cloud spot if it was, you know, let's yeah. be honest. Like, I, she's see, strong. That Her was, trap is so really you, fun. You do Tifa well, and who? Well, so I would change. I mean, honestly, my default was was also Cloud, um, Barrett, Yuffie. Mm. But, oh. like, sometimes I would do, like, I don't know. Sometimes there's just, it was, I found it more fun to kind of use Tifa in certain moments. And so yeah. I would swap out, like, either Barrett or um, Yuffie for her. Yeah. Because, like, I love Yuffie, but I also got on the point where it's like, my gameplay is repetitive, where I just do, like, the doppelganger, and then I yeah. would do the mm -hmm. thing, and it's like, okay, this is great, but, like, kind of got formulaic. I, yeah. I was kind of, yeah, I, I found that, like, when I had Yuffie in my party, then I would switch less to other folks. Like, it mm -hmm. felt like yeah. she was... She's just like, so good. I know, she's so she's good, really but good. also, like, I feel like it's, it's difficult. If you have her in your team, then I almost auto defaulted to her because mm -hmm. it's like her complexity mm -hmm. is it, just like if you're if you're hurt you can utilize mm -hmm. her so much more mm -hmm. and i i didn't necessarily like totally vibe with that so i i ended up going back to like what i typically like which is barrett and tifa and cloud mm -hmm. I just, wow. I, yeah. Oh, geez. I, yes I do. avalanche step or whatever it, yes avalanche yeah. two step mm -hmm. i love it so how much were we all prioritizing getting synergy attacks okay. off by the end of not the that thing? much really? okay i was all the time yeah all the time okay yeah. this is what's interesting is i feel like i didn't click into that like gameplay which seems so dumb because that's like such a big part of this game is that yeah, like yeah. the team i didn't really click into that until literally the final boss fight and i'm really? like Whoa. i don't know yeah because something about having the duo fights in that one section forced me to really think yeah, about that more. That's interesting. And then like I realized I was like, oh gosh, this would have been a lot more fun. <laughs> <laughs> sure, yeah. I would yeah. do them when they would pop up, but I was never like, I gotta gun it to build up these okay. bars. I don't think I ever cared about the meters. 
Wow. Which is maybe the distinction. Okay. I was always <laughs> prioritizing. <laughs> <Turn it off! laughs> <laughs> so I was prioritizing that because I'm like, Cloud, I want him to do Ascension. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Incredible yeah. Exactly. limit break. And mm -hmm. then once I got his level three limit break, yeah. mm -hmm. oh, that's the best. So I never got the level three. Ooh. I never got any I of know, the level threes. You didn't, didn't either. Didn't yeah. either. You guys should reset those folio boards and, yeah. just, and just go try try for him. Yeah. Just yeah. go into yeah. a, uh, yeah. like a simulator battle and just yeah. try to level yeah. up that stuff and just to see him. Yeah. Really yeah. Fun. I, I was uh, yeah. I was swapping around characters and as they kind of forced you later on, I don't know where you all are at, but I had a thought that I didn't like feeling within my own heart of, I think Red's my least favorite character to play in combat. No. I, <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. I, really, I think Red's really no. fun. I, look, I think all the characters are fun, but just swapping between all of them was like, yeah. I think he's bottom of my stack if I had to choose. Uh, you know what I'd say? Mine is, mine's so. Zach. Oh, okay. He doesn't come. Zach's so dude. overpowered. <laughs> you know Are you wait, talking about me? I, I'm sorry. Can I confess something right now? Yes. That I'm going ahead. Um, I died in the Sephiroth part. I died. With I killed Sephiroth when I was playing as Sephiroth in that first chapter. Oh. Yeah. Oh. And I know it's supposed to be like, oh, Sephiroth's so powerful. I literally <laughs> died. died. Yeah. Tell me. Tell me. Tell me. I literally don't know. I was just like, <laughs> What are my colleagues? What are my colleagues? Julia Lee, she had this really smart idea, which was just like imagining like Cloud telling this story to everyone. And she's like, I'm just imagining like Cloud yes. telling the story like, and Sephiroth dying. And his ass. What do you mean he died? I don't know. He just straight up died. He, he seemed to be confused about a lot of the button inputs and the synergies. And then he died. Do they give you any kind of special scene for accomplishing such a feat? Or? No. No, trophies. No, just, nothing. No, I just no. saved Cloud a lot of trouble. <laughs> I do love Cloud's or Sephiroth's confidence going into it there I'll be like wait till you get a load of this <laughs> and then just, uh, just switching stances all the time how do I just I, Cloud just rubs a phoenix down I, I, was like, I was still getting the hang of the combat again I was like I don't know what's going on <laughs> oh, that's, funny. that's fair uh, let's see Jim H writes in and Jim says, Jim says, I haven't finished the game yet, so I was asking a question about specific materia. Is there a single situation where the materia that swaps your MP and HP would be useful in any I, way? I, I, I want to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I have a really awful story that's also going to make me sound dumb again. Is <laughs> Did you I, put all those on? Well, I put it on. <laughs> I put it on Aaron. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Well, okay, you don't have MP. I had some, yeah, I had some logic for it at the time, but I was messaging, I was messaging my colleague. I'm like, God, Erin's such a glass kid. She can't do anything. Because <laughs> she has, why does she have 57 <laughs> health? <laughs> and I was like, I don't get it. Like, she literally dies before the fight even starts. <laughs> it's a real brilliant storytelling thing. Uh, yeah. yeah. But here's the thing is, why do they have that as material? There's like, got to be yeah. some system you can Yeah, there's a strategy, yeah. Way. Is there really? Yeah. I, I mean, a, I don't smart know Smart people is. somewhere are using it. I see yeah, that. Yeah. I was so much of that material in the back half of the game. I was like, not it's, interested, not interested, not interested. I, I mean, tried I, was, uh, Comet. Uh, yeah. Comet mm -hmm. in like Cometora or something like that. And it was like, ah, it's like 30 MP, which is roughly 50% of everybody's MP. And you use it and it's just like... Two of those hit. You know, it's just yeah. like it's yeah. kind of I underwhelming. I did use it a bunch in that um, segment of the final battle where it has the two wings that you have to yes. damage. Oh, and then elemental, um, um, yeah, like uh, resistances. That was just mm. Yuffie bait. Yeah, that exactly. so nice. <laughs> yeah, to that's that true. Um, let's see. Ian T. Clark says, I've been playing on dynamic difficulty since the start of the game. Hmm. Sure. And I've hit several points where I've gotten stuck with boss fights. But holy Shinra, this section of the game was kicking my butt. I must have had 20 attempts with Rufus of the Gold mm. Saucer fight. Mm. What does dynamic difficulty actually do? I never feel like it got any easier. I think it just tries to keep you at the level you are, but I, I was on normal the entire time. So, so was I. Um, I. I wonder if it is one of those things, like, as you die, it just, like, has the... Like, it, it just kind of gradually, like, makes things a mm -hmm. little bit easier and easier and easier. I can see that. 
Yeah. 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 How did you guys do in that, uh, Rufus? That was freaking rough. I he, loved he was, it. It was, it was the toughest. Because it, it was just like that his fight in Remake was like, okay, it's a lot more just about blocking and parrying yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Even, it's a little bit like the Roche fight in some ways, you know? So, mm. yeah. Um, it, it, don't speak I don't, his name. I don't know if I died in it, but it was definitely like a okay moment. Like, it sounds yeah. trickier when it's just a one on one fight because mm-hmm. you can't have the one person stacked mm-hmm. up with ATP mm-hmm. to heal mm-hmm. yeah. when yeah. you need it. Yeah. So, yeah, for mm-hmm. me, it was a lot of like doing the cloud dodge from far away and mm-hmm. then um, uh, ranged attack mm-hmm. thing. Right. Mm-hmm. And right. then just slowly building up my bar through that. That being said, did any of you guys like in, initially, you know, you would get all these these different materials that was just like, hey, if you're not if you're not controlling a particular party member, uh, it will cast this or it'll give them the opportunity mm-hmm. to use this weapon ability. Mm-hmm. How long until you unequip those? You know I, what I mean? Like, because there was a moment where I kind of realized this is like, no, I need somebody to be on backup. Like you said, like mm-hmm. to j- like, just in case, uh, easy hits the fan that you had somebody that can, that mm-hmm. can uh, like automatically heal. Yes. Yeah. I, the only person I left one on was Tifa because she would use it on unbridled strength. Yeah. And sure, that yep. is so yes. helpful for yeah. just her yeah. general yeah. That's fighting that yeah. it yeah. was the only one that I, I found yeah. was worth it. Yeah. Somebody sent a timestamp of in the deepest dive on remake. We said, you know what this game needs? It needs a materia to have like an auto ability. Oh really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's like exactly that thing that they uh, okay. did. It was very fun. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, who are you? Pav says, in a game full of hilarious moments, Dio pausing the Turk fight in order for a bunch of mooks to bring in so two benches funny. and a vending machine so everyone funny. can heal. Got the biggest belly laugh out of me. That is so funny. It's perfect. Yes, they did the 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 gimmick where you have the lights dim to introduce a new competitor. They did it like twice in five minutes. It was yeah. great. Uh, <laughs> Moons Bro says, my favorite little detail in this section is that Abzu is missing its horn and tail because we cut them off in the remake. Yeah. Uh, we know that Don will be back in part three. Maybe... Uh, but I hope Abzu doesn't come with them. Between Abzu, Sephiroth, and the Turks, I'm starting to get sick of the repeating boss fights. Mm. I, mm. The Turks, I hear you. Yeah, I always like fighting the Turks. I think they're so yeah, fun. Yeah, and we have so Elena now. Like, it's, yeah. she's new. And it's also like, you know, it is funny. In Temple of the Ancients, it feels like fighting the Turks has become uh, the, you know, Captain America Civil War of like, you're fighting these guys, but you're not really going to kill them. Like, you know, if you ever go too far and actually try and kill Elena, Tifa's like, what are you doing, Cloud You Maniac? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are yeah. trying? Aren't they... Evil. No, so that's the thing is that that's like what team I find rock, so interesting. Team yeah. It's a little team rocket. Yeah. 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 Uh no, but even, you know, you know, not to on and again, we're not jumping ahead. We're Don't, not jumping I know ahead. what you're going to say. I know what you're going to say. It right just now. how how when Sung was stabbed yes. and then yes. Yes. I'm like so I never like, hated I never you. Hated you. Yeah. 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 Okay. So and you were jumping ahead there. No, I'm not. Since we're not jumping ahead too. Can I talk about my favorite detail from the Turk fights. Yeah. yeah. Which is that Elena has a bedazzled pink gun. That gun rules. Oh, yes. I right. just like, yeah, yeah, I yeah, want, yeah. like, I've never wanted, like, a toy gun. I, I want that. Like, mm-hmm. it's just... Uh, let's see. Matt N. says, I played the original in preparation for Rebirth, but after cool. having Kate Sith in the party for so long and doing all the side content, <laughs> I found myself surprised that he took the keystone from us. This Aww. obviously happened in the original game, but I think it speaks to how well Rebirth is getting us invested in characters that it still surprised me mm-hmm. when he just tossed the keystone <laughs> to the Turks. That was always a fun moment. Although in this one, compared to the original, in the original, he like takes Marlene hostage. He's like, yeah. Oh, Lord. Brains out. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! Jesus. And somehow he comes back from that. Like, but in this one, it is just that confusing. I'm beat. number two. <laughs> it is a confusing beat uh, in this one, just to have him yeah. toss it away, and then it's like, and yeah. he seems upset that we're mad about it. Yeah, yeah. This is the, he was like throwing guilt at us. Yeah. We're like, not you too. Like, and it yeah. worked. You realize what you it just worked. Did? I'm like, you know? let him back in. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh. fine. <laughs> it is stupid that in this, in you know, if you're a Patreon yeah. supporter, we had like the the bonus spoiler discussion. I, in I that, kept we on t- thinking about that. Yeah. About, I was, I think, being like, oh, I think they're gonna wait for Kate to come back until part three. But it's like now, in retrospect, it's like of course they had to have him for the final yeah. battle there because yeah. even you know, I we was, did not think about that. I didn't. I mean, but I was, yeah. I was. How could we possibly be expected to think critically about this game? But you know, I was maining Aerith and Kate Sith through so much of this game, mm. weird. and so I did have moments that of is like weird. Yeah. What did you like? I was about trying to be Kate weird. Sith? I think he's funky. He's random. Wow, you're so quirky. Thank you. <laughs> he was 
uh, to me, I felt like whenever I was going to like this guy's a nightmare. I, I just, if you just lean into the chaos, I think he's fun, and he does big damage. He has sure. a lot of fun while doing it. He's, he's yeah. more. No, he's but it's kind of like I love the, him. He's my favorite, but I just couldn't click with his game. It, it felt like it, it was kind of the antithesis of what I was hoping for the uh, the fighting to be in this game, mm-hmm. which is mm-hmm. which is like Tifa and Tekken, mm-hmm. and that's like mm-hmm. what I want. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. and then you have Kate yeah. Sith, which is just like not that grab ass yeah. rodeo. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. dice. Yep. 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 Um. But uh, oh, I had so many moments when Kate Swift was gone for the little chunk of this game where I literally was like... Just cried like a little baby. Yeah, I was like, where's my Katie? My baby Katie. <laughs> we need our meow meow we boy. Date. Uh, <laughs> our Scottish meow meow. <laughs> we had a hot date and then he weaves me. <laughs> um, no, but... Uh, no, I'm just like looking through the UI like, where's Kate Swift? Like, oh, that's right. He's gone from the story right okay. now. Yeah. We're even like building out the folios again. Like question all the marks. synergies with him. Yeah, we're question marks. Yeah. Like, what the hell is this? Yeah. It's so yeah. funny when like he leaves too and it's just like Kate Sith returned his equipment. Like he was f***ing fired like we were a company. Yeah. Yep. Like, Clean out your desk and your badge. Laptop, yeah. like, your company issued material. Yeah. Like. yeah, everybody was a little too eager to get him back into the party. The characters, I mean, mm. they were like, we were wrong included. about you. Myself I was like, included. Yeah, oh, I was like, let him get crushed by that thing. I'm no, fine I, with I, I was kind of too. I don't know. I'll forgive him after he's dead from and, saving our lives. And so his explanation of the turn is that he wanted the Turks to sacrifice themselves because he knew how dangerous the Temple of the Ancients was. Was, where yeah. it's like I he's trying to protect them. Could have said that at the time. Yeah, man. you were yeah. instead of just scrambling around and trying to hide in the gold saucer for me, it would have taken yeah. one sentence instead of you pretending to be a statue on the bench or whatever nonsense <laughs> you're up to, man. No, that was fun. No, that was fun. There's yeah. no doubt that was kind of fun. Um, let's see. Uh, Mighty Ethan writes in talking about the Zach flashback. So, was anyone else disappointed that Zach's motorcycle was just a regular ass dirt bike? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone else gets He's not a even slum. a nice dirt bike. He's yeah. in a slum. Everyone yeah. else gets these massive Art Deco diesel punk monstrosities. He's over here just puttering along <laughs> like Zach a rural is, teenager. Okay, is Zach Ferris in Fortnite. I'm <laughs> sorry. Stuart that's what he's driving. I got to go. Yeah, he's basically John Connor, the dirt biker. <laughs> Uh, I think oh I did like in that Rufus fight it was fun where it it was just a fun presentation like I was generally surprised of like Rufus is gonna be here like this it's a fun thing to There's throw a go- in the yeah there was a goofiness yep. to, to yeah. all of that and which just, is just like Rufus being in the space of just like I wanna have fun too <laughs> right you know, like, yeah, yeah. Um, and then he has that line too where uh, I think it's when he brings his dog out who's just like ah like feral trying to jump out there <laughs> and he's like uh, where Cloud goes like you don't bite the hand that feeds. And then Rufus goes, yet here you're, you you're, are. Yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah, that's so good. good. And it's at that point too, yeah, where he's like, technically you're still an employee. Yes. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. He's cool. like, you're on payroll. <laughs> yeah, Get yeah. in line. Yeah, that's so good. I think you'll find I have not picked up my paycheck in at least two <laughs> weeks or however you long we've been traipsing Literally around the planet. Literally four years probably. So yeah. Shinra HR needs to get on that. <laughs> Uh, yes. I think that's it for it's more side quests you know finishing off the cactar stuff Red turns into the cactar he really likes it it's very fun um, I love doing the whole Shadow of the Colossus blade thing trying to find those cactar parts again yep that's very fun um wasn't super thrilled that Don Corneo showed up again at the end of he that he won't stop although he did have a real Scooby Doo line when he was like I'll be back to get you meddling kids and your cacti as well <laughs> Should we talk a little bit about Queen's Blood? Can we move into the mm, Queen's Blood mm, part mm, of the mm, night? Yes. Yes, Ross. Okay. okay. We embrace it. I so not. I'm, Ronnie? I didn't have enough time to play <laughs> Queen's Blood. I, I just, understand. It's, uh, it's a real time. I'm scene. envious that uh, you guys are having this conversation. Okay, go on. So you get off the tiny Bronco at the dock at the start of Chapter 12. The card carnival right there has like 15 new missions. Oh, Not to mention God. new people in town to play against. Really? Yeah. Yeah. You like walk up to somebody and they're like, hey, you look like you play Queen's Blood, which is the biggest <laughs> insult you could give anyone in this world. <laughs> <laughs> but at the card carnival, like, it's a, it, that's where all the puzzles are, yeah. sort of, the card puzzles. And that's where you can get like your Tifa card and all your party member cards. Oh, oh party cool. member cards? Yeah. They're very fun to play around I with. I want to see those patterns. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if uh, the Vincent card gets destroyed, I believe it it gives you a um, turns into a beast card, oh, which is oh, one that's crazy a really powerful. smart idea. Yeah, so they're all very fun. You go back to the the Golden Saucer, and there's a bunch of new challenges there as well, including a five round uh, card battle where you can only use your 15 card deck. It's the like the ultimate survival challenge. It's the hardest thing in the game. I think. Really? Yes. Whoa! Okay. okay. 
Yeah. Uh, and what, your kid- what's the top uh, like rank? Ten. The oh. ten? Yep. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And your kid got into Queen's Blood. Yeah, he, he really got big into it. He's into card games these days. He's six. Cool. And so six yeah. into cards. That's impressive. Yeah. Yep. And so I taught him how to play Queen's Blood, mm-hmm. like what the dots mean and whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like he's playing with my deck, so you yeah. know, I've got a really good deck. so yeah. mm-hmm. You can't mess it up, really. But yeah, he uh, <laughs> he got super into it. I, I put him against the easy guy Thorin back in near calm mm-hmm. the card maniac mm-hmm. guy. Mm-hmm. His level stays at three, whereas mm-hmm. the other ones kind of bump up oh, to they be do. more oh, difficult. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, he had a lot of fun playing that, and he, like, won his own match for the first time and was like, mm-hmm. send this to your friends who play Final Fantasy VII. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> Tell the world. Yes. But, yeah, that, uh, that, that ultimate card challenge is so brutal. You have to, like... Like, one strategy would be to get cards that give you other cards when they die or when you use them right. or whatever. But those cards usually aren't super powerful. Mm-mm. So, like, the first time I played it, I got, I was ahead like 78 to 30 going into the final fifth round. I had zero cards left. And they get five cards for the final round, which is kind of cheating. The, the opponent does. And I lost like. 80 to 78 or whatever. Whoa. I would have like, oh. broken the Dang. TV. Yeah. <laughs> that would kill me. Yeah. So I finally did it and got to like 100 to zero mm-hmm. going into round five. Mm-hmm. And it yeah. still like ends up I being like, like 60 to 100. I really like yeah. that where it's like, I don't know, you lose, or I don't know, like it, when you win, you win big, but then when you yes. lose, it's like, yeah. yeah you're doors. either winning yeah. 100 to nothing mm-hmm. or losing do you think that's what uh, Jacob Geller was talking about when he, he, he was the talking impossible fight? He was talking about like one impossible fight Okay. Uh, in Queen's Blood. I wonder if There's it was the that. There's the final story fight as I well. Think well, that's first, what it was. first oh, you have okay. to go uh, fight uh, um, Vincent outside of the Shinra Manor. Oh, really? Yeah, because oh, he's the one who has the Emerald Queen. Oh. Or no, the Emerald Witch card, sure. which is what you need to be able to fight the Shadow Blood Queen. Did you do this, mm-hmm, this stuff mm-hmm. on it? Okay. No. So, yeah, you, you do him, and he's all cool outside under the pergola outside uh, oh, yeah. Shinra Manor, and you beat him, and he, like, tosses the card to you all cool like in a cutscene and you're like yes Vincent is the man so <laughs> and Vincent's like time to duel yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah so then the final Queen's Blood battle is back in Gangaga and it's in like the ruins area that you don't really explore much but it's to the west of the map below the um, airstrip okay and you like go around in there and you find lo and behold Regina the uh, ma- uh, QB master from yeah. the boat tournament. Oh yeah, she's there. She's been possessed by the Shadow Blood Queen. Oh, of course. good. Yes. of course. That's why she's there. Yep, and you have to fight her. She has the queen out on her board to start with. Super powerful card. Tough to beat. Um, and the idea I think is that you want to use the Emerald witch card which is counter to the shadow blood queen it enhances cards and i was like well that's a perfect fit for my deck put it in there just got totally smoked oh my <laughs> god because uh because the queen's deck like weakens and destroys your cards so as soon as that starts happening it's like a house of cards and you're not getting all your bonuses from enhancing other cards and all that stuff so i had to change my strategy and create a new deck that is powered up when it gets um like power taken away from mm-hmm. it sort of or whatever yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. and then that was the only way i was able to beat the shadow yeah. blood queen did you find that like the set deck things were helpful for you to help yes you? yeah okay. Okay. Oh, sure. really yeah. okay yep. it, it was always a really good starting point oh okay and then you could like go through and see that yeah. there were a couple lame cards that you yeah. could swap out for better yeah. Sure. yeah yeah but it's you know it's like she's like as soon as i beat you in queen's blood i'm gonna take over the world and <laughs> you lose to her and i was like oh no am i gonna have to reset or whatever mm-hmm. and she's like I'll play you one more time if you want <laughs> until you beat her. Uh, and there's an amazing cutscene when you beat her where uh, like it looks like she's gone, but she's like, oh, I'm back. And she's like choking cloud <laughs> with like, you know, floating magical cards surrounding her. And like Vincent swoops in and shoots all the cards with his gun. That's <laughs> yeah, and amazing. Cloud like does one of those action movie dives where he dives and grabs a card and then throws it all in one motion. Throwing the uh, Emerald Witch card at the the Shadow Blood Queen, it like sticks in her like clavicle or whatever. Oh my god! So this is this was one month of production yeah, exactly. for like oh, an entire absolutely. team. You know what I mean? Like this is incredible. Yeah. So Queen's Blood, best 
card game in any Final Fantasy game, even better than Triple Triad. Wow. Wow. I love yes. it. With that, yeah. And yeah, and I hope it comes back in the third. Yeah, I'm fair. sure. Michael writes in says, Beating the Shadow Blood Queen really only takes three cards. Ross, this is why Ooh. you're wrong. Okay. You got Chimera in the middle, which gets plus two for each enfeebled card. It easily reaches 16 plus. Yep. Replace it with Gina Tok, which gives the power to both top and bottom. Both of those should be Rictus, which gains power for every card destroyed. The Queen gets to you at least 30, but you can easily stomp her with the other two rows. Yeah. So is Michael. Gina Tok is how I won many, many endgame battles. Yeah. Gina Tok. Yep. Gina because Tock. if you have a super powerful card in that middle row, Ginatok takes that power and gives the full amount to both the top and bottom. Mm. Ah. So it's And a- this is why the Gi can't rest. Yes. Yep. <laughs> yep, that's exactly it. Uh, Anna, thank you uh, for jumping into the last discussion on the Deepest Dive. Uh, you've been great so far, just to be very clear. I'm just oh, thanking you for uh, oh, jumping in you. and being I'm as geeky as I'm obsessed with this game. Apparently. Yeah. My God. A lot of jumping been, ahead, I will say. Hey, yeah. Way I'm, too much. I don't I know what just, you're trying to I pull Just write it down in my review. <laughs> 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 just screamed about Vincent Valentine and jumped ahead. Chapter 14. Opens Turks in the Helicopter. 13? Thirteen. Thirteen. Chapter thirteen. You would never no you would ahead. never skip it. You would never skip yeah, it. I didn't even finish fourteen. <laughs> but Turks in the helicopter. Yep. Uh and they're talking about like, oh, is this thing actually gonna kill us like everybody thinks? Like, yeah. I like this so, talking about that idea of like well, no, Rufus is here, and so how unsafe can it be? But like Rufus Elena's never the, leaves the helicopter. Elena's the correct yeah. one. Yeah. Um, sorry, Ben, to interrupt. Can I read no. my one note that I have? Loudly and first proudly, note. please. It says Bullet point pre temple, sub bullet point, all caps, Reno, 12 exclamation points, all caps, my brat is home. <laughs> he is. <laughs> He's Were you worried back. he wouldn't show up at all? No, I knew he would come. I knew okay. he would come. And I knew he would have a smaller role in this game, but I was just happy to see him. Are you that into Reno? Reno's great. Re- Reno is a lot of fun. He did Who's drive the plate, right? Okay. Oh. Everyone has a, 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 an endearing war criminal, okay? Yeah. <laughs> I'm allowed to watch. I'm allowed to watch. We each get one. That's true. Yeah. It's like one fictional war criminal minus Reno. Yeah. That's fair. Sorry. Wait, who's the best Turk? Do you guys <sighs> I think probably rude I think it's, I feel no. like you know I also I think I'm there's, gonna fight you I'm, on yeah, this. I, I, but there's, I'm, like, I'm there's gonna, a quiet like I like Sung to some degree too yeah. like he's just like kind of the, the noble mm-hmm, leader mm-hmm, yeah. like mm-hmm. I, I like him mm-hmm. I like Elena because um, she is not a company woman she's, she's she so will question good. what's going on you know she's, she's like so why yeah. do I have to do this and she's yeah. also like bring me f- Ice cream, which <laughs> <laughs> smashed yeah, yeah, yeah. her eating a popsicle in the desert. Yeah, and also I like her talking about like, yeah, when it comes to the promised land. Sorry, Miss Cetra, you know, snooze, you lose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus Christ! I like his son too. He's like obviously like cares for Earth. He's like, let's move on, let's move on. And she's like, no, like yeah. we're fighting them. Yeah. Uh, how were you guys excited to see Roche in a in the, one of the helicopters? Rose. He is he is always there reacting a little bit. He's even yeah. coughing up blood, but yeah. he's technically around, right? What I hoped was that this would mean <laughs> He's doing great. <laughs> <laughs> he's coming Actually, back, guys. I'm always playing Roche. Final Fantasy <laughs> to save Roche now. Aerith has died. We're now gonna play we're gonna play and see if we can save Roche. Twenty five years from now when the game comes yeah. out, the re remake. <laughs> and New York Times will write a feature and it spoils like, everything that yes. happens to our boy Roche. Does Roche still need to die. Oh, yeah. Yes. Were you delighted to see him, Rose? Oh, yeah. I was delighted to see him because I thought, <laughs> as dead, we know, yeah. Sephiroth yeah. Uh, possesses these um, he can't get black robes. Yeah. I was like, is Sephiroth going to possess him and ride a motorcycle? Uh, <laughs> didn't happen. That'd be fun. And he changes it, you know, like, I can't destroy the planet because yeah. there's motorcycles on this planet. What are you going to do? It's the sweetest thing to do. Um, it is nice. Yeah, Roche still hanging out in his favorite black robe, just getting cozy up there in the copter. He's doing a great job. Yeah, Hojo is like the most evil and mm-hmm, obnoxious mm-hmm, person mm-hmm, mm-hmm. in the entire game, right? Yeah, they're yeah. really playing this. But I remember, you, Ben, I remember you saying this like in remake about just like you forget yeah, how evil he was. Yeah, just like they are really playing this up, mm-hmm, and, yeah. mm-hmm. and and in remake it didn't actually like it didn't hit me. To this degree, where it's just like, oh my god, do we get it? Mm-hmm. This guy sucks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We got that like seven chapters ago, mm-hmm. and it's just like, he I just don't know, just keeps evil every laughing. moment. And we every, know yeah. he sucks because he's the only Shinra employee who's not hot. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sadly, Sadly, we're supposed to hate him. He's I, got kind of like Palmer a withered Eric smoking. Roberts look to him. <laughs> sorry. Mm. Okay. Yeah. I, okay, I wasn't thinking the full Shinra board here. I'm sorry. I gotta go back into employee <laughs> archives. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that is a good point. But we're supposed to hate Palmer. I don't know. It is kind of yeah, a weird true. thing that's like... It, I mean, we talked about this earlier. The how like the Turks, you know, it's were they're more endearing. Yeah. Rufus is more endearing this game, and I'm yeah. like, square Rufus, with it. Yeah, you're right. Like, Hojo is so obnoxious that even when his boss, the owner of the company, is like, "Give me a little exposition of what's happening here," he still doesn't. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, you know, he's giving us that. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. interesting too. Like after his son gets stabbed and he's in the helicopter, and it's like he needs a doctor, and Hojo's like, "I'll help." Like. Keep your hands off. Like, <laughs> yeah, you are not yeah, a yeah. doctor, dude. Like, yeah. dude you, you know what you here. mean. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Big E writes in, uh, unclear if it's the wrestler. They say, did anyone notice how Reno has almost no dialogue in this game? They yes. Say, they said that's because <laughs> so. the original Japanese actor died yeah. and they didn't want to or yeah. couldn't replace him because it was close to recording time. Yeah. He was a pretty famous voice actor after all. So when yeah. playing in Japanese, all of Reno's lines are reused dialogue from remake. Yeah. The director did say they will find a replacement in the third installment as a kind of homage, Rude and Elena speak in Reno's dialect in Japanese. Yeah. Oh. I, I would like a citation for that idea of, you know, th- that's why they're not well, having... Because he's out for a big chunk of this game in the I original mean, game, too. He was um, out for a big chunk of the game, but they were saying that he was on vacation. And in the original, they're all out on vacation. So, right. Yeah. So it, it, it was... I, I'm glad that um, you brought that up because that was... The question that I was going to ask is like, so there must be a reason that like outside of the realm of just like the yeah. storytelling of why Reno is just like notably absent. Yeah. And I mean, not, to yeah. be honest, that's why I didn't expect him to be as much in this game is because of that. Okay. And so I don't like, I, 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 uh, I haven't fact checked that, but like, that was like my expectation as a fan. That's like yeah. what I understood was like, there's mm. going to be less Reno because, um, because Keiji Fujiwara passed away I, I'm so, not, if, if send me the link for the yeah, specific thing yeah, of where yeah. the, the square talked about that i'm curious about that because yeah. it, is, it is certainly noticeable yeah. yeah um temple of the ancients freaking awesome yeah, idea to the degree that rude at one there point we go. <laughs> <laughs> give me your microphone uh <laughs> <laughs> <two mics. laughs> to the degree that rude said at one point in time he's like i miss you partner right you remember yeah. that like yeah yep yeah. um also, it is fun when you fight all the Turks in Temple of the Ancients, and it's each so one has good. like an elemental weakness. That's like yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, also, yeah. like I love like they start to complicate like our relationship with the Turks because mm-hmm. you do fight alongside of them. Yeah, for like, a second. Right, let's clear the monsters so, out first. Forget, like I love the cutscene of like them working together in this kind of feeling of confusion, and it's just like. Oh, and also, like, the cutscenes are in this final section. They know, they all feel so Advent children. Yeah, and, like, do. a lot of mm-hmm. it is fighting the Turks of, like, we're just going to have a crazy action set piece yeah. cutscene. Mm-hmm. We're going to have incredible. people throwing each other. That's what I think of when I think of Advent yeah. children. And, 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 like, yeah. Cloud throwing Tifa off the sword. Yes. And then Aerith is like, I love that move. Uh, She's yeah. like, oh, that old thing? Like, it's, yeah, it's, know, it's so, so good. good. It's so also, good. Also, as we get into the end game here, they start dropping the S bomb way more often. <laughs> <don't> <laughs> they? Yeah. Uh, my favorite is an to be very clear, we're not jumping ahead. But my favorite is just so satisfying when a character sums it up, uh, how you're feeling. And like fighting Genova at the end of the game, there's a cutscene with just Yuffie in the air, and she goes, like, I'm sick of this shit. And like, is it Cloud who's like, get that shit out of here, man? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You gotta say it every once in a while. But the design for Temple of the Ancients, I yes. think, is is so awesome. Um, mm-hmm. to have it just like a bunch of little Minecraft blocks floating and then collapsing yeah. in and like when you get there R.I.P. Aerith she would have loved Minecraft <laughs> 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 but like when you get in there and like you hear that music start to creep in they're starting mm-hmm. to tease you with the Temple of the Ancients theme it's like oh my god I know it's so just good. so it's so teasing because you like if you played the original game you know what you're coming up against and it's just like it's so intentional with just like we're gonna tease you with this music that obviously means Mm. Something to mm-hmm. you, mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. and then and it tease you for a little bit, and then I feel like every music fan is like, bam, full blast, yep. and like the battle music version of the Temple of the Ancients theme. Mm. Like, All right, come on now, yeah. guys. Um, yeah, I, I love the the design in there. Also, yes. they, they have uniquely designed ancient crates and ancient chests. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. and ancient the benches. benches. Yeah, it's like yeah. they've got a society so much like our own. Yeah, it's so different. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, were those in though? Were those in um like Red Nanaki's area too? No, it was different. It was different. Okay, yeah. I remember. Different. Yeah, 
Um, but yeah, just the the design alone of every aspect of the Temple of the Ancients, I think, is incredible. Like the first room you go into, and it's like all those like weird levels, just like the tree in the middle. Yeah. And then you go outside of that, and then you get to see the the fun of like your Shinra soldier, like ah! like going yeah, horizontally. Yeah, yeah. It's like okay, we're messing with dimensions here and gravity throughout this entire experience. And then it pops up on the screen like, all right, you're in the labyrinth now. Yeah. And it's like, it's a fun test because I think a lot of these games so far with Remake and Rebirth, they've been sanding off so many of the rough edges. We're trying to make it breezy, not too frustrating. And so it is a fun test of like, if you're calling this area the labyrinth, how annoying is it going to be? And the answer, at least for me, was like, not at all. Like, I I really hate that type of thing. No, yeah. It was not at all frustrating. It, It... it really exceeded my expectations in terms of how long the chapter would be. Yeah. Like once I got to the place where it's just like, okay, this is a chapter three esque uh, 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 situation here where it's just like, okay, it's just going to be this. Mithril Mines. Yeah, Mithril Mines. And, and like it was like hour six. I'm like, what? Yeah, it was like three times as long as mm-hmm. Mithril Mines. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just yeah. when so I was like, oh, yeah, really I've got plenty me. of time mm-hmm. to beat this game. Yep. Mm-hmm. yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But. Uh, it it is like not to harp on the Mithril Mines again, but that was so point A to point B. Yeah, yeah. And this is still straightforward enough, but so much more interesting. And I yep, just liked yeah. it so much more. Yep, mm. for sure. I yeah. w- I had immediate concern about just like, oh my god, is this gonna be like one of those like I'm going to fall into the trap of like I'm gonna change the gravity yeah. here yeah. and yeah. I'm be like, oh yeah. crap, there's a chest over here. I'm gonna go back. Yeah. And I I think I did that a total of like one time. Mm-mm. So it, it does say something I think to the design of of how like yeah. how they structured it, where I wasn't doing a lot of backtracking. I didn't have a lot of paranoia about just like oh, crap, did I miss somebody's no. like final yeah. weapon? And, yeah. yeah. And even to that end, it was really nice because like I remember one of the earlier um, opportunities where you could change the gravity like and you I would go ahead and I'm like okay it seems like there's a path I'm just gonna yeah. backtrack and see what happens I change the gravity there's a chest right there and I can't go any further and so it kind of stops you from yeah. like spending too much unneeded time on like I don't know tinkering on the yep. different gravity yeah. settings which yeah. was honestly really nice I it was really that. nice that yeah. was immediately my like anxiety it's just like ooh I don't want to get too confused mm-hmm. yeah. like mm-hmm. like where was it coming where was it going like, mm-hmm. and they're really clear even like when you get like those big crates with like the ball in the middle of, like yep. just yeah. move it over here you guys to yeah. Climb yeah. Up yeah. okay yeah. I will say there was one the bridge when you had to like push it out and then it gets blown into the bridge yes. I was kind of confused is that the one where you have to fight the boss and then have him hit the pillar I think it's the second one, one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the second one where yeah. it's just like you just drop it off and then it goes it kind of just weirdly Flows. floats yeah, yeah. You're right. yeah. that was like the one time where it's like I, what is going on you know but do you think they were trying to connect it to and I'm not trying to shoehorn this conversation I swear but the whole side quest about how Barrett's the date, <laughs> Barrett's favorite uh, ch- the children's date book that we're is about right the, now. <laughs> the life in the endless maze. Remember, because oh. that whole side quest about writing that children's yeah. book and taking the pictures to inspire mm. with the story of Red and all that stuff. Mm. Like, oh, I wonder if that's kind of the payoff. Is like we're teasing this maze, and now this is the maze. Mm. I didn't even think about probably, that. Like, they, probably, they referenced right? that book and how much Barrett loves that book in remake as well. I think it's oh, like wow, when really? you're. Oh, is it chapter five? I forget when it is. It's when you're in chapter nine. When you grow up and fighting Valkyrie, I think he talks about life mm. in the endless maze. And then they oh, pay it off with like, meet the author of life in the endless maze. Oh, like, oh, I'm your biggest <sighs> fan. Like, oh, I so can't fun. wait to see what kind of offhand comments in this game get turned into full on side quests. <laughs> in I not yeah. imagine. So the, the red dragon. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah how, that was an interesting fight with the pillars and all that stuff. Yeah. How did that go for everybody? I died. I died too. I uh, died too. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't die a whole lot in the end game. Yeah. On I main there. story stuff. I definitely died there. Yeah. Before I realized I've got to directly target that chest, that dragon chest. That was the thing. Go. Yeah. Wait, I didn't. I didn't know that. Though. So it had this, it had this weird, like almost like raid mechanic of just like, oh, okay, you have to, you have to like destroy the chest, and then his fire breath goes down in level because if it's level three, it covers the entire floor, and you mm. just have to eat the damage. Yeah, and it's that, a so lot brutal. of damage. damage. Yeah. Yeah. I was yeah. when I saw that happening. Like, All right, just load up. We're gonna sit in this guy's lava yes. for a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, But if you beat that chest, mm. it, which mainly comes down to making sure that Aerith is totally powered up, has her mm-hmm. uh, two wards stacked at least for Arcane, so you can hit it with two uh, Blizzaras or yeah. Blizzagas. Yep. That'll that'll do the trick. But yeah, the first time I did not focus enough on that, and I totally got wiped out. Yeah. Oh, boy. Um, Chase Klein says, I enjoyed that they lean into the MC Escherness of the Temple of the Ancients dungeon. It's the first time in a long time where I actually... Where I was actually quite turned around in a dungeon. Oh, hmm. I also was really glad they didn't bring back the rolling cylinder section where you have to stop oh, and yeah. duck in the OG. It's like yeah, the classic, yeah. like you remember in Aladdin when he's in the snow and the 
things rolling and you have keyhole. to go in the window. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. that type of thing. It's like, okay, there's one groove that's oh, it's open. It's a keyhole. It's, it's some sort of keyhole-like device. Um, also, uh, Nate M says, I love that they alluded to the weird clock room from the original, I didn't think of this connection. That's mm. what it is. Oh, I made right. the transition between Cloud and okay. Eris party, the weird that, clock okay. so weird. I yeah. thought that was weird too. I was like, I have a brain. I can assume that it picks up from where it picks up. I, yeah. you it's didn't just need so to tell elaborate. Me it's, yeah. it's wild. But yeah. yeah, so there is like a clock room puzzle in the original that you know, they're connecting to. I don't okay. know if it's, it, it, it's probably a reference to that. Um, but I thought that was so weird because the beginning of the Loveless play also has that clock transition. Yes. Mm-hmm. yes. Yeah. yeah. That was what I looked well, at. I was like, where are we? Yeah. Someone's running out of time. I won't say who. Yeah. Because we're not jumping ahead. Oh, wow. Okay. We if they're running yeah. out of time, these characters should not be taking several hours to do what it takes me one hour to do. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> where does this time come from? What are you talking about? Like, several hours. You know, I, I, I thought it was a cool idea of like separating the party. Isn't it's another way of just of showing Cloud when the parties separate. Like, oh, we should go check on him. And Cloud's like, nope, we're on a mission. We got to keep going. Uh, I swear, yeah. my eyes are on the prize. And a lot yeah. of concerned glances between Barrett and Tifa. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. should do Co- something about this cloud. <laughs> yeah, I Cloud's do. murdering guys in cold blood and she's giving him the Padme look. <laughs> okay. I, literally. But the other thing I love about Cloud is like, in this in this section of the game is that he's like, he's murdering people. I don't love that. Want to be clear about that. But he acts Fair. like a teenager. <laughs> he acts like such like a, a snobby little, like he's like, sounds like he's upset on his mom. Like, let's go. Like, shut up, Aerith. Like, let's go. You know? Yeah. No, it's just like what, what's it, to me. It's like what's equally as upsetting is that nobody's like kind of calling him out. You know, yeah. like the, Tifa yeah. has usually yeah. been this kind of in this place of like balance for him. Yeah, but even still, like even Barrett will once yeah. in a while be like, just like, hey, shut stop up, stop it. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. I mean, yeah. I yeah. Mean, there's the most, the closest they get to it is Red and Yuffie and Aerith talking about it, and Yuffie's like, well, you know, it's like basically it's like the only thing that can go wrong here is if. Cloud loses it, and then Yuffie's yeah. like, Yuffie's like, yeah, I mean, I guess it's up to Tifa to kind of slap to the shit out of him. Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah. It's it's literally it us, though, in all of these stories, like telling, yeah. you know, I don't know, saying the quiet part out loud. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that's how I kind of read it, is like Yuffie was actually saying, like, what was on everybody else's mind. Yeah. You know? yep. Oh, yep. 100%. Yeah. Uh, Jumpo writes in. So did anyone else? I'm sorry, Jumpo69 big <laughs> time. Uh, says, I want to say that I stopped myself from making that joke. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're a classier person that's, than I. That's because, Anna, that's your burner account. Right? <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to our secondary accounts. No. Uh, did anyone else notice that when Aerith communicates with the live stream for the first time and does the dance with her staff, it's extremely Yuna from Final Fantasy X. Totally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Doing yeah. the s- staff yeah. spin on her hand. Yep. 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 And plus with her already singing a pop song mm-hmm. that's very oh, oh yeah, yeah that's a good they, say, they seem to be putting a lot of 10 references throughout both games so far like the Shinra picture in remake it's, it's this time is to play cut. 10 let's time to play 10 Ronnie do you know about the Shinra thing from 10 in no. Final Fantasy hey, 10 2 there's an NPC whose name is Shinra, Shinra. Oh. and so everyone's like is this the world of 7 earlier and that's where the name Shinra came from there's a lot of just fun Shinra oh, connections sure. no um, also there's the cactar stones in Corel which were also in 10 and Jumpo says I wonder if it's leading to something I do think if they're going to remake another one in a big way I think it would be 10 yeah it, yeah probably um, yeah. but uh, yeah right that, after 8 I, I love ever, Aerith did you ever do a remake on or the deepest dive on 10 I'm open to it I'm not opposed to it. I would do it. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, I would do most Final Fantasies is kind of the secret for the deepest dive but um, I, I thought you it was really you wouldn't do like Five? Four. Well, I would do four. No, I would, I would, <laughs> would, I would love, I've started four. You can't four. do two or three or one. <laughs> That's true. That yeah. is true. I've, you should do one, though. I've started, <laughs> no. I've started <laughs> four so many times, and I, it oh, kills really? me that I've never finished it. Because really? that DS remake, I think, is so cool. I love the look of that yeah. DS remake. It's really hard, though. Yeah? It's harder than you would expect, mm. the DS remake, okay. particularly. The SNES version is a lot easier. Mm. Mm. That's really? Cool. Yep. Wow. And if you're going to do the pixel remake, you can just crank up the XP if you want. Do you which do you like four or six more? Six, okay. for sure. Four yeah, is fine. really good, though. Yeah. Do you like four or five more? Uh, I have not played five yet. Really? Yep. I, I'm tempted to do five. I think it'd be a fun one, too. I thought that was such a sweet thing when Aerith comes up and uh, walks through the temple and she's just crying and she can finally mm. communicate with the live stream. It's like she can finally <sighs> yeah. talk mm. to her people directly. Mm. And she says, like... God, she has some line. Just like what, really? Like she's so amazed at being I, able I to I do remember talk in, in in the original like FF seven. They it it's so funny. Like it's incredible how many like little moments that 
Like, if you think about it, it was an FF7, mm-hmm. the original, of her, yeah. like, going down on the ground and, yeah. like, listening, like, oh, putting yeah. her ear to the yeah. ground and being like, what? Yeah. Yeah. No, I like... Oh, oh. Oh, no, go ahead. Okay. I like that she uh, is not instantly able to do it either. Yeah. It takes yeah. her a couple of tries, yeah. and then she kind of gets the hang of it. Yeah. A nice little character moment. Yeah. yeah. Plus, with later on, when she's, like, talking to the planet, she's like, my mom didn't teach me how to do this. I know yeah. I'm yeah. doing it wrong. Yeah. Yeah. So she's like, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So great. Yeah. Which I feel like is a nice larger theme among the other characters, like... Even, like, Nanaki not being able to, like, smell at first or, like, just this idea of, like, connecting with the planet and connecting with these senses, right? Like, it's such a lovely thing. And, like, something that I personally, like, love about Aerith's story is, like, okay, like, she's, like, like, she's, like, half Cetra. And, like, I don't know, like, I'm mixed, too. And so it was, like, really cool to, like, see the story of, like, her being, like, validated for that identity Mm, and her being, like, just as connected to that identity, like, despite being, like, I don't know, like mixed in the fictional hypothetical world of Final Fantasy and so like yeah, yeah just seeing that moment of her I don't know it was just really really cool I thought it was it interesting was, in, in the gold saucer when she went up to Dio she's like that keystone I think is rightfully mine yep. because I'm actually Cetra yeah. and he's like nope <laughs> are you kidding me actually, you can't pull that. not really I mean I feel like no? no I mean like he was just kind of like he didn't say no but also he <laughs> you know he, he, he was he was open to it he's like okay well if it's really like if it's meant to be, do this for me. Mm, you sure, know? Sure. Uh, what do you think about just controlling Aerith in these sections? And like her weird charge up? At the the, the yeah. level of like, okay, if you get enough of the live stream charge, yeah. then you can go into battle and yeah. you'll have like regen. I was like, what yeah. is this system? I know, this it was is just so like weird. a new mechanic. Yeah. yeah. It was a little bit weird. I did like it. it. I thought it was my favorite gimmick. <laughs> like temple, like my favorite, temple you know, te- yeah, yeah, yeah. Filling up the the things yeah. to make the new. Yeah. It's really satisfying yeah. to do that. I I compared love... compared to Kate Sith tossing. <laughs> well, yeah. anything's better than tossing a bar. I, I I love like any time that you could create, any time that you could create <laughs> the um, uh, just like a, a new platform, like use her power. The scope, like how, what, like what the camera did, and like the scope of of like putting off like this huge structure together, yeah. and how they did it. it. Every time, it was like it was very impressive to watch, and it just kind of looks like like every time you're just like, oh my god, there's it's it's incredibly complicated. It looks like what the mm. I don't, oh yeah, like, not mm, just the way it's mm, reconstructed. I mean, yeah. this, this is exactly what you want from the look of a final dungeon in a game like yes. just mm. a bunch of floating platforms mystery swirls like it just yeah. the entire environment it's like you can't get more epic than this it just yeah. looks incredible your party being split up to yep. accomplish or get to the same spot yeah. Yeah. I, yep. I liked it just for the different group dynamics and stuff the only time it got me was it's like when they were finally reunited after the Turk fight and the ceiling basically fell in a lane and all that stuff and then it was like oh great we're reunited and then it's like Rewind the clock two hours before. I'm like, no, I, I, I wasn't yeah. wondering how they got here. Yes. Like, we're, we're hot <laughs> I up don't now. need that. Yeah, yeah, yeah we yeah. don't need yeah. one more go around yeah. with this other team. Luckily, yeah. it felt like that was the that was the shortest part. Yeah, I, yep, yeah, yeah. Whole, yeah. yeah. The and other the, thing and that the least confusing. I yeah. loved about having them split up too was like we hadn't seen as much time with like Yuffie and Aerith, and so I was like, it was really great that Yuffie and Aerith got like put into a group because yeah. then it made like Yuffie's like reaction to things at the end like more convincing and just yeah. like kind of give like the turn of events like a little bit more oomph because I'm like, okay, because like I don't know, there's just a really s- s- gentle and sweet scene where I think it's like maybe the first time that Aerith like tries to do like like commune with the live stream and it doesn't yeah. work out and like. Or no, 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 it was a different time. And Yuffie's, like, hiding behind Aerith. And it's just, like, so cute because it's just, like, I don't know, you just see kind of, like, a big sister, little sister dynamic. And, like, they didn't have as many scenes like that. No, they didn't. Yeah. And also, like, like when she did, like, ultimately, like, Aerith failed, like, Yuffie was the one to kind of console her and just yeah. be like, well, you just have to try again. Yeah. And, and what I really like about that, particularly, like, at the end where Yuffie was more emotional than most mm-hmm. about... Aerith's, she was sobbing. Yeah, she, yeah, she was like, yeah. she was genuinely, she looked pretty genuinely distraught. Yeah. It's, it's just like you never really knew how bought into Yuffie, mm-hmm. like how much Yuffie was bought into actually being a part of this mm-hmm. crew, mm-hmm. and that yeah. kind of solidified. It's just like she mm-hmm. is, like regardless of her like secondary mission, mm-hmm. it feels like her first mission now is mm-hmm. to like see it through to the end with these, mm-hmm. yeah. just like yeah. Kate Sith, like that they've yep. come, you know, that they've all kind of come together through this. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I thought it was a smart idea, too, of having Aerith kind of the little live stream sparkles that are coming through. And then she's like, oh, they're teaching me how to actually 
be at one with the live stream. And then they started playing, like, she started playing with them. And right. Yuffie also was just like, whoa. Yeah. 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 It's also just crucial to build up her live stream abilities so that yeah. what happens at the very end is, like, believable. And it's not something that she's pulling out of nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Fred DeNovo says, I appreciate... Like when she smiled after she died. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> she died? Uh, Fred DeNovo says, Maybe. I appreciate that they finally figured out better climb mechanics once they got to chapter 13. Climbing the vines feels way better than the awkward yellow rock uh, jump. I, I, I would agree with that, yeah. And then, mm, climbing is climbing. Yeah, <laughs> climbing. <That's laughs> and then they bring back the uh, awkward jumping on the giant Sephiroth at mm. the end. I love I the like, I can't <laughs> believe I'm jumping yeah. on this. Yeah. Yeah. Sephiroth's like, the, like, this is the greatest evil I can inflict upon you. <laughs> yeah. When, like, yeah, the climbing UI is appearing on Sephiroth's body, it's like, what yeah. is this game? Yeah. <laughs> Felix says, toward the end of the temple section, you see the mural showing humans attacking Cetra in what appeared to be a Roman-like attires in ancient times. It's interesting having a glimpse to this time period in Gaia and how similar it is to our own early civilizations. Makes you wonder how is Aerith still connected to such an ancient civilization? Yeah, I loved seeing those life stream holograms and specifically, you know, what we talked about in the last Deepest Dive for yep. remake of like how they compare to Shinra's depiction in their VR oh, hologram. Oh, that's of, super interesting. Oh, that that yeah. And this one feels a lot more primal. It doesn't feel like okay. a one for one, mm. like people going on a picnic while airships fly yeah. overhead. This, yeah. I mean, but then they can just kind of tell. Well, it's just kind of like holograms, and also the, like, you know? green energy. So it's like, this is the life stream too, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But it felt a little more natural, but I love the yeah. idea of there's like, you know, the Turks are like, is this the promised land? We're pretty sure this is the promised land. What is this place? And at some point it's revealed like, no, this is this is a fortress. And it was used to defend against the humans because yes. the humans kept mm -hmm. attacking yeah. them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. As you were getting that blast of exposition with the uh, the presentation of the yeah. holograms and stuff, they start talking about making offhand references to our I don't know, their spectral enemy or mm -hmm. stuff like that. Yes. And you're like, oh, they're obviously talking about the Gi, right? Mm. Yeah. right. And then they hit you with right. the bomb mm -hmm. of Genova. It's Genova. Yes. 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 And they reveal yeah. for the first time that Genova is not an ancient, I believe it's the first time they talked about it in Rebirth, yep. but it's actually an an a calamity from the skies yeah. that yes. crashed 2,000 years ago. Yeah. And uh, that was the ancient's enemy. Yeah. So, right. yeah. so good. And I bet if you have never played the original game, that hits really hard. Yeah. yeah. I would think so. Yeah. I do wish it was a little bit more explicit because it is it is a little bit hard to kind of keep track of it, a detail that important. Mm -hmm. I imagine it'll come back like full force They'll talk the about game. it later. Yeah. yeah. I'd imagine. But that is like, oh, they're they're telling you this now. Okay. Yeah. It's it's yeah. a super fun section. And also yeah. they As say you're walking. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's yeah. something that it's you're a doing. Little bit, it's kind of important. Yep. And it feels weird yeah. to even talk about it, but then they do say that like the black materia summons meteor. Yeah. And it's like, oh, yeah, they're just they're spelling like, okay, it all out. Yeah. All right, yeah. Game yeah. on now. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's interesting because I would never jump ahead. I would never jump ahead. <laughs> <laughs> but at the very end, when Rufus confronts Glenn. Glenn who looks like Seth Roth, like the, the Cetra <laughs> do talk about how Genova like disguised itself, like right. took on many faces. And you're yes. like, okay, so sure. that's like what's going on and here. And that's probably why So in the seeds of discontent, you know? Yep, and that's probably why Sephiroth can also kind of impose himself. I'd imagine that's Genova's cells that let him kind of take over any of the wandering men. For mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And it also, like, I, I don't know if I thought this was the case, but it kind of explicitly tells you then that um, Genova is not like that um, image of a woman, right? Or whatever. That's mm, some, right. something that she killed or not like, subsumed yeah. Yeah. and yeah. is something probably mu much more grotesque. Because yeah. it was alarming how attractive Genova was. Yeah, in we Cloud's all felt it. I was never attractive. <laughs> I wasn't either. I'm just saying it was weird how into Ross was. Do you remember Ross? <laughs> remember he's texted us that fan art of him 69 in Genova? <laughs> yeah. 69 pictures of him 69. It was nuts. <laughs> just wait till I get my username comment from my burner. <laughs> it's Genova 69. Genova 69. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Jorin writes in and says, In the Shrine of Trials section of the Temple of the Ancients, where the team confronts their past demons, there are six fully accessible rooms and two that are only partially accessible. This is identical to the party makeup, which has six playable characters and two that are along for the story, huh. but can't yet be placed huh. in the party. Fun. Did you know, guys know that you could go to those doors and they'll open up for you and a couple of them have like materia in them? No. I did not know that. I, know if I did that. Anything huh. good? Nope. Okay. <laughs> um, this was... Innervation. This might have been my favorite section in the entire 
final three chapters. Really? Of, this like, one, the, the trial. Tri the trials slayed me. Because <gasps> it's like, hey, you know, when they said, oh, the trials of the mind, I still was going into it being like, okay, it's going to be like combat trials for all these ones. Like, no, nope. no combat. No, Just it's, it's mm. pure cool, the trauma. worst moment of your life. Yeah. Here's a little walking sim with each character that's going to be the worst moment of their life. A lot yeah. of it kind of fueling why they're angry towards Shinra is kind mm. of the overwhelming mm. theme, I think, for most of the stuff going into it. Yeah. I, yeah. That's I mean that's true and also it it did kind of kind of go into this place of just like I think the worst moment the yeah. pivotal moment of that person's life yeah mm -hmm. and I guess I didn't think about that but uh, yeah like a Shinra lot of it has was to involved. do with Shinra yep. in, in most of it yeah but yeah. It, Ross you're with me like yep so good love I love individual like flashback type stuff yeah and that just reminding you of where all these characters came from in some way seeing red like running from the helicopters yep. and getting yeah. abducted and actually tortured in the lab and yep. stuff like him screaming is so wild to get to see that plus the origin of the name red 13 which is yeah. just as compelling as han solo's <laughs> origin <laughs> i mean you mentioned han solo you are ross the star wars guy fun i do feel like this was this was everybody's kind of like dagobah cave yes. right yes. like okay everybody confront your greatest fear mm. uh, yeah. here we go and my favorite Part of it is the idea of like when the light beams hit everybody and then Cloud's just like, oh, I guess I don't have one. It's like, no. Hey, this is weird, man. That yeah. you're this the is one person. very weird. And also <laughs> it's just like, I think it was Tifa or Aerith that said like, well, I guess you get to sit this one out. Right. Yeah. And it's just this Yuffie's like, oh, good for you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. And then yeah. it's so weird when they all emerged afterwards, like, oh, and Cloud's like, we gotta forge it. It's like, yeah. give these people a second. They but just then went he kind of like, gets, but then he does like it one, is the thing. He does, yeah. yeah. Which, and it yeah. kind of feels like he failed it in, in ways that other, other characters other people didn't. Just because Sephiroth was, I, I loved I mean, in his, when Sephiroth is like, yeah. Yeah. whispering in his ear, like, you love this. Like, this was so fun, wasn't it? When you mm. bombed that reactor. It's like, yeah. it's just wild Look stuff. Look at all that yeah. fire. So let's, <laughs> the Aerith one was, I thought the most, for me, it was for me the most uh, emotionally affecting oh, part sure. of the entire mm -hmm. game like her as a child begging for help for her dying mother yes. and people just like looking away or whatever yep. mid guardians being as rude as possible and I even I loved hers too just like being in the train car and like spreading out the, the butterflies I thought that stuff was so mm. cool I, yeah. I found that the one that hit me the hardest by a mile for whatever reason was, was Barrett's yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. When he was with the stump of an arm, like wandering so around. So that was crazy. one of the notes that I, I wrote is like within. He, so when he was going into his like little transition, uh, the mist had hardly cleared before he started like, he's like, it's back. It's back. You know, he, he, it was just immediate how I'm like, he's like, I finally have arm. my arm. Yeah. He's yeah. like, mm -hmm. I finally have my arm back. Mm -hmm. And he was so quick to accept that just like, mm. yeah, this was all like. I want this all to be a dream. Mm -hmm. Myrna's back. Mm -hmm. Let's go. No hesitation. So like mm. how desperate he was mm. to go back and and be with his 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 wife mm. right. just devastated me. I mean, and then immediately, you know, it was all taken away again and, yeah. and he just relived I it. I had a really opposite reaction to it. I actually think mm. it was one of my least favorite parts of the game. Ooh. Not just because I I think that it's like it's really emotionally poignant part and we get to like I think, I don't know, it's so hard with games like this. We have so many characters and it's hard to keep track of them. But I think something that I didn't, I wasn't sure about with this was like, what's the point of showing all of this? Like, Aerith gets like her mm. speech at the end, but like, I wasn't sure like what to make of it. And like, Aerith kind of tells us this by saying like, hey, like, this isn't what defines us. We can like move forward, et cetera, et it's cetera. It's okay to die. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it's, and but it was just like, okay, but like, what? Like, what are these characters doing with this pain? Like, mm. what does it mean to them? Like, to me, it just, it kind of felt like we're going to make everyone sad. And I wasn't sure, sure, like, what the game was saying about It's not revealing anything stories. new necessarily about them, other than... Mm. Yes, it is, though. I mean, like, not even revealing something. Like, we get new information, but I, yeah. I didn't know how it played into, like, this larger story and their larger development. Yeah. Like... As to, like, how does that... in? That's a good point. Like, as to, like, what relationship does this have to the actual like goal and what the ancients were doing like why yeah. why go into these individual because, traumas because like they just get they go in and they get traumatized and then that's kind of it yeah. you know and i'm not saying like trauma has to have a resolution we have to be stronger from it but it's it's kind of like this thing of like well i would like there to be some sort of like I don't know, like artistic statement on like why this is happening slash yeah. like no, a plot, like a like a plot reason because it's like I don't know. I think like, the plot reason is um, showing 
that Aerith is now the leader of the party, mm. essentially. Well, that's yeah. interesting. They come out of there, everybody's yeah. at their one of their lowest points, yeah. and yeah. she is the one yeah. who has the big speech that rallies everybody. Yeah. yeah. And um, and then Cloud at the yeah. end goes, are you finished? Which yeah. is the coldest thing. Yeah. But even in that moment, I was kind of like, sorry, I don't mean to be a hater. I'm no, not no, a hater. I think, no, it's interesting. I thought of it. But like, even cl- like eris rallying speech is kind of like it's kind of like forgive people and i'm like no you don't need to forgive shinra like they all did these horrible things to you like that's why i'm very much like more aligned with barrett along these lines where it's like no like it's not like peace and love and forgiveness that's going to help us save the planet it's like a sense of conviction that will like move us forward the the cosmo canyon lesson yeah yeah Yeah. i i'm also personally uh, right in line with barrett yeah he's like i don't care if they're good people working for shinra they're evil yeah um, but for Aerith, I think it is important yeah. because I think like forgiveness is part of her, yeah. the way she connects with the, you know, the cosmic life stream and that type yeah. of thing. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I think, I think your point though, it's, it's interesting because I don't thinking about differences between the original and now is she is much more of an active, you know, yes. and I think it's setting her up to be more active and we see that in the ending already. And so yeah. this definitely plays into that, but I think, you know, Stuff that is important from all these two is like Cloud's trial, um, when he is watching Biggs die, and like you know, it's just heartbreaking. Mm-hmm. Then have Sephiroth jump in and be like, "You, you didn't you, shed a tear." Yeah, you didn't shed a yes, tear. You watched yeah. your friend yep. die. He yeah. died in your arms. There was a zero there yeah. emotionally. Like you, you're my puppet. You're hollow, which yeah. is yep. going to be important later on. Yes, yep. yeah. Continually yeah. trying to dehumanize Cloud. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, Sheck from New Zealand writes it and says, Aerith's trial revealed why she was so ecstatic about the party's journey because it mirrored the promise that she, the mirrored the promise she and her mother made to each other. Yeah. An adventure far, far away accompanied by her mother's materia, which is her spirit. It makes you appreciate how truly special our globe, uh, how truly special, special our globe crossing voyage has been. Ah. They're trying to make puns that are in it. This is yeah. this is too much. It's a stretch, but I, I like appreciate it. that. I appreciate that. Yeah, that's that's a great point. That's you know the the promise that her dying mother made to her to like keep her mind off of her dying yeah. was it'll be an adventure. We can do that. And so yeah, it really uh, yeah really hits hard when she's like you know loves the journey that the yeah. party's on. Uh, speaking yeah. of hit hard, I loved after the section the music just drops. And you go through a couple fights, and it's just kind of like, oh, just kind of ambient music. And it's such a good way to let you sit in that feeling because yeah. everyone's uneasy about Cloud being like, we got to forge ahead. And he's trying to make it seem like, it's vengeance. I need to get Sephiroth. But it's like, you're clearly being compelled by some other forces. Well, right, also, and it, yeah, and, and just the contrast between his experience versus their experience, and, yeah. and just like how tone deaf he ultimately kind of becomes as everybody's kind of processing through what they've experienced. Mm-hmm. And it's just, it does kind of like, there's a chasm between it, which makes you. I, at point, it's just like, oh, I like Cloud, but Cloud sucks. Yeah, you know, I mean, like that's the point that I got. It's like this, yeah, yeah. He's supposed to suck. He's. This is yeah. the point where he's supposed to suck. Yes. Yes. Yep. And like yeah. his friends will make him You're suck right. less, hopefully down the line. <laughs> that's the hope. Yeah. Friendship. Yeah. So, are we ready for when Sephiroth shows up here? Yeah, we should probably do that. Yeah. Okay. So he shows up and he's like, you know, he starts talking like a true Final Fantasy endgame villain. Mm, where yes, he's he like is. talking uh, cosmic and like, space and things you don't okay. understand. But it, these, this is really important for understanding what's factually, go, factually yes, going on in exactly. this game. What, Sephiroth's the only person who's <laughs> telling us what's going on. Yeah, <laughs> that's true, and I appreciate that about him. <laughs> Thank you, Sephiroth. <laughs> yes, when he's like, my domain shall encompass worlds unbound by fate and histories unwritten. Yes. So, like, this Sephiroth mm-hmm, yeah. is after all of existence. So he's into the idea of the reunion being the meeting of the different worlds, all yep. the different multiverses, universes rather, that exist in Final Fantasy VII now. He wants them all to join together and then he will lord over all of them and they'll all be united as one. But this is also the part where I get really confused. Oh, okay. That's the part where you get really confused. Because <laughs> holy... I, <laughs> up until then, you were just right sad. Well, just like, which what? part are we talking about specifically? Uh, so this is the part. He comes in and he has a speech about like, yeah, these errant worlds all shall be one again. And I love that 
I love Aerith stepping up in this moment, just being like, I got this, basically. Like, I, like it's so yeah. rare, oh, I think, okay. in the original yeah. game, even for Aerith to be like, Sephiroth, we all know it's you and I. Like, yeah. can, I, can I just talk to you right now? Yeah. And yeah. that's basically what this scene is. Maybe. Where, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> God damn it. Like, uh, no, but yeah, Aerith just being like, you're talking about the reunion. This yeah. is what the reunion is, yeah. is yes. the merging of different worlds here. Exactly. And Sephiroth, like, talks like he's going to be more become more powerful than the narrative. Like, mm-hmm. like, oh, like cool. if we don't beat this game, he's coming into our world. And <laughs> Which is, mm-hmm. that's the best case scenario. Yeah. But so this is the idea is he's like, I'm going to unify all these different worlds. Yeah. That's what the reunion is. And it'll be that way forever. And then the part that I'm still re- wrestling with a little bit, there's a thousand things I'm wrestling with, is okay. Aerith being like, there is no such thing as forever. Like, you know, she's like, it's good that we're returning to the live stream. And it seems oh, like Sephiroth, be. because of the Genova alien aspect, cannot return to the live stream. He's very much in that camp of like, there's no peace for me. Therefore, we need to unify here. And Aerith being much more like, no, it's a cycle, bro. We need to be in the cycle of dying mm. and letting new things grow from us. That's how it works. And he's denying that completely. So he says like, oh, there will be. There will be a forever yeah. once I get control of all these universes. Mm. Yep. Because your stupid planet won't let me in. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. It's a real uh, Ultimecia line from him. No. It's time compression. No, my good, my good Lord. Ultimecia reference. Um, the, but here's the part that I'm struggling with, Ross, is so Sephiroth wants to unify the timelines. Yeah. To lord over all of them. Ronnie, there are multiple dimensions there, here. You yes, okay, multiple dimensions, and yes. he wants to unify the time. He wants yeah. to unify the timelines. Yeah, there's the Zack and Zack one. But, but there's the Zack and Cody things. one. Okay, but yeah. hang on. Sweet line. Hang on. <laughs> There are multiple timelines that we are dealing with, but we're also recognizing or acknowledging that there are infinite timelines or there are infinite universes. It seems like, like there's, it, it, they haven't said infinite, but they've said it's more than two. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. it seems yeah, like he makes some mention between like some are resilient and some. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Some yeah. just fade away or yeah. whatever. But they yeah. all fade away. But yeah. what if they did? Yeah. And I think the point of him compressing them all into one is that then he is in control of all of them. And mm. if there are things that exist elsewhere, He's not always Which person. is where Aerith can hide. Yes. Um, but oh, I, I, yeah. um, if you remember Remake, <laughs> the goal was he wanted you to destroy fate, which was what caused there to be so many different timelines all yeah. of a sudden. Yeah. And so it's so weird for him to be like, come on, destroy fate, join me, Cloud, destroy fate. And then you do it, and then he's like, now, what if I unified it? So there was only one timeline. It's like, didn't we have this? Like, that's the part that I can't I think we're overthinking this now. (laughs) No, seriously, like, this is the point where we're thinking, because even Sephiroth, he doesn't say destroy fate, he says, like, defy something else. He uses a different word. I'm Defy trying to destiny or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. He, and which is like it's the same thing, but like you know, but yeah. fate is now whispers, and so that is like a concrete concept in the world now. So then it gets really confusing, and then you go down the rabbit hole. Yeah, really but confusing. You probably has, go through the rabbit hole, but I would also imagine that they've been meticulous in their choice of words to create uh, this moment. I, they had a lot of time to go through this. I, the old, yeah, I do feel like there's already moments of just like. I mean, Kingdom this, Hearts. Kingdom Hearts. How meticulous was Kingdom we don't Hearts? Speak <laughs> those words. We don't speak Sorry. those words. We don't speak those on this I, podcast. What, Things got a little too close to Kingdom Hearts at times. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, what in the Tetsuya mode? No, no more they learned though. Here. <laughs> yeah, so Sephiroth, since remake. <laughs> He has co-opted. <laughs> what did you? <laughs> he spilled beer on my arm. <laughs> he did it. He's co-opted some whispers to serve him, right? right. Because somebody lays it out it. as we get towards the end that there are three different whispers. There's the oh, there's three. Yeah, there's oh, the normal, that. just black cloaky yeah. ones. Yeah. That those are fate. There are the white ones that are the planet, and then there's the Sephiroth ones, which are the black ones with the purple or the long or gray hair. Yes. Oh, huh. <laughs> She, the guy came from the sea. I didn't even know that. Sam long way here. Sephiroth took the whispers to the salon, gave so, them the L'Oreal treatment. Which <laughs> I have some reference later on with the with the white whispers of like, what are these guys? Like, yeah, I don't Tifa's know, but they really like, hate us. Yeah. Like, why would why would the okay. planet Wait, but whispers Tifa's hate like, them? I think they're fighting for us. I think they're fighting for the planet. She said that earlier, but now she they said, said that earlier yeah. because they were still on their way to the black materia and the planet is yeah. trying to stop yeah. anyone from getting to the black materia. Yeah, okay. But that's, at that point, when they talk about the White Whispers hating them, that's in Chapter 14, where they is. already have the Black Materia in their back pocket. Okay. Yeah. Well, and then, that, then what st- I wonder... It's because they have it, then, maybe? It could, it okay, could, be, it could also be that we just don't know Aerith's why. Like, it's a fake. This is my big question is... I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Because <laughs> Aerith says it's a fake. We don't know if she does that to fake out 
to I get Cloud to I think not. that was a stupid Cloud trick. But yeah. what? But and he fell for she it. does like. There's like this w. whole thing of like she goes back and she swaps out the white materia to yes. get the white materia in that world. So what if she did something with the black materia? Too? It could be the black materia. I'm trying to. It is even in the original. It's such a silly game of like I'm giving it to you, Sephiroth, and Sephiroth says give me the black materia, and then the black materia has him again, and then he gives it to Sephiroth again. It's like it's this weird loop that happens a couple times even by the end then when it's revealed that cloud has the black material puts it in the sword which is an incredible little moment yeah um it's still like okay how did he get that again because he gave it away to sephiroth sephiroth then flew into the sky at the end of chapter 13 it exploded into a bunch of the whispers then he had it again and then he gave give it to it cloud, cloud again <laughs> had to give it to him i didn't understand that part and odd. so you're saying that's something from the original game no i think just like the who, who's passing the black materia to who? Because the whole, what you know, I guess we won't get into this, but the whole idea of like Sephiroth reiterating, bring me the black materia cloud. It's like, we've seen cloud hand it to you multiple times, but it's like, but it's not really happening. Uh, right. So that's the tricky part. It's like, you know, what does, what does cloud handing the black materia to Sephiroth mean? And I feel like we haven't really seen that yet in a big way. And are that's, you saying there is an answer to that? Yes. Perhaps yes. that we will see. Okay. I think so. I don't. In, in the original game. Come on. Yeah. You no, 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 yes. Come on, man. Yes, I you do. Remember? Yes. And, yes. And this is the point where, like, as you were having that conversation, I thought to myself, like, it's just going to take me a few more times to watch this yeah. to really start, like, formulating my own, own impressions because it's like, ah, yeah, I watched this yesterday. And that's a good point. Like, I hadn't thought about it. Like, why does Cloud have it at the end? Because okay. I, I think... I think I gotta track it again. There's that little detail that I haven't. I tracked there's it a couple an times for and sure, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's and then there's the other question him. is, I mean, this I think this happens in the original too that the white material rolls off, right? Yep. Into the water. Yep. Yes, but then the weird difference here is then the Aerith from the there's other the dimension hands it back, and then that's my cloud, favorite part. Cloud ends with empty material and black material. Right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And that's my favorite part is when then. Sephiroth, when Cloud returns to the main timeline, main dimension, if you will, and then Sephiroth His sees dimension. that he has the white materia, and Sephiroth's like, that's he's like, that doesn't belong. He's like, poor form, dude. Yeah, poor, poor form. form. <laughs> the, says the master of fair play. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Aerith, we're playing a sweet game, man. <laughs> yes. So, uh, just to get back on our own timeline a yeah, little we bit. Yeah, shouldn't, we shouldn't skip the demon wall. Demon wall. Demon wall rules. I was so glad demon to see him come now, back. Hang on. How did you know he was going to say demon wall? He there? looks like a demon wall kind of guy. Yep. That's true. You see my face? It's <laughs> over in this. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, I, I thought this was a weird fight. I loved it. I loved having the two of them. I loved that it was like weirdly claustrophobic. Yeah. It was like, oh yeah. god, I'm like bouncing Just off like these Star demon Wars. Yeah. Yes. Oh, exactly. It was close in on us. That's true. Yep. Wish uh, Sonon was there with his big stick to put in between <laughs> yeah, them. Yeah. Could have really helped out. Uh, did you like the, the demon wall fight? I was so delighted to see him come back. It was good. It was great. It was, yeah. it was wonderful. Yeah. Yep. Um, that entire like collapsing of the temple sequence. It's so Indiana Jones, but I yeah. really, I loved it. It's so silly yeah. that Kate Sith The little charging in that I love in that is that they're like, what if we put it back on the thing? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm funny. like, that's what I, that would have so been my funny. first move. So so funny. Funny. Around, you're like, okay. ah, crap, damn it. This is, there's not a single smart person in this party. Like, there's not a single person with more than two brain cells. <laughs> yeah. You gotta but try it. Very good intention. Yeah, we yeah. thought Red was that person. It turns out he's a 15-year-old goober. Didn't know what the hell's going on. <laughs> he's like, I don't know. <laughs> Just put it back. Just put it back. <laughs> that's that's right. uh, let's see. Uh, Garrett Hullfish says, <laughs> as the temple begins to crumble and Kaseth begins running to the rescue, you, why does he choose to run with the Moogle? At this point, we all know that he's about four times faster without slow. the Moogle. Yeah. Oh, he runs. Yeah, with yeah. He just he runs with. It's like if he's just rolling his little cat ball, that would be so much better. Yeah. For being able to actually catch up with this instead of just being like, well, I tried. Um, but he eventually does, and he says, "Hey guys, this is on me. Uh, <laughs> this one, it's th on yeah, me." Yeah. Anna, we were talking about this in Slack a little bit, but like. I am still so confused. It, so now it's just like, well, you're a robot. So you're we talking to talking about Fama? Because she was asking, can I talk about this thing about Kate Smith? And I was like, I don't think so. No, I, I don't, don't think I so can. Confusing. I'm, the thing I wanted to say about the thing I asked about was like a very <laughs> shallow observation, which is that X redacted is living redacted best meow meow life. <laughs> so I'm like not. But it is weird that they're like, we all know he's well, a robot. It's just... It's teased, though, actually. No, it is. It, it, yeah. A lot of stuff is teased. Yeah. It's, it's very on the nose if you've been paying attention. I yeah. feel like you know what's going on with Kate Sith. But, like, it, it is such a silly idea of, like, 
okay, so we're we're all fully aware that he's a robot and that yeah. he's somebody in Shinra because yeah. you know they even yeah. they reference it multiple times yeah. even during this section of like, yeah. oh, you're just sitting back when yeah. you get an office like, oh, upgrade because yep. you yep. sacrificed uh, yep. the. the yeah, and then he's like, oh, stuff. hollow yeah. one, and then you're just like, yeah. And yet they're yes. so worried about him when he's going to get crushed by that thing. Right. I and know. somebody says, I feel terrible about the way we treated Kate Sith. Like, why? He still betrayed you. And I love that Kate Sith says, this beautiful body is but one of many. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, but it still, it was, it was still this person <laughs> in Shinra. Like, this, you know, presumably the Shinra building that was just going... <laughs> confusing. Do you not play video games like that? Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, I was so confused. Like, they just have to hold that platform up and then mm -hmm. all will be okay. Um, so Anthony L says, was the Kate Sith death scene supposed to be an emotional moment? No. I couldn't stop laughing during it because of how absurd it was, especially knowing that he was just going to come back moments later. Yeah. The biggest laugh of the game for me was when that giant piece of rock slammed down on the Moogle. <laughs> I, I, no. Look, that actually... <laughs> oh, Ronnie, no. Ronnie, say it. Freaking say it. <laughs> what? That actually kind of hit me. Oh. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, honestly, look, yeah. controversial take. Kate Sith's death hit me more than Eris. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, all, right, all right. All right. No, all right. No, no, I don't thing. agree with no, that. No, no, no. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. You there cried, is certain. You no, left, no, 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 no. I. <laughs> no, I God, I can't believe I'm going to say this, but I agree with that because 100%. there is certainty around. Yes. Like, there's a moment in which you kind of realize what's happening. I think mm. the biggest sin that happened during Aerith's death is there isn't it's this unclear. moment that allowed you to process what happened. Okay. They're always okay. like, but it's maybe it didn't. I, know. I think so that's why. I know we're getting ahead of ourselves now. That's what I hated about it at the onset. But now that's actually what I really like about it. Just, okay. There's, it's just, it's different in, in the original there's it's yeah. finality you yeah. know immediately yeah. what happened yeah. and it hits you like a yeah. ton of bricks yeah they knew uh, it's just like of course they knew that they're not going to do that this time around yeah but the the route they took it like it had i guess it hasn't sunk in for me in terms mm -hmm. of the significance of the route that they took yeah. would it would it been, have been different if you had seen blade through stomach yes. or yes. whatever yes. Yes. and they yes. did not show yes. that i think they should no. have done that it's, it's a mess yeah um but yeah. no specifically it was when the Moogle was like reaching out his little arm. Mm. Yep. Like that was like, that, that's and it. it. But we do like, love Moogles. Well, Moogles are really cute. They're cute. Yeah. They're super cute. Uh, yeah, really unless they're not going into their pen on time. <laughs> <laughs> that's not <laughs> <true. laughs> Little stinkers. Um, I thought it was really interesting throughout this whole section how, you know, we're talking about Aerith becoming the leader of the party. Yep. And there's so many sections where Cloud's losing it, hacking at a door, all this stuff. And everyone's just like, what is going on? Um, and then they have you control Aerith, even like escaping yes. the temple. That you're controlling Aerith, huge, to, yeah. I think, to further separate you from like uh, Cloud, like Cloud is, is he's not. off, uh, he's out of his mind here. We don't yes. know what's going on. Um, and it's they're leaning so much more into the my precious Lord of the Rings thing here with the black material. It's interesting <laughs> when he was chasing after <laughs> Aerith, that, going, eh, like he's, he's I, going, I, okay. So I actually Aerith. laughed in that scene. I actually laughed because it's so yeah, goofy. It, it's, it's goofy, yeah. <laughs> but I it did love it. I mean, just because I love the shining, no, it's, it's really very like, yeah, yeah, yeah. give me the bag. Yeah, it's like, it's <laughs> like exactly that's what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you guys try <laughs> moving backwards with that? The animation yeah, is really yeah. good with him being disturbing. It's like very dull, like, yeah, it is so funny. Like, the uh. Look, this, the production values in this game are absurd, but like running on those weird tendril things, the black material yeah. spots, like everyone's a little bit floaty and goofy. It's like something's not quite mapping up with uh, how they built this out for the geography they're running around. Yeah. Um, but uh, that's it. And then Aerith says, hey, you know what? Whatever happens, I'm here for you. And she gives them the black materia and then oh, yeah. Sephiroth slashes it. They fall into the abyss. End of chapter. What a good friend. <laughs> what a dear friend. What a good friend. But there's I mean, that, that moment here. where, like, there's something very precious about the, you know, that moment where he gives the black material to Sephiroth and then Cloud kind of comes back into himself and realizes mm -hmm. that, like, Aerith is there. Because yeah. he's, he and remembers the whispers. Yeah, and, like, yeah. and, and Aerith then, like, has the realization that she's speaking with Cloud and how happy she becomes yeah. at that moment. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. great. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Uh, Ross, anything else before we go into chapter 14? I'm ready for chapter 14, and I'm ready for someone to explain to me what happened. Oh, yeah, we're, we're completely on <laughs> If you don't know, we're screwed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ross, you're the most down-to-earth person here. We're all out of our minds. Um, it, I think maybe this is jumping to too much of a conclusion here, but chapter 14, there is something cool about the entire game 
Cloud doesn't know what's real and what's not. Mm -hmm. And there's something interesting about ending the game and we're uh, okay. suddenly like, what ben, is real? We're ben. less clear about reality than Cloud ben. is. Very good. But here's my thing is if you haven't played the original game, is that something that's coming through? That I think, think so. That's I think, think so. there's enough throughout this game of being like Cloud is out of his goddamn mind <laughs> on every yeah. front. And because also like putting that in the like the viewer's perspective. Yeah. Sorry, I interrupt you. But. Oh no, 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 no. Go ahead. I don't I don't know. Well, I I just I think like the moment that really sticks out to me is just like as he's like kind of like holding Aerith, Aerith and like yeah. Aerith like yeah. looks up, yeah. smiles at her, like yeah. or at yeah. him and yeah. <laughs> It's just very con like that. It's very confusing, and yeah. and now I'm in this position. Think, like, wait, what just happened? Yeah. Did that happen? Oh no! And I agree with that, but I think the thing that's a little bit difficult. Like, I just I don't like so far. We're like, oh, he forgot his friend Zach, and that's kind of like all that we have. Like, fresh than, eyes. Like, I don't know. I think Tifa being like, nope, that's that not, didn't happen. Yeah, uh, yeah. But she was pretty explicit in in a couple ways uh, throughout the game. Yeah, uh, but no, I, I hear you. Um, but that's that's one read on everything that happens here. But should we walk through it a little bit chronologically? Yeah. Sure. yeah. yeah. Um, so they wake up in the in the Zach timeline, basically, right? or what? Not I, necessarily. Let's okay. skip that though. <laughs> no, Wait, it's, it's not. Yeah. The, it's, it's, I mean, yeah. No, no, no. This is because they see a dog, like the little dog toy mm -hmm. that is available when you're at the shop. Yeah. Is a different dog from yeah. the one that was in Zach's dimension. So they're in technically oh. another dimension other than Zach's timeline. Oh I my didn't God. even get yeah, that. I, I mean, this yeah. is the fun thing about this section so is this when they're is jumping. The third world. There's yeah. more than three because they keep then Cause, showing. Because with Biggs's bag of chips has a different. It's a one different on. dog, and then Johnny runs by the church, and he's yeah. carrying a different dog. A different one. So oh, every every I, I it's got, just rapid firing. Through yeah, that. I got the feeling or i got the idea that zach himself is going in a bunch of different timelines yeah and he kind of has that ability to do that but i'm confused about yeah how but this first one where Aerith and cloud wake up she says it's her dream mm -hmm. yeah because zach or cloud's just like what is going on she's like really don't worry about it she's like call it a homecoming winky winky which was sephiroth was calling this thing or yeah. a dream right yeah like, just call yeah. it like a dream let's just go out and have a good time yep and it is a separate dimension timeline that Aerith has created to hide out in yeah. to yeah, created or just as hiding I think in? just kind of I think hiding out because yeah, Sephiroth thinks yeah. she's like hey, here you are type yes. of thing yes. um, but, which is so disturbing you know to like hear him be like I found you you know it's well it's this, interesting later on then in the in the forest outside of the um, city of the ancients then when Cloud's like Sephiroth is here. He's like watching us, and I was like, "Yeah, I know. Just get used to it." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, like, just forget about that for now. Yeah. <laughs> um, but again, another thing that got me way more emotional than Aerith's death question mark um, was <laughs> I loved all the shopkeepers in this are just like it's the end of the world. Everything's free. Yeah, you can take one, mm -hmm. but yeah. have a good time. And the shopkeeper, he goes like after you know they're on the cute date and they you know, they grab their item the the pin for the hair or whatever and he just goes i'll miss these moments thank you both yeah. Like, yeah. this shopkeeper got me welled up yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, that is an unbelievable accomplishment mm. i don't know who the mm. hell this is even though all the items in the shop the resolution look like stamps crap <laughs> yes yeah and so everybody in this reality has accepted that they're going yep. to die yeah because that's yeah. what Which sephiroth is, he mentions that right yeah yeah yeah, yeah, there's a big tear in the sky. Made, yeah. They know that it's all it's all yeah. collapsing. Yep. Like these have a short runway compared to other ones. Yeah. And, and Aerith is using this little bit of time in the pocket dimension to have some quality time with Cloud. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes. And she's like, hey, you're going to give me your first gift or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. yep. Which is also Crisis Core reference. There we go. Oh. There we go. Um, and then it just starts jumping between all these different... Dimensions we get to see. I mean, there's a big moment of Zach like choosing. Okay, do I go to Reactor Six or mm -hmm. do I go bring Cloud yeah. to see okay, if Hojo part, can help that him? That part confused me. What? So what he showed. So there? It, that was just showing that there's Biggs? a bunch of different. Yeah. That, well, it's showing that did there's he choose a Hojo or did it push him towards Biggs? No, 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 no. He chose going to Hojo to save Cloud. Yes. yes. Then the next it time we see Zach, it's him with Biggs showing yeah. this is yet another timeline. Yeah. Yes. There was oh, him with Biggs. Oh, this is way more like, confusing yeah. than I realized. Yes. Because then I was just showing that like, it's a clear choice. He chose one. Yeah. Now we're showing you the other because it's game on for all these timelines. So Zach yeah. exists in all the timelines. Or I, I all think that, just oh, Zach he's is done different across Zach's. Them. Except yeah. the main line. It's the main Schrodinger timeline. Zach. Oh yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that's not yeah. bad. That's this not bad. This is the only the main timeline's the only timeline that, that Zach's not in. 
so far, but there is like it seemed pretty like there's a line from Cisne earlier in Gungaga yeah. where she's like, I feel like Zach's still around. I feel like one day I'm gonna wake up I and mean, he's gonna be like, at it's the like at life the stream fence. though. Sure. It's like Aerith gone. Type, yeah, don't you think? I think so. Um, but uh, that Biggs shot where it's like Biggs dropping the bomb and it barely goes off, and then Biggs just gets shot up, and it's like, what is this what? brutal scene? Yeah, and then yeah. Zach's just like. Well, fate's always playing a prank on me. I guess the joke's on me. See ya! And then he, like, jumps off <laughs> the edge. The, yeah. the yeah. joke's on us because w- why save Biggs and kill him like that? Sorry, so that, this is where I start to get genuinely confused. Well, I've because, thought but about I think that, that was for a while, too. different version, yeah. but yeah. Yeah, so Biggs was saved to have that conversation with Zach that we talked about in the last one, that, which is what inspires Zach to be like, oh, I Can the choices I make matter. Cha- yeah. I have to try to move forward and yeah. fix things. Yeah. And then Zach, no, not Zach, Biggs, uh, he chooses to destroy rather than create, right? Mm. Or mm-hmm. rather save somebody, which is like a classic, okay, now that means you have to die type mm-hmm. of thing. Mm. Yeah, so I thought it was interesting, too, that, like, you know, Biggs and Zach had talked earlier about, like, someone saved us. Someone pulled the, us out of this dimension. Mm-hmm. And there's mm-hmm. a moment, too, where Zach then is talking to Sephiroth and he says, like, it was you, wasn't it? Like, it was Sephiroth all along. Like, he explicitly says that to Sephiroth. So it's, mm-hmm. we, it's no longer an era theory plucking people out of the different timelines. It mm-hmm. is clearly Sephiroth that chose to save Biggs. If you, if you believe okay. that one line from Zach that he okay. throws out there what? being like, it was you, Sephiroth, it was you all along. I mean, I do uh, trust Zach the most out of any of these characters and narrators. <laughs> but he's just such a dweeb. Uh. <laughs> yeah, but he has a memory that's more or less intact. Sure, <laughs> sure. Um, it's just, it's all <laughs> over is, the place. He is kind of a himbo, though. Uh, so it's like, <laughs> is it worth it to remove all meaning from the universe of Final Fantasy VII that we love just so that we can see, isn't it kind of fun, the fact that there's all these different timelines and it's kind of, it is fun to kind of rapid fire between them that this sequence is. Yeah. It's something. They don't, the don't, inherent it's a, downside yeah. of multiverse storytelling. Right? It, to yeah. me, it's yeah, just like, else. yeah, I, I, like, I just can't wrap my head around the significance of it all yet. And so, yeah, yeah, it all kind of like my feelings about it really depends on how they wrap this up. Yeah. So is Sephiroth showing up in every <laughs> timeline to kill Aerith? <laughs> I don't know. He's what? he's certainly because he in shows the, up at the church. He's like, "Here's where you've been hiding." I'm not after you, Zach. Uh, right. Hang on. Why are you just laughing? I, th- I just because I imagine you playing this last night by yourself and just being like, "Nope." No, <laughs> <laughs> no I thing. was quite invested. I, I like it's because just, they might wrap it up, but no promise is a way to journey's end. I like, just, <laughs> it might just be the same. I, I, it might just be more of the same. They can't. I've but never. No, but I, that's what I thought about going into this game, though. That's the thing. No. And they did. They did, but it's the second part, you know? And so they want to string us along. They want yeah. to confuse us to some extent, keep us talking. And yep. it's certainly enough here that's and, mind-boggling. You have and to I, bring people low at the end of the second act. Right, yep. yeah. And, and I will admit that, like, I think I kind of glaze over in yes. multiverse storytelling because I don't know if I've if there is a multiverse story that I've really connected with. I can't think of any. but and, Star I'm, Trek. No. Well, into the know. Spider-Verse? Oh, Into the Spider-Verse. <laughs> no. Your own life? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, so no, I, I, like, I hear you. I, it, it could be... No, I, you're you're certainly not alone. It was no, the number one I'm, comment. I'm, you know? I'm also with you. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. it's it's pretty rough. Um, so, so Sephiroth shows up at that church. He's like, this is where you've been hiding in a world that has accepted its fate just as you must. Yeah. Which is the clearest signpost yeah. saying... You, you don't die. have to accept your fate. You can do something to change something. And I think that is where it ends up going in some ways. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm still, I'm still struggling with a lot of this stuff. Um, but this is, yeah. So you're in the church. Aerith says, Hey, whatever happens, don't blame yourself. She gives cloud a sweet hug after she says, I like, like you, but you know, yeah. uh, and then psh, see you. And then cloud gets, sent that was a in. very cool moment though. It was that cool. Just, yeah. Uh, and then Cloud is in the white abyss, kind of the world between worlds, I yeah. guess, is the is the cleanest read on that, that mm-hmm. Zach has spent a lot of time and we keep seeing him pop up in here. Yep. Um, is then, that when they did the, like, the kind of wormhole sequence? And this is, Sephiroth oh, then yeah. flies and, with them and, and Sephiroth you see says, all that floating says stuff. behold the nature of true reality. The planet encompasses a multitude of worlds ever mm-hmm. unfolding and then shows them all the stuff and it shows like the end of remake with that second seconds, seven seconds left, that yep. whole yep. sequence, yes. all that fun stuff. Which I and, totally forgot about until I saw that. It's like, oh yeah. Yeah. And I, it, what has me excited is like, I love the big 
big picture seven stuff of Aerith vs. Sephiroth. And the fact Absolutely. that like yes. so much of that <laughs> battle here is happening now in a psychological space inside of Cloud's mind and how he's perceiving these alternate timelines. Like that's that's a fun idea, is like both Sephiroth and Aerith kind of like a tug of war over Cloud's mind within yes. the timelines. Like that's something that's, that's a cool, cool idea. I like Other that. question. You just don't feel it when you play it. What's, what's <laughs> like, but I like talking about it. Tifa's yeah. role in that tug of war too because like Sephiroth seems really pissed Sadness. at Tifa early on where like get out of here. Like don't listen to Tifa. Like <laughs> like is, is she going to be is something about Tifa going to disrupt all of this like eternal battle so to speak. Mm. Like I, I think there's it's a notable thing to look at Tifa's overall just like affect and response to all of this compared to everybody else she was sad mm-hmm. very very sad mm-hmm. like at in a end. way that was so like she it, it looked worst. like she just saw she looked so isolated yeah even in her own pain like it didn't seem like anybody like even Barrett who has been like obviously like has a quite a, a strong bond it just seemed like she has been isolating from everybody else and it just, I don't know, in a way, it just, like, it means something more to me that, like, she's not spoken her piece about how she's feeling about what just happened. Yeah. yeah. I, I think something, too, like, that I really felt in, like, the ending was I wanted nothing more than to just, like, see Spirit, Aerith, whatever we want to call her, like, touch Tifa Ugh, in yeah. that moment. Right, right. Because, like, Nanaki feels her presence, and it's yeah. just, like, oh, my gosh, because... I don't know. No, I, I'm totally with you. Tifa and Aerith yeah. had a bond. And that's the thing. Yeah. Going back and looking at the ending again, like that oh, was the part that hits the hardest is Tifa being mm-hmm. so sad. Because imagine being Tifa and then she looks at Cloud and Cloud's just like, well, let's go. He's like and literally he's like smiling, in like some like, sort of yeah. altered mind state. Yeah. 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 That's Alone. the biggest yeah. like, tonal thing. He's like, the thing. sky looks weird and Barrett's like, cool. <laughs> 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 Promise me you won't look up. Promise me you won't look up. <laughs> yeah, okay, man. Like, <laughs> um, so then we come out of the dream and you see like a flash of them hauling cloud and now we're in uh the forest outside of the city of the ancients and they're like we lost Aerith Aerith in the fog yeah Yeah. we don't know where she is Mm -hmm. uh it's a real mess i I love too that then when you're walking to the city everyone apologizes yep everyone goes up and ties a little conversation with cloud and kate said talks to him and he gets to be like hey look i'm pissed at you but like i got bigger fish to fry right now yeah yeah, yeah, the funniest thing though is tifa being like hey if you feel weird or not like yourself please talk about your feelings (laughs) yes and i'm like girl we are way behind beyond that (laughs) right right. Right. we are so behind he has like Sephiroth mind problems. Yeah, like. yeah. and not only really that. Two seconds later, Sephiroth is like, "Hello, Cloud." <laughs> and he's, he's like, like <laughs> 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 "It's like, what did she just say?" Yeah, because yeah, because Cloud doesn't skip a beat. He's like, "Oh yeah, absolutely." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can I hold your hand again? <laughs> can, I, can, I, can, I, can, I, can I share the, the funniest thing that I've seen about this game? It's just people noting like how like Cloud's friends treat him. Like they make fun of him and like push him a lot. Like they're really aggressive with him. And then Seth Roth just like grabs his hand gently <laughs> and like whispers in his ear. People are like, maybe like Cloud doesn't like being bullied. By <laughs> That's the whole thing. Yeah, yeah just whispers. Whispers are his love language. Yeah. Yes. That's why he's always. That's why he can see the whispers everywhere. Yes. <laughs> we got it, guys. Uh, I do like the conversation that Cloud has with Barrett, where he just straight up is like, "I got sent to another world." Yeah. Like, I don't want to yeah. hear yeah. There's about a, there's a lot like, of I don't want to know. <laughs> I'm with Barrett. Yeah. I, I had a moment where you get to like the city of the ancients, then, and there's like the vending machine there, and I was like. Is this going to be another city? Are there going to be like a bunch of um, people? Do I have, do I have oh. another five hours ahead of yeah, me? Yeah, exactly. Or like yeah. basically just run up the pathway. And it's so cool. I love that when you're walk, running up, you can hear Aerith mm, be like, yeah. hey, look, I'm not good at this prayer thing. Yeah. But like it's all so I want to do is keep my friends safe. Yeah. Like they mean yeah. so much to me. And the game is like double check your materia and then you don't check Kate's materia. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then yeah, this is this is something that if you could make a joke about this 10 years ago and people would be like, that's the dumbest thing I've ever but it's like nope they did it they they have quick time events in the Aerith death scene yes. <laughs> oh yeah so and they're not like L2. it was they're fine. not like legit yeah. quick time events right like if you yeah. didn't do it yeah. what if yeah, nothing what happened. if that's how you alter fate so oh, that would be interesting ooh yeah. yes so the whisper is trying to make Cloud kill Aerith yep I liked what? it a lot okay I guess I, we need to explain this too because I don't yeah. fully. And which color yeah, whispers were those? Those were the, the black ones, right? The black ones. Yeah. Yes. Were swirling around him to try to get him to do it. Yep. Okay. They're the ones oh, yes, forcing yeah, his yeah. blade yeah, up, down. you know? Yeah. Okay. And you're fighting against yeah. them. Sure. Yeah. 
and then he sees uh, the blade coming down. And yes. he's like, whoa. And he tries to... Th- that was like the biggest holy ass moment of the yes. game yeah. for me. Yes, because it's funny because, you know, Marlene talked about this moment. She's like, yeah, Cloud wasn't fast enough. He couldn't do it. Yep. Yeah. But then we... Ross, you tell me where I'm wrong. But then we, he was fast enough, but then we, he wasn't. Okay, this is the thing. Yes. Okay, yeah. the, okay. Yeah. tell me where I'm wrong. Tell me where I'm wrong. Like, blood on the ground. This is the, so, it, Cloud does deflect the Masamune. It doesn't stab Aerith. Yeah. Sword does not hit Aerith. Yeah. Then the camera jumps then, below ground to show the rest of the Masamune party in, looking in, up. In the gr- oh, then, yeah. Then, party, then yeah. the camera comes back up. Yeah. Masamune, bloodless. Yeah. Like, it worked. It's there. And then glitch. 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 Blood. bloody sword yep. off to the side blood pouring out and then it's yeah. everybody she's taking dead. it as gospel that she's dead and this is the part that like I just the, they the, here's I, I'm sure they're playing some larger game that I can imagine but I was just so frustrated with this because like we just had that whole sequence where it's like other dimension other dimension other dimension yep. another dimension another dimension <laughs> going through <laughs> as Scotch dimension. and Koch would say I think <laughs> um, as we're going through all these and it's just like teaching us that like okay this dimension means nothing this dimension means nothing so then having that mm. glitch and that moment there it's like okay well we're going to jump back because I know the main timeline Cloud blocked it but then it just sticks in this alternate timeline so the question Ross and I see your finger in the air is is it just the idea that Cloud did block it, but we jumped timelines, and now we're just in a timeline where he didn't block it, and now this is our new path forward. Stick with it. Because emotionally, it's like, wait, no, let's go back to the one where the good thing happened. And you just never do, and it just disconnects you so much emotionally. It sucks. Yeah. I don't think there's a separate timeline there. I think the glitch, the static, I think that is Cloud's delusion. Yeah. I uh, yeah. Okay, that yeah. Yeah. Think because he did it. That's what in the, yeah, in chapter one, like when, or chapter two, whenever he's telling the story, that's when we see the false story right that's so like he thinks he's yep. the hero and isn't that kind of referenced in the um gosh what's the name of the play i'm already forgetting like loveless yeah. and loveless like there's like the hero fails at first or something mm-hmm. i don't remember and so, so it's like yeah no, i just so want to he, he did try to block it i think yeah yes. and he thinks he succeeded yeah but he didn't when you see the actual thing he he's got like he's yeah. blocked on the top third of that sword and that thing is so huge that he Sephiroth still got Aerith with it. That's an interesting take. So uh, that, that Kevin is, L. writes in and says, shut up, Ronnie. Uh, Kevin L. writes in and says, Cloud almost instantly made up a story in his head to protect himself, just yep. like he did with Zack. Yep. Yeah. That's Which, what's happening I here. think, like, that portrayal of grief And Ronnie's dissecting it like, and digesting it. Actually really interesting. That's very good. Yeah. It's like yeah. he can't process this death. Yeah. That's, that's, that's very, 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 very good. And then very, very I good. also think this ties into what I think a lot of people are finding unsatisfying about this game yeah. and the ending is that Cloud has not progressed. He has not grown. He hasn't emotionally processed it. Past yeah. and th- where he was in chapter one. Yeah. yeah. That may, may, I don't know, maybe we'll see another game in which that happens. Yeah. Um, because like there is there is such an emphasis on like his emotional presentness too where it's like he glitches and cries in one and then he doesn't cry in the other and Sephiroth mentioned that yeah he Mm -hmm. didn't even cry for his friend and so did he did he cry for her then he did he would have right that's yeah yeah he he does does. yeah Yeah. okay but he keeps glitching between all those different versions if he died in the real one then he didn't remember crying so this is the real him is he's like in touch with his feelings like he cried like he does care Sephiroth doesn't have this control over him he doesn't realize it. He, he doesn't have his it. control over him, but also, like, it feels like emotionally he's going, he, like, he's moving further away. Yes, yeah, yep. Like, yeah, he's splitting yeah, even more. Definitely, Yes, and that's the other the other part about the ending is that Cloud is so cold at the end of yes. it, right? After yeah. After yep. we've gone Horrible through all these Tifa. things where Horrible he, Tifa. yes, where he has seemingly grown with uh, Barrett when he's like, we're here for you, man, I mean mm-hmm. it. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. you know, uh, mm-hmm. building relationships with They're the party all members. showing up for And him. he just resets. Yes, yeah. and he's just, he's back. He hasn't cleared that hurdle yet, and he's back there. He doesn't even tell Tifa, hey, you know, I'm still seeing Aerith here. Yeah. yeah. So I, I'm not arguing this is correct, but I thought, like, oh, is it a read here that based on the conversation from the NPC in Cosmo Canyon we talked about last episode about like oh even hopes and dreams can enter the live stream and maybe that can affect and make these new realities you know sure. and i thought like oh is cloud just wishing that Aerith was alive so hard that that creates a new branch a new timeline where mm-hmm. that is the case and that's or what we saw that a glimpse he just of wants there. to see himself as the hero he thinks he is and yeah. that feels that's more part that feels it, more yeah. on brand with like what we know about cloud and like his in a way it's like increasing hallucinations and delusions that he's experiencing 
because we, we that's not resolved but it seems to be changing in some way and i think that's part of the confusion i have can i interject with one funny thing that's on topic but not on topic you betcha we don't like jokes. It was like it was like World Mental Health Day and Square Enix shared a post with Cloud talking about his feelings. Really? And I'm like, this is like actually funny because you picked canonically like the character with like the worst mental Meth- problems. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. This is like very on brand. He's got room to grow. And it's just like a clip of all of them being like, you can talk about your feelings, Cloud. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's important to talk about your feelings. It's Stop like, murdering Shinra soldiers <laughs> and putting blood on your face, my Cloud. My man's pushed his girlfriend into a vat of toxic waste. <laughs> <laughs> Stop, uh, get some help. Yeah, I, a part of me doesn't mind the multiverse stuff getting so frustrating. I was more frustrated with just like the basic geography of the scene of like, it's wait, hard. the sword is bloody and it's over there, but she's over here. Like that, why not just show yeah. the sword mm-hmm. going through like in the original? I yeah. don't understand. Yeah. yeah. Do you I, think yeah. it has something to do with, the, I don't know. Do you think it has something to do with just like what they can get away with before making it um, a, yes. No. Mm. I, I don't know. Imagine. I like, Mm. I don't know. That's a great question. But that, would be, yeah. that would be such a huge deal. If you're like, yeah, we couldn't show the iconic thing because I, I do think ESRB. it creates unnecessary confusion by not just definitively yeah. showing. I think they could have done it without no blood too. Like yeah. there would have been ways. There, yeah. In the original, there's no blood. Like, yeah, yeah, clothing. You know. Um, and so then Sephiroth says, and so it begins a confluence of worlds and emotions. Yeah, it says loss, chief among them. It engulfs fleeting moments of joy, transforming them into rage, sadness, hatred. Never have I felt them so keenly. And, and this s- is what the Setra talk about, is how these yeah. emotions fuel Genova. That the, oh, Genova, okay. So, because Genova took on these faces, tricked mm-hmm. all these people, killed all these people, created, it, sowed the seeds of discontent, and then That's it fueled point. Genova. So now, like, Sephiroth's just, like, fueling Genova again. Uh, so, okay, yeah. I, yeah. I, That's so, what I think. No, I, I think that's oh, probably okay. right. Like, that idea of, okay, this is how it begins to get the confluence of worlds mm-hmm. with the reunion and that idea of Sephiroth being like, and it's not just the worlds, it's all emotions mm-hmm. and loss is the biggest one. So mm-hmm. if I can fuel all these emotions going to the same spot mm-hmm. for this reunion, mm-hmm. it'll be extra beneficial for me. But then mm-hmm. that ties into, I think, his obsession, which is really interesting with Cloud not having emotions mm-hmm. when his entire thing throughout mm-hmm. this whole experience has yeah. been like, hey, uh, I want all these emotions compiled together, loss, hatred, all this stuff here. Right and then now, every time I yeah. look at Cloud, he's a hollow puppet. This sucks. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, and just, was part of that priming for this moment. I don't know. I don't know. Um, and then Aerith is technically still alive here, yeah, even in the death barely, dimension, because yeah. she has her eyes open, and then Cloud just looks at her and he goes, I got this. And then, yes. she, and then she dies. <laughs> yeah. Because we have ultimate faith in Anna. Don't worry. <laughs> we, Cloud is just, uh, he's good to go. Um, and then <sighs> the weird glitching, all this stuff. So this is, I was just so frustrated about that idea of like, even if they showed yeah. Sephiroth stabbing her and then it glitched, showed cloud blocking. And but I think, like, go I back, think, you're right, think, show it. But show they, it, they, yeah. They, yeah. Yeah, they definitely wanted to tease the player like me who thought, oh, all these hints are all adding up. I can do this. Yeah. I can save Aerith. So oh, they sure. wanted yeah. to make you think you had done it. I, and there. I like that. I yeah. think that's a very cool thing to do. Yeah. As long as you clearly communicate that you were sharing in Cloud's delusion at that moment. Yes. I think that would have been really cool. And they could have even showed exactly yeah. what you said by by just like showing from Tifa's perspective. What did Tifa just see yeah. happen mm-hmm. versus what did Cloud actually think that he experienced? But they don't yeah. want clarity yes. in this no, moment. No, they want to tease you. And it's, it's never that's been true. a game about reliable narrators. Yeah. <laughs> right. <That's true. laughs> yeah. But it's, it... I, I don't know what we're talking about. Or this is kind of what I was trying to say earlier. Is like Cloud's level of delusion, whatever is going on with his memory, kind of unclear still. And so, like, I, I don't know. Yeah. It, it's, and it's like worlds, multiple worlds on top of delusion, is a lot in rapid succession. It, it is rough. And like, I can it take just, them one at a time. <laughs> it, it, this entire section, it just like, I was a little bit shaking my head, just being like, you guys, like, you, you took this iconic sad moment. And you stripped it of almost all emotion, and that's just where the overthinking, overproducing, like, what are you guys doing? Like, to the point that then later on in the final fight sequence, when Aerith is, like, coming through the portal to heal you and fight mm-hmm. alongside you with Sephiroth, like, this needs to be the portal sequence from Endgame. And it's just not, because I don't know what any of this crap is. Like, like mm-hmm. they're, they're framing it cinematically, like, yeah. she's returning. Like, I don't know where she is, who she is, what this is. I have no <laughs> yeah. reference for why this 
should be an important thing. I mm. feel nothing mm. throughout this entire last chunk. Oh, mm-hmm. that's too bad because I was in the same, kind <laughs> of in the hollow, same boat, Ross. but her black panthering through that portal that got still you. got me and Aerith has joined the party. Yeah. Oh, okay. thing. I was right. like, All yes. Right. You know yeah. If it's working there, then I guess mission accomplished. But I was just too lost. Like, yeah. What do you want me to be feeling mm. right now? Like, it's just no mm. sense of what this is. Like, and <laughs> it's just so wild then to have Sephiroth do his whole thing about confluence of worlds and emotions and then basically just like, the world basically shifts and then you're fighting Genova and it's like what what is happening and then all those fights are also epic and so fun I really love all those fights but they felt like Smash Brothers fights of just like mm. you're going through the campaign of Smash Brothers you're the stage you're the stage you're the stage I do love the feeling I get when I rewatch the trailers of introducing Sephiroth to Smash Brothers like that was very iconic yes I thought that I think what I was hoping for and here's the thing is it's like I feel like what I'm about to say is it's like, well, it's so detached from what the experience was, but like what I was ultimately starting to anticipate is like playing with the, the idea and the, like the pre the preconceived notions of what a person that has played the original game is coming into. And it's just like, are you really going to change this fate? The thing that yes. you may have wanted to for the past 20 years, is this actually going to happen? And playing with that is just like, did you really? Did you? You may have. No, you didn't. And that, I think, is like such a super incredible, like powerful moment. I think where my frustration is, is because that was unclear, it feels like I could have experienced the same Aerith death that I experienced 20 years ago but I didn't because of this confusion. Like it was cheapened. Yep. yep. Yeah. yeah. And and that to me feels like, yeah. and it could be that, you know, it's just like they're playing 4D chess mm-hmm. and, and, and like it's all for a reason, but it felt like such a missed opportunity that had to be an intentional missed opportunity. They knew what they were doing. So I think, but so the, why? The reason is they want to string this along Long for part more. three. They yeah. want to have the push and pull and have Cloud even have more epiphanies in part three, it, it, you know, of him being like, oh, I now need to reckon with multiple things from my past. And one of them is now absorbing Eris death. And people in the chat are like, yeah, they're going to show the actual sword going through and all that stuff, probably in a flashback. Okay. Um, the equivalent of like the trials, how you get to see kind of like bits that you didn't see before of just seeing now Cloud can reckon with what's going yeah. on. Another thing, I think that the impact of Eris death is sacrificed a bit in in um, favor of making her more of a well-defined character and a well-rounded character. She, you get the impression that she knows what is coming, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Th- especially throughout the crazy alternate world stuff and all mm-hmm. this. Yeah, she she is intentionally facing this death in a way that she I don't think she did in the original game, which I haven't played in twenty five years. She, but I think she's pretty aware. I okay, think, I think. Yeah. 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 Okay. In this. Yeah. Yeah. I I just felt like she had more agency, maybe. In no, the, she did. Yeah, around. and I think the developers even said as much. Like they wanted her to have more yeah. agency. Like. Yeah. And it know. made me think, like, what if this whole game? What if Aerith had just been the main character in the in the whole game and Cloud yeah. is a pow- party? It's also member? like if she has more agency, uh, like why couldn't she have just like, like waited for her friends to go pray to is the other question. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like, honestly, I mean, I, I, because I know the story has happened this way. But, but there yeah. is an interesting line, though, where Sephiroth is like, yes, pray, Aerith, pray. I think it's like outside that. I was like, he's so into that idea. It's so odd. Yeah. Um, also, is anyone else bumped on a very superficial level? Every time they go to like a pre-rendered cutscene is mm-hmm. the biggest deal in the original seven. And now every time they do it here, it's like everyone looks slightly A little off. different. A little plasticky. Like everyone yeah. just looks a little funky. I don't like I, it. I liked how they looked, but they definitely did look the different. Sword. They definitely look different. Yeah. They do look different. I, but I, I still had that same kind of like, oh, it's back. The cutscene part. Yeah. <laughs> I, I liked it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, should we talk about Genova Life Clinger? We in should. The, in the battle? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wait, think? can I say one more era thing yeah. before we move on? Okay, so I was, like, really in agreement with this, like, f- feeling like this kind of, like, cheapened her death, like, leaving it. And I yeah. felt like they wanted to get, I don't know, have their cake and eat it too type feeling. Yeah. But, I'm like, now, I don't know, I've softened up to it because I just think that, like, Aerith has, like, been denied everything. And now she's been denied, like, a clear death. And it's almost, oh. like, tragically, like, fitting for her as a character. And, like, it because does. Because of Cloud. 
because Cloud is a scoundrel. This is sure. what I started this podcast yeah. with. Well, because and because of the planet too, though, right? Like I don't know. Because of Cloud or because of Sephiroth? Yeah. Yeah. Because like she now needs to be this central pushback point against Sephiroth. Now it's 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 a point of just like even even in death, like there's certainty in that her struggle remains even more muddy and unclear yeah, exactly. and more yeah. tortured. Yeah. Like she is like yeah. the tortured sad girl and this is the ultimate like tortured Ugh. sad girl ending. Yeah. And it just like, it actually like letting it, like letting it kind of sit in my brain for a while. It did actually weirdly endear me to her and feel mm. fitting to her as a character, even though I was kind of worried about like, is this like a marvelous ch- cop sure. out? Blah, blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. <laughs> right. That but like, yeah. I don't know. That was like, one thing that kind of was kind of sticking with me and yeah. makes me think about her. Yeah. I liked her taking all the responsibility and being like, maybe I can spare my friends if yeah. I, if I am doing this. Yeah. And, um, you know, she basically gets Obi-Wan Kenobi right now. She's more powerful than you can possibly imagine, <laughs> yeah. yep. including able to show up in a live stream battle next to cloud, which right. did, which I did love. I, I wish that I you liked had, it in theory. I wish I felt it a lot more. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Steve Katz says, Having the first part of the Genova fight happen after Eris theme, over Eris theme, is one hell of a gut punch. Especially yeah. as it slowly gets mm-hmm. corrupted into the Genova theme, which grows in bombast over the remaining phases of the boss battle. More musical excellence from this game. Uh, yep. And yeah, I, I do love that fight. I love like when you jump in there and just like how everybody has their little quips of talking to each other. Like, this is the part that kills me. And I was like, when you, and then it's showing like, okay, people are fighting in twos against different parts of Genova. Yep. And just like yes. seeing Bear be like, ready ah. to go, Nanaki? It's like, yeah. oh, that's yeah. so good. And then yeah. like and when buddies. you're with Yuffie and she has that line where she's like, you got to admit, like, it was a good idea to bring me to the party, right? Yes. And I was like, I don't know. And she's like, it's been a hell of a ride. Yes. Like, oh, it's, like, that stuff just kills me. Like, yeah, the he, finality yeah. in conversation. Yeah, you know? he says something. I mean, this like as as close as it gets to emotionally validating to, for Cloud. He, he, he says, says it like, hasn't been boring. It hasn't been boring. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Were you going to, did you remember that? And yep. I stepped on it? Oh, <laughs> I thought you were struggling to remember it. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, I knew it. What do you think of, you, hang on, you've just been writing it hasn't been boring over and over again in your notebook? <laughs> it hasn't been boring. <laughs> Uh, but then the big thing is people uh, left a comment about it. Krauser says, I noticed when you start the final sequence of boss fights, after Eris' death, every party member has their limit breaks, except for Cloud. Yep. And I love the mm. gameplay ah. element adding to the narrative of the story like this. It shows how messed up Cloud is at this point, not coming to terms with the fact that Aerith died or genuinely thinking he saved her. Oh my god, that's very good. I did not catch that. Yep, love hitting all those limit breaks right away. That's so satisfying. My level three limit breaks? <laughs> yeah. No doubt. <laughs> as level three as it gets, you betcha. Yep, and it's also, like, I find it fun to be like, oh, here's a segment of the boss battle where my least used characters are in my party. Are they going to be able to pull it off? That that type mm. of, like... Gameplay yeah. feeling is really exciting. Yeah, yeah. And then it's just, at a certain point, it's just Zach porn. When yes. we're jumping, and then, all right, now you the get to fight service. a little bit. The fan service. The Running around service. in the White Kingdom Hearts void. Yeah, he finds, like, the weird statue version of Cloud. Yep, and then is, they go back to back, baby. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And yeah. they Double yes. battle. <laughs> recite the soldier oath. <laughs> yeah, yes. oh, they know yeah. what They know how to make Crisis Core fans happy. Good Lord. <laughs> oh, is that from yeah. Crisis? Oh, that's great. Yeah. Um, did you guys uh, realize that they had a synergy attack that you can do? Oh, yeah. yes, yeah. Love yep. it. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Uh, oh, I love to, um, speaking of Advent Children cutscenes, uh, when before the sequence, but it's Tifa and Barrett and Cloud, and they all have like a charge up move. And it's like Whoa, Tifa so doing the good. kick, and then yeah. all of them hit, and it does 9,999 to Genova. It's like, that's just, that's yeah. the best right there. That's so satisfying. Yeah. yeah. Um, but again, throughout all these fights, I'm like, what? Why am I fighting Genova here? How am I fighting Sephiroth? What is this? What is any of this? And then Cl- Sephiroth even jumps in at some point and mentions, like, by the way, Cloud, is any of this real? It's like, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know, know man. What do, you, what do you want from me? I guess we need a final boss, and this is a pretty cool sequence for a final boss. Yep. You know? Yeah. So when you beat that Zach and Cloud together segment, uh, Sephiroth says, just as worlds unite, so do they part. And he chops in half. Oh, right. Yeah. And Zach is falling away. And he goes, Cloud, S- save. S- save her. Literally, so like, everyone oh, is. I have bad news for you, buddy. <laughs> 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 well, I didn't. I honestly didn't even clock that. Well, because I think I was still, because I was. We, we go so fast from the death scene to the intense boss yep. fight yeah, scene. Yeah, that's true. So fast. Yep. That I was like, not, I'm like, well, maybe he did save her because we saw her maybe save or saw him maybe save her. And it was like, yeah, I, 
Oh, sorry, Zach. <laughs> uh, Jaren says, I love this game, don't get me wrong. It's probably my game of the year, but man, did I hate the final phase of the final boss. The music was amazing, and fighting Sephiroth with Cloud and oh Aerith my was gosh. sick. But when he oh goes into the tornado phase at the end where you have to so, stagger him, okay. otherwise he one-shots you, it was a it's, terrible design. It was, okay. okay. I I have an all caps f the Sephiroth fight the final one. It's like, just, and also like it chugged my PS5 a little bit. It was just a blur. It's like I, I can get my limit break and I can blast through it. Otherwise, it's just a mess. Yeah, that's interesting. I I did go to um. There's been an update and we never talked about this, but like it goes to like there used to be uh, performance versus graphics, and then mm -hmm. they they change it to like performance smooth and performance sharp. Oh right, and, right. Uh, yeah. Um, so I, I changed it over to uh, now sixty FPS. I found that for whatever reason, like in the sixty FPS, like performance smooth, my ability to like internalize the battle systems mm. increased for whatever really? reason. Yeah, I, I huh. yeah. Um, I found that like I so I didn't have much of a problem with the like the last battle. Are you sure? That you didn't accidentally not change performance and instead put it on easy. easy. Oh, I've been playing on easy. This <laughs> <laughs> Grant has been redeemed. <laughs> yes. Uh, I I lost in that final fight, and that retry menu was so frustrating. I don't know if you guys you the same thing too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it gives you four options, like retry yeah. from before last battle, yeah. retry from last battle, yeah. and it chose. Okay, well, retry from last battle, not from before last battle. Yeah. I did that, and then sent me all the way back, back to the to first the fight. No. no, of the entire thing. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All the way back. Oh. So I wouldn't be rough. here today if it happened. <laughs> <laughs> and then the worst part, I did it again, beat it, and then uh, I was like, "All right, time for dinner," and I shut down my PS5. <gasps> but I was capturing the gameplay. Yeah. And it didn't save the video, so then I went back and did that fight for the third time. Oh <laughs> no! <laughs> all the way through. It's like an hour. Yeah. yeah. And the first time, I had him down to a sliver of health, and then I died. And I was like, "Yeah, it's, oh, okay." No. I got him down to a sliver of health, like the final double whisper attack, like three final times. Final double whisper attack. And <laughs> <that's> <laughs> Sephira really went ham with that one. Yeah. <laughs> And died, and then, like, but it was, like, 3.30 a.m., and so I'm like, okay, this wasn't yeah. meant to be. Yeah. And then, like, the next morning, boot it back up and also fell victim to the... <laughs> to the retry no. thing? Yeah, yeah. It is, it's a mess. This is the one and only time in this series of battles where I where I was able to do uh, Red 13's third uh, limit, level three limit break. Oh, nice, mm. yeah. yeah. And the thing he yells out when he does it is... Make it a shallow grave. <laughs> oh my god. god. I love it so much. Oh, so what a weird thing to like, say. Thumbs up, dude. I, I, I heard this. <laughs> yeah, man, you do you. <laughs> I was using Aerith and, and Yuffie, you know, for a bit there, and I'd never heard this one before, but Aerith died just in battle, and Yuffie goes like, oh geez, I, I, we would have done something if you would have said something about it. <laughs> This is oh, on you, Eric. Like you <laughs> exactly. I know you're kind of the resurrector kind of lady, but this is on you. Sorry. Um, oh. I, thought, I, thought the, I thought that was the right level of difficulty for a final fight in a game, though. Like, I really yeah. was satisfied yeah. by, by... It's like, all right, you want to be challenged a little bit by Sephiroth in particular. It's like, it's so funny having, like, those weird phases of Sephiroth with, like, the big... Huge Sephiroth in the belly, and like have him just like yeah. up on the ledge, looking into Zaxel area as he's yes, fighting. Yeah. Like, everything was so everything was so funny and silly. <laughs> so good time. It reminded me of the final boss of Final Fantasy VI, which is mm. another like tier, vertically mm. tiered mm. boss. Yeah, and always a fun way to fight a grotesque abomination at the end of a Final Fantasy game. Mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Um, and then you finish him off, Ross, and then yeah. things get weirder. Things get even weirder. Uh, one one other thing. Yeah. When Aerith says, I saw what you, what you did back there, Cloud. Thank you. Like referring to his attempt to save her, right? Right. right. Oh, okay. I don't think I quite picked up on that. Yeah. I think she was like, hey, good try, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> little, cool. Little dude. You did your best. <laughs> um, he's not sick. <laughs> Look, he's not sick. Yeah. And so then this is the weird part where Cloud says, Aerith, wake up. And then she opens her eyes. So this this is just another version of him. <sighs> Wait, that I just thought that me. she was that was the dead mainline Aerith, and she just said one last thing to him. 
No, this is then after oh, the fight. She, he says, oh, Aerith, oh, wake up. And okay. then it cuts to but, them by the water yeah. when she's dead. Tifa, cause, yeah. okay. Cause, okay, but before that, we see Tifa approach them. There's whispers around them. And then yeah. it cuts to Cloud holding her. Okay. So, yeah, he goes into the whispers, yeah. right? So this is like a private moment? Yeah. Sort of? I don't maybe? remember. Exactly. I thought, so I is thought that, it was maybe... I don't know. Like, that's... Yeah. It... it, it don't it know. certainly didn't show like anybody else I, maybe in it's that illusion, and that's what but made it doesn't me kind glitch, of. Think. But it doesn't glitch. Yeah, the, no, where it doesn't. glitches is after that when they're sitting by the water, right? Right. Yeah, and it glitches, and then he sees her. Yeah, and I was like, oh, this is this nefarious? Is it not? I don't yeah. know. Because the music like, did a thing. Yeah, it kind of brought it into a minor tone, which is like just this place of uncertainty of so, like, is this yeah. okay? I'm just thinking about this right on the spot, but like on this whole idea of like Sephiroth taking on other forms. Yeah. Like, oh God. I know that would be really, really bad. I like to think that she has the power to do what Sephiroth does. And so she can also appear into Cloud's mind. Yes. Yeah. I had that That's thought it. at first as well, before the field at the end, when yeah. you're like, Oh, this is definitely a nice, this is an Obi-Wan Kenobi force ghost. Yeah. Right. Aerith. Yeah. yeah, there's but still at a lot first, of people. I was like, this seems sinister to me. People just think that a moment. There's, yeah. there's definitely the theories out there that I've seen at least that people are in about about like, oh, that's Genova at the end. Yeah. It's not yeah. really Aerith oh, and all this man. stuff. Or yeah. it's like, I I think that's maybe a stretch. I think it's maybe, Aerith. but I I, I don't know. It's yeah. just like th- how many times have they said like, and what does Genova do? Um, yeah, uh, they, take on the faces of people who it, have died. That's literally. Wait, I think the Sutra say literally. Did that's they say that what, died? I. Can, we ha- we should revisit it. Yeah, but, because that feels like a very specific thing to say. Like, yeah, I this is what Genova I, does. Yeah. If I yeah. remember correctly, they, the Cetra literally say like, take on the faces of pe- like blue mm. loved ones. But the, the, mm, so uh, me, look, Jonathan F. Ritson says, I was left wondering how a casual fan is meant to keep track of the convoluted mess of timelines <laughs> and realities at this point. No. But then Sid hums the Final Fantasy theme while fixing the Bronco <laughs> and all is forgiven. Yep. That's exactly correct. Yes. yes. That, yeah. that ending sequence Thank like you. looking at the snowy mountains yep. in the distance and yeah. <laughs> Cloud's like, oh, don't look at the sky. <laughs> yes, exactly. It's all very confusing. <laughs> okay, then Aerith comes around and uh, Nanaki can sense her, but he doesn't really look at her. He just goes like Aerith. Like he just kind of feels her. So, yeah. so anybody who has connections to the whispers mm-hmm. can get a sense. I'm curious if Nanaki looked in the sky, what he would see, you know? Okay, but like I guess that- because he hasn't been to another reality, maybe he wouldn't be able to see yeah, that. Yeah, because what's the whole part where they're like, oh, that person can see the whispers, and that surprised them? Was that was really with Cisne, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sure, sure. And sure. I don't think we had an answer for that, other than that maybe it was someone who Aerith touched or. Something uh, like that. Yeah. Mm. I mean, she had a close relationship with Zach, maybe. Yeah. Uh, and so, uh, what do we think? That's just pure Force Ghost? Like, I was so surprised by that discussion at the end where Cloud, where Aerith is talking to Cloud and she's like, oh, you know, it, uh, I, I'll be back here. It's like a second home to me. Yeah. Like, okay, yeah. so it's implying that it is mainline Aerith then hiding in another reality still. But that's yeah. Wait, when Wait, did she, she said she was praying though. Yeah, she said she something about praying. like like returning and like he he has a sorry. Uh, <laughs> go go back like, to the like, temple retur- to pray though, right? Well, that's what I read it as. No, she's like I'm gonna. We, maybe that's it's something in that domain where he's like, uh, do you need to? What does he say? This is like. Do you want me to bring you? Back you want me to bring home, your home? Because it's a reference to when they first met. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, and she's like, like no, I know the way. It's kind of yeah. like a second home to me. Like. Oh, so that wasn't... Okay. So that's what they were talking about. Yeah. Gotcha. Wait, what, <laughs> what are do you, you think of? <laughs> I don't know. What are you doing? I, I was just going back into the Genova conspiracy yeah. theory. Yeah. And it's like, the whole yeah. ending of the game would be, you know, not ruined, but, it, you know, they're, they're aiming for something really heartfelt with Aerith at the yeah. end, right? Yeah. She went on this journey with her friends. She... Yeah you know, tried to live life to the fullest as much as she had it. And then she sacrificed herself as she knew she had to, to win the ultimate battle. Yeah. And she like watching her friends fly away from her at the end. If that is actually Genova, that's just, I don't, I, I don't, I, I, I don't like it. I, I can't don't believe think, it. I, I don't, don't think, think so. it. I yeah. don't think. No. Yeah, I do. Um, <laughs> Bobby Corwin writes in and says, it was nice Bobby to Corwin. see that Roche made it out alive. albeit still a robe. Yep. So yeah. you're telling me there's a chance we will chant his name no. one more time in the final game. Hopefully not the agonizing Ronnie cry one, but the cheerful one. Get better, soldier. <laughs> Roche, 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 Roche. No, we're Roche, going Roche. we're going to save Roche. That is why we're playing the third <laughs> game. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. In, in honor of Roche, I feel like there's... Aerith died so that Roche could live. 
<laughs> That's what this game's about. <laughs> I need to go get a little something in honor of our dear friend Roche. Oh, okay. Ooh. What might mean? Is it a drawing it's, of Roche? Uh, one thing I want to say while it's you, a human head. <laughs> <laughs> while he's getting this, remember you beat Sephiroth at the end of the boss battle, and he kind of laughs and flies away know, on his one wing, I which know. I was like, You're I don't like, remember him fly. I thought it was more of a symbolic wing yeah. Yeah. than a functional wing. <laughs> but I was also so like, shouldn't he just be flying in circles? <laughs> it's so funny. It just, yeah, it's just a like gag. Like he's like, oh yeah, that's right. Yes. <laughs> in honor of you guys going the distance, yeah, I got y'all a little something. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, what, what in honor of our dear boys and the reunion at hand. I'm, super All right. excited. I'm a substitute. Yeah, you're a substitute, but Anna, you, you proved your worth here today. Oh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> everybody <laughs> put it on gross. immediately. <laughs> oh, oh, man. No, stop it. <laughs> Company issue. <laughs> oh. oh, these are cozy, too. I see why those freaks <laughs> wear them. I was cold anyway. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm, I'm joining Sephiroth. Hojo, please implant <laughs> Shinova cells into me. Oh, oh. Yeah, I understand nice. the appeal now. This is nice, actually. <laughs> this is really good. Wow. Uh, now, Ronnie, so you put one sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this is like a really nice robe. It uh, spare is. no expense. No. Uh, Kyle Lamb writes in, if it wasn't clear already, I think the final scene between Rufus and Glenn heavily implies that Rufus is Viceroy Saroof. When they talk yep. about Saroof not showing up at the broadcast, Rufus says maybe he would have if you'd spent the money on the set. In response, Glenn, or rather Sephiroth as Glenn, Remarks, ah, you're probably right. Rich kids do like things just so. Yes. Maybe it's yeah. a red herring, but I think the party is going to be in for a huge surprise when they find out who Saroof is in part three. A hundred percent, yeah. Although I don't know if the party really has strong opinions on Saroof <laughs> right now. It's like, oh, it was a, I do. It was a name referenced once. Yeah. You know, it could whatever. be like a thing where at the start of the next game, they're like, what What do we do now? Well, Saroof is fighting the good fight. Let's go hang yeah. out with him. Uh, let's see. Aaron W says, "What I really want to know is what the final fight will be in the last game. We're at the point where we it's have so fought it's going to so be many four times. hours long. Yep, and I think it's just it's going to be one winged angel. I do. Yeah, one of my I think so. Favorite yes. things about remake is like going through that long fight and Barrett going to Cloud, being like, "You didn't beat Sephiroth. You didn't finish it. <laughs> yeah. And this time he's just like, whatever. We'll go north now. <laughs> like <laughs> he understands the drill at this point. Yeah. <laughs> really thought you'd have him this time, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then hey, credits rolling. Yeah. On Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Um, I yeah, and then in. the epilogue. Yeah. yeah, I was about at 103 hours, I think. I was two. Really? 103 wow. hours. Yeah. yeah. 130. 130. Oh, A bunch of those are my kid playing Queen's Blood. Okay, but, that's fine. You know, that's... but I did do too many side quests. I, I was going to say, like, I would imagine I probably have skipped about 20 to 30 hours yeah. of side quests. Yeah. We didn't mention the one unfinishable side quest, the uh, the last one, the, so that's the ultimate Shinra middle party manager one? animal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That the Shinra Which is really fun manager. to see him there, yeah. but then they yeah. patched it as today as of the time we are recording. Yep, so they think. patched it by the time we woke up this morning, and I wanted to jump back in and do it, but of course you have to start from square one. So I had beaten uh, the Chocobo race against him. I'd beaten the battle arena, which is pretty tricky tricky mm -hmm. yeah i'd beaten the uh spaceship one and i did beat g bike which is the one that was glitched and didn't uh you know save your progress okay so i'm gonna go back at some point and do those but that's the one side quest i haven't done and okay. it's like oh, i just don't want to grind it out in the gold saucer mini games which i'm not crazy about but i should do all the quests I, a lot of people were talking about how tough the vr challenges are um sure. and it's like that was the thing of like when they said oh you can play as zephyroth and Sephiroth and Zack and the VR challenge like, oh, of yeah. course, that's where they're going to bring them back. That's oh, really? Yeah, yeah, right, right. Is, so that's like a post-game thing? Yeah. If you, where, which VR, ch oh, like Chadley's? I think Chadley's, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think. But then there's also the weird Hojo VR yep. thing that happens, all that fun stuff, right? Um, let's see. <sighs> Sleepy Mailman wants a live-action Turks film. I hear ya. Brian, Brain13, says shout out to the insane level of voice acting on display. Mm -hmm. Everybody rocked it. It's great. Um, Talon, 
writes in says in the Game Informer Game Club of the OG FF7 that we did, Ben made fun of Joe Juba for calling it Junon and said it was Junon. <laughs> <laughs> he then doubled down on it again during the Final Fantasy 16 spoiler cast. I don't think so. As it was proven Juba was correct, I believe it's past time for a public apology to Joe Juba. And how is it that the last episode? How is it that it's the last episode of the Deepest Dive on Rebirth and Ronnie hasn't told anyone to unsubscribe yet? <laughs> <laughs> that is confusing. Yeah. Uh, Joe Juba, <laughs> if you remember uh, in the Deepest Dive for Remake, I made a bet with Joe Juba, $20 bet, and I said, Aerith is going to die in Rebirth. And Juba said, she will not die in Rebirth. Mm. And, now, do you and, think it, Juba and it's going to be another four years and <laughs> No, it was specifically in Rebirth. So do you think Joe has to hand me money? For Aerith dying in rebirth. I feel like we should yeah. determine it, yeah, as a panel. Like, yeah. I think I think yeah. so. Yeah. I think he'll be finishing it any day now. So you should text him right now and he spoil said, it. Yeah. He said, I think it needs to be unanimous, and I say no. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, this is truly unanimous. Um our GM is with you, Anna. They say, Do you think it was clickbaity to put Zach on the cover of this game? Because he's really not in that much. He really is not. No. Yeah. Yeah. Um the aggro keg, I still can't believe this game exists. It feels nothing short of a miracle that it came together. Aside from Queen's Blood and the Kate Sith Chapter 11 BS, this was a 10 out of 10 for me, and I can't wait for part three. Except for Queen's Blood. That's a strong take. Yeah, I yeah. thought Queen's but, Blood was fun. Oh, it was amazing. Uh, but I like that there is enough other stuff in here where you cannot like the best card game ever in a Final Fantasy <laughs> and still think it's an amazing game. Yeah. Uh, Kanzen. I hear a lot of critiques of this game which are understandable, but for me, I can't think of another game where the combat story characters, music graphics, and world building are as cohesively fantastic as this game. It's easily one of the best games of all time for me personally. Oh, okay. Uh, Jason Wojnar says, I want the third game to end for us to say, what the F just happened? But then for it to slowly make sense if we think about it years later. So Jason <laughs> wants the third one to be confusing as well. Oh, I, I, no, I, Jason. I don't think we're going to go that angle. Oh, I mean, the biggest thing we didn't talk about, but, you know, uh, Aerith and Cloud having that conversation of like, I promise. And then the tagline at the end is like, no promises to yeah. keep. Yes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. yeah. Yeah. It's just Cloud making a bunch of promises he can't keep. Yep. yep. Over and over and over again. Um, thoughts uh, from Dr. Big on the title of part three? They can't oh. do reunion. Oh, they can't. Oh, I have a good response you don't think to this. They can do reunion. The Crisis Core took it, the remake is yeah. called Crisis Core Reunion. Got it. So. Okay. okay, so I saw uh, I saw this theory post on Reddit that basically so okay that. They have a theory that it's returns or like return because the last track on the soundtrack, the last song on the soundtrack of Final Fantasy Remake had Rebirth in the work. Oh, and now God. the last track on the Rebirth has Return in it. So some people are like, well, maybe be Final Fantasy Seven Returns. I, they always zig when you think mm. they're going to zag. Yeah. I, I can I know. see it just being yeah. like they get rid of Re and it's just Final Fantasy Seven Homecoming. I can see it as like, <laughs> you know what? They love Marvel enough, like the little yeah. Spider-Man move. Like they say Homecoming a thousand times in this. Yep. Final Fantasy Seven re roached <laughs> <laughs> It's Final Fantasy Seven Roche. Yeah. Um, Sean R., what was the theme of Rebirth? Friends hanging out. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we talked a little bit. Like, I think there's a read on that of like it's about ignoring trauma. Yep. No, no, I ignore <laughs> it in favor of all the mundane things you said. It yeah, trauma. Last time. Exactly. yeah, I do think so, Ronnie. Why do you why do you scoff? Why do you scotch at that? Ignoring trauma is yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> Given that cloud has still not. Um, overcome I, I that trauma. Like, Maybe yeah, for cloud. Like, yeah. I would say more. Oh, just ignoring or like overcoming. overcoming Resilience, adver like overcoming adversity, uh, having resilience, not ignoring trauma. <laughs> I think there's a lot of like, eh, look, let's just, uh, we'll talk about this later. I think it's I okay. think that is yeah. a theme. Or like I ignoring think. fate or like, I feel like a major theme is the tension between fate, like, or your responsibilities and like kind of what you want, right? I don't know. Yeah. As, as, at least <laughs> through the lens of Aerith. Yeah. Yes, I, I agree. I think it's making the most of the time you have. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Even though uh, yeah. one of Sephiroth's final moves is Tempest. Making the most of the time you like, have, i.e. setting aside the time at the end of the world to play 40 matches of Queen's Blood. Yep. <laughs> yes. Yep. Yeah. That's and get it. free stuff from stores. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. uh, is, could a theme of this game be uncertainty? I'm just not sure about uh, that sure. idea. <laughs> <laughs> That's very okay. good. Yeah. Uh, okay. Go ahead. No, I was just thinking about like, um, <sighs> Ross, how you said it, I, I think last time is just like one of the, I think themes that you were really floating was, you know, the idea of, of just like, I, I think like 
how did you say it? it was like it was kind of challenging fate like fighting i don't remember exactly how you said it but like what you said reminded me very much uh as Aerith was kind of giving her speech yeah like on the end of chapter 13 where she was talking about just like in a way like fighting and like challenging and i don't know like that kind of was just like oh my god I had this moment. It was just like, did you read ahead or something? Because you, you felt like you, you had like something that was so on the nose, and I, I can't articulate it as well as I'm sure as whatever you did, I said, it was brilliant. It was. Yeah, it was so it's good. like challenging the status quo in a sense, not the status quo like Shinra, but like I don't know. Yeah, it's like it's Barrett going. being upset that they told him everything happens for a reason. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's like, you have to fight. Yeah, or you can't accomplish yeah. what needs to be done. Yep. Chris C writes in, Ronnie. Chris C. played 85 hours and loves this game. Good. But is it good? He asked. Yeah. No, what do you what do you think of this game, Ron? Oh, I loved it. Loved it. Yeah, I loved I'm it. In, I, I'm think, in the same game. I, I, think it, I think it was great. And um, honestly, I loved how wonky and uneven it was at times. Like, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's a funky game and it's an interesting game. And I get the complaint about yes. what's it ultimately about. It's just... Ignoring a, trauma. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't mean to give you that. No, no, please. Uh, I think about like this is one of those games where somebody where I could comfortably sit across from somebody that says like that game sucked and I hated it yep. and I'd be like yeah no I can understand that was your read and I thought I, I like I loved it and I think I like it more than remake I think I do too I do. Yeah. wow hmm. <laughs> I just really disagree. Yeah. I just right, really, yeah. I really like remake. Mm. I remake really like remake. Awesome. I thought it was yeah. like a really ambitious and surprising thing, like way to approach a remake and like yep. Yep. repurpose the material. And that's the thing is and people like, wrote in about like, oh, this game doesn't really have the meta commentary cool thing that remake had, you know? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Playing this game was interesting because it's like it actually I feel like as someone who I didn't I don't feel like super rooted and connected to the original game because I played it for me this game because I played it late, you know, after remake um, because remake was my introduction to this, you know, Final Fantasy compilation media. um, But like it. I feel like this game really grounded me in what Final Fantasy VII is, you know, which is kind of driving little machines, playing little games, going from these, like, really popular settings that appear from, like, game to game, you know, like, um, meeting these characters, like, um, which was interesting, because I, I, but I I do feel like it was so different from Remake, um, sort of. Yeah. Um, Yeah, I I absolutely loved it. I understand why everybody's, a lot of people in the MinMax team have kind of bounced off it or souring on it, but, like, the, the highs of this game and how happy it made me to play on a consistent basis like yeah. nothing nothing well, is these coming characters close are, this year. are lovely these characters are wonderful there's so reasons good. we want to spend so much time yeah. with them yeah. <laughs> yeah this game like has everything i love about final fantasy in it like sometimes final fantasy is about um, epic world changing confrontations and sometimes it's about driving a Segway mm-hmm. <laughs> and sometimes about, it's about like mm-hmm. will they won't they melodrama between yeah. characters yeah. and sometimes it's about uh, searching for treasure on a chocobo and it Perfect. has all that stuff and I love it it's a beast and Chadley beating down Chadley. Brian says I just want to say a huge congrats and thanks to you thank you to all of you Ross Grant Baby, Th- Baby Threefa Ronnie <laughs> Dave Brent our mysterious guest Anna Flannel and of course, to Ben for not only undertaking but over delivering on the colossal task of breaking this game down. Yeah, you've taken the experience of playing through what's already been a very special game for me and made it all the more enjoyable, and entertaining. Incredible work, everyone, community included. It's been fun. So, anyways, why is the gold saucer not gold? No one knows. But hey, shout out to the community. Really good for point. Yes. Thank you. Thank you I everybody. think it's gold in Final Fantasy fourteen. <laughs> for submitting all of those comments hundreds and hundreds and hundreds for us to read to make this experience so much better than if we just played it by ourselves and said that was pretty good and moved on like I every time I got stressed about just like the deadline or trying to keep up with this deepest dive and stuff it was just like I can't imagine making more of my experience playing a game than this like we're ringing it for all it's worth and to be able to talk about with some friends it's been an absolute blast i can't believe how many times i stumbled over an idea in my head for five minutes and then ben read a comment from a community member who (laughs) said it in less than 600 characters (laughs) yeah yeah they really did it uh we do have in honor of a beaten down brian he sent in a a gift uh, Ronnie, I'll let you open that. Sure. Uh, meanwhile, Ross, for d- going the distance, being a ringer coming in out of the blue here, Ross, I got you a little 
special something. Oh my gosh. It's a little Minnesota koozie for you. Lefsa. With, with Lefsa, since you, yep. you give that uh, in so many ways. And then for Grant, I'm going to deliver this to Thank him. You. He's not here, but uh, he bowed out for having a little baby girl. And so for Grant, I this picked a up a cloud. ball of uh, material for him. Um, uh, oh, oh, very cool. A nice little stand. So shout out to Grant for... So, uh, so this is twenty thousand dollars. <laughs> uh, all right, what is it? Let's see here. It is. Ooh. Oh my gosh! Oh, oh, oh. oh come on, Bob Buell. Are you kidding me? Come on. Okay, wait a second. Okay, hang on a second. I gotta get a close up. Yeah. All right, all right. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he word. made cards oh my for God. us. I cannot Ridiculous. believe this. And we all get Queen's blood cards. Thank you. Oh Hang my on. Gosh. Show the camera. Show the camera. I want to see all these. How do you know that Anna was yeah, going to be gonna here? Yeah, I was going to say. I was wow. like, when did... did anybody tell him? That's ridiculous. Oh, wait. And Grant? Oh, wait. We have every... We have, wait, here's yeah, Sarah Fox. Like, wow. Wait. Whoa. Oh, wow. oh my okay. gosh. I cannot believe that. Who has the best spread? Who's got... Let's see. Well, we got. I love Jeff. I'm just sitting there. Yeah, here. One. Oh, I got a five. Oh, we got come a five. Man, we got a five. Look at my look. At oh, that's Ooh. too kind. <laughs> that's too kind. That's you know what? Everybody subscribe. <laughs> yeah, <everybody laughs> subscribe. Unbelievable. Oh, Thank you this so is much. So incredible. <laughs> that's so awesome. He incredible. asked me a while ago. He said, "Could I get a good picture of Grant?" I was like, yeah, sure. So I said to myself, "I don't know what this is about." But he says, "For the Final Fantasy VII Rebirth Deepest Dive Crew, and for our dear friend Roche, may he ride in peace." <laughs> <laughs> Where's the Roche that card? <laughs> is just incredible. The unofficial member. <laughs> oh man! Now we just need the whole castle for all this stuff. Uh, again, thank you so much, everybody. For joining for the deepest dive on Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Uh, we couldn't do it without you. And again, this content exists literally because of people going to patreon.com slash minmax with two ends. So if you're watching on YouTube and you haven't ever supported the show, that's all fine. You do what you want to do. Uh, but if you want to throw a tip in the jar for us going the distance and talking about Rebirth for this long, you can go to patreon.com slash minmax with two ends. Jump in at even that $2 tier, $5 tier. That's incredible. Whatever you want to do. That's sweet. But thank you for making this a special experience. Uh, and as they say in Loveless, as they're all rocking back and forth, um, Anna, you want You need to clap for me. What is in Loveless? You need to clap for me. <laughs> bow, wow, wow, bow, bow, wow, wow, bow, wow, bow, wow, bow, wow, bow, wow. Thanks so much, everybody. We'll Bye. see you next time for part Bye. three. Bye. Did you know that you can more than double the amount of podcasts from MinMax every single week by supporting us at the $5 tier on Patreon? You don't have to listen through the browser or anything dumb like that. You'll get access to a private RSS feed if you support us on Patreon. You put it in your favorite podcast app, and then bam, you can listen to our weekly bonus podcast party chat, the podcast versions of The Deepest Dives, MinMax interviews, Max spoilers, and you get the MinMax show podcast a day earlier than everybody else. So please help support independent games media. Head over to patreon.com slash minmax with two ends.